Lucio is an incredibly strong character within Brawl, but in Ladder it can sometimes be a different story. Today we are going to be doing an unranked to GM on Lucio, but with a twist. Instead of me smurfing on lobbies, we've gotten a player from every single rank and reviewed their gameplay to see where they stand as players. Timestamps can be found below with the rank that corresponds with the mistakes that you're making, but with that all out of the way, let's get right into it, starting with Bronze. The most common thing people in bronze do that watch educational content like mine, like Awkward, like Coach Mills, is that you have a lot of knowledge about the game, but you're overcomplicating for what it is in your ranked. You have to understand that like Peachy Lady might have 20 FPS on Bastion. Who knows what's going on behind their, their, their monitor? They, they might have a cat playing for them. Who knows? They might not even, they might have a three-year-old. Like they, they might be letting their brother play on their account. It's so variable in bronze. And the thing that you have to understand is that like the bigger picture stuff that I think that us as content creators try to teach you, sometimes it leads you astray. So the first thing that I think every, like you just have to refresh your mind, not necessarily forget what you know, but understand that like if this rank is not like any other in the game, it is right. so different. It is so much about how how hard can you carry personally and really yeah. refining your personal mechanics. All right. So, yeah, we're just beating our team out of spawn. This is totally fine. Like even even bronze players are going to walk forward. So you're, you're doing the right thing in terms of speeding them here um, immediately, though because I, I I really don't respect the other team. And that's a really bad way of putting it. Like, it's not like I don't respect them as players. It's more so I don't respect how powerful their DPS is gonna be. I don't respect that if they have a Widow on this angle right here, that they're gonna kill my team. I'm not really gonna wait around with my team because I'm gonna have so much, I'm gonna have such a big window of opportunity to heal my team on Lucio here that I just need to get in and get some value. I just need to start a duel. I need to start getting damage. I need to start building my beat because then things can start changing. Like we, I can start influencing the fight. So you do end up trying to go for that. Honestly, I would say you could even look to like wall ride around and take an angle that isn't so Way like farther. something yeah. that's no like pointed, not as pointed so that you have an easier angle to like maybe start pressuring out of mercy, start pressuring out of more. I don't know how beneficial that will be in bronze because like you force out their cooldowns, but people aren't going to follow up on that. But um, that's like it's the true. idea that I'm at. Well, at the least other when I'm first looking. The ability of bronze is I don't like to do anything that aggressive until I see the other team do something to my team or my team do something to them. So if my team does something to them, I, I can expect some amount of follow up. If their team starts wrecking my team, I probably need to just support my team a little bit, play to live, and look for patterns. And I, and I, that I think that's do. where you're led wrong because oh, you can't okay. play for your team here. Like you cannot trust your teammates usually in bronze unless you have a Smurf which will be very apparent to you. You don't really have the opportunity to just kind of help your team and hope they carry you. Like every single time in bronze, you will have to be the Smurf that is d dominating the other team that they have to look at you. Like I'm telling you with with certainty, that is how it works. I mean, okay. again, there's, always, there's obviously some nuance, but more times than not, it's better for you to just go in the back line and just kill five and yeah, not, oh, not play gonna, the back end. You, you wait and see my aim. And, and I'm here's not the thing, get away with your aim five. might not be perfect, but there's ways to get better at aim and there's yeah. time that you can put in and it will get better. It, it's impossible for it to not get better um, unless I am unaware of something that I'll see. Um, well, I don't I mind mean, the healing. Agent arthritis, you know what I mean? Like this, that is for true. people, what you're saying is absolutely true. I was that young that person, true. got better mechanically at guitar and aiming stuff, all kinds of things, typing even which is what causes the arthritis, but go on. Yeah, sorry. Okay, arthritis definitely makes it challenging. I've never actually figured out that problem, but that is true. We'll keep that in mind. Uh, but here's the thing, right? Um, just on, on your whole point about like, I want to help my team. It's like, we, we heal amp this team here, but like the Kiriko still dies to wherever the Echo even is. Where is the Echo? on the coastal side. I think the Kiriko yeah, is like, like, Even coastal. then, it's like the Kiri's still going to die. If you really wanted to help your team, what you could have done is noticed that your Kiriko is hanging. She's about to take a duel and you aid her in that duel. Okay. To be honest, like look at your team. They've taken like realistically no damage, like no crazy damage. I know you did heal amp, but they don't really have any point of damage when their echo isn't with them. If we want to get technical here, like they have a Sombra, a Doomfist and, and two healers. One of them doesn't even do damage. You see what I'm saying? Like there, there really even is no threat, even if this is a GM lobby. Like even a GM lobby, I'm probably flanking on this. Well, that might be a little far-fetched, but 
Okay. Understand, like, it's not going to be by the book whatsoever, and it's really going to come down to just hitting the shots. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I like to try to play to live early and see what's happening to everybody else, whether it's supporting them or not. Like, I tend to do better mentally and generally on the stats, too, if I just play to live a little bit and see where it's starting, see where the chips are falling, so to speak. Like, I mean, right here, like, a lot of it is, like, turn away you're, from me? you're playing with your team, right? But it's yeah. not actually... Even the idea of like, oh, I'm playing back and I'm safe with my team. Like you're, you're arguably actually in a worse position because you're like right on top of your team when you're facing against Doomfist and stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be right on top of your team to help them. Um, and I, I still need to see a little bit more until I'm going to give you like the hard facts of like, what is it that you're really struggling with? But sure. the mindset wise, I think a change in being more like right here, trying to kill that mercy. Like you, you, you kind of just carried by just landing like eight shots on the mercy four to eight shots on the mercy. She, she falls over immediately. Now the fight, I mean, the fight was already going to die or be in your favor beforehand when you killed the doom. Yep. But right there, I see the mercy's dead. Like if you can do that every fight, that's big. That's going to carry the team. Like right here, just pressuring yeah, well, the echo even is going to be, be a big, big help. And obviously like the aim could be better, but like that comes with practice. Yeah. But so, but that taught me something. I think you'll see this play out. That taught me who gets kills, and it was my Sombra yep. and my tank. I was about to actually and talk that's about who that. I'm willing to support. Yes. Yeah. So like that, that is a really good idea to have. Like, look at who is the performer and who you want to support. 100. percent That will help you. Uh, the other thing is like look at people that might be falling down that shouldn't be, aka the Kiriko here, and see how you can maybe help them. If it's worth it, great, go for it. If it's not, okay, whatever. But yes, I, I agree with you. Like. The Sombra, flanking with a Sombra, someone that's going to be going for this playstyle that you're going for right now, trying to support them will help you out a lot. Especially if you're mechanically like not 100% uh, accurate. I mean, no one is, but right. Uh, it, that means like no matter what, go for the Sombra help. See, like that, I'm okay. Like peeling your Kiri, you have your beat now. You're going to win this fight if everyone stacks together. They probably won't as the May is going over there, but. Yeah, I think she dies. I, I tend to live best and get the most done when I move between, if, if a team is spread out, I move between positions. I just don't want to be in a predictable spot, especially if I'm going to be in up all this open where I have to be on the ground a little bit. Honestly, my only Maybe problem with this right here though, is like, yes, you, you have the right idea. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it's, it's too right for the rank. <laughs> it's too right and that's your, that leads to your downfall because it's sure I like get... you're in a good position you're trying to stack with your team you're, you're you, this whole time you were trying to set up with your sigma and and speed him in or like try to force a brawl with your may so we could all fight on something as lucio should but the reality of it is though it's like they are going to rotate really slow back to point really split we just kind of sat around this whole time while we had 15 seconds of possibly killing someone or possibly just starting with the May over here that's taking an aggressive angle so you can support her to get out. It's it's shifting the focus of, okay, I'm playing right with my team. I'm, I'm helping them as a support. And how can I just get more damage, more value? Because it, it it's very strong in bronze because there's not a whole lot of damage to go around because, well, people aren't playing every day. They're not hitting their craziest shots of all time. But like that 15 seconds of doing nothing led to the May not being able to follow up on the kills she might have gotten with your help. And then she okay. dies because of it. Like you're supporting your team by just doing damage early because if the targets are dead, they can't do damage to your team. Bam. If they're dead, they can't do anything to your team. You just you just saved your teammate. Damage is healing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And Peach Lady is also doing really well. So my bad for calling out Peach Lady early before the game even started. <laughs> No, I think she did okay. And I think our Kiriko eventually like that went Moira later. Oh, what was that in reaction to? Uh, it, to be honest, it doesn't really need to be a reaction to anything, right? Like, I, I mean, it's it's a three-on-three -three fight. It was close. In bronze, I'd rather you just win the fight and get some time. Okay. Because now, oh, cause no, now so you're going to keep getting alts. You're yeah, going to yeah, be doing so much damage and healing. You I just checked this one in case this is the one you chose. That beat was because I had the killers with me. And the other two were not too far out. They had... They weren't back yet, but they were back soon. And yeah. I felt like it was worth sustaining that fight. I don't think it was necessarily needed, but I don't mind that you're playing aggressive with the beat. Right here, it's like, all right, we just won the fight. Understand that staggering is like so common in these metal ranks. Why not just go up here and start poking? You have the speed boost for yourself if you need to get out. You have wall riding for yourself if you need to get out. Just, just poke. Start doing damage. Don't kill yourself for it, but start pressuring them. 
gonna make their life harder. They're gonna waste cooldowns. It and inherently that'll make it harder for them to kill your team. But see, right now we're just we're just sitting here. Yeah, we're just doing nothing. Agreed. And in a higher rank, I would argue that you should go back to your spawn and try to taxi people back. If they're not mm -hmm. valuable teammates, don't do that. Just do damage instead. That's kind of what I get any at. taxing in this match. That is a habit. When I live most, when I play to live, and I'm doing good at counting the the playmate deaths or uh, teammate deaths, I will go taxi when I'm you know the yeah. last one. I'll just go. I'll just go pick. And, up I, and that's usually the right play. But one, you're in bronze. Two, if you're really close to building beat and you need a little bit more damage to counter an ultimate, that's when you yeah, would rather just out. go for the damage and spawn. But realistically, we're playing in bronze. Unless this is Peachy Lady and they need to get back because they have EMP, I'm not I'm not taxing them out of spawn. I'm doing damage and just trying to hard carry. Yeah. Oh, it's not an ego here. thing, it's a realistic thing. Yeah, you'll and see I don't a spot here mad. where there's two team fights happening at the same time. It's like All right. well, that's, two and two that's and three and three or yeah, in fact, it might be the next, the next, the next encounter. Yeah, but right here they took about ten seconds to even get to their position, which is wild. Uh, it's actually pretty fast for bronze, all things considered. But that's ten seconds of value that we missed out on. I'm impressed that they came as a group. Yeah, no, I was about to say that. Like, okay, they might be stacked, I guess. Okay, I don't mind the flank. Was, somebody was spamming the group. Okay, up, yeah, booping them into the EMP. You should definitely be speeding here, not healing, but still, like. The actions you took that fight, that's like all you need to do. If you, okay. Wow, wait. That, okay, your team's good. actually a little... Your Sig and Sombra are pretty solid, all things considered. Yeah, yeah I'd be speeding here and speed. just being aggressive. Like, Yeah, I may have been a little late to get back to it. Or fat fingered the button. Okay, yep. Honestly, the moment that you get the D.Va out of the mech there, I think you just leave. You got the value and now you just leave. She needs a speed boost out. I think she uh, runs back in. Yeah. I don't know. She runs back to her team, I think. Oh, there she is. Yeah. This is the other team fight happening. Yeah, but honestly, like that little team fight you have, you take out the D.Va from mech. You take out, I think, the Moira it was. Like, you're still taking out t key targets that it's impossible for your team to lose that. And if they do, like, it's bronze, but you'll be able to carry. I'm, I'm yeah. confident. Okay. You have the right idea of being more aggressive and supporting the right people. You just have to, like, full send it. Full Wait send it. you see this round. <laughs> and we'll see the inconsistencies. Oh, yeah. No, I'm out in the open, like, nonstop this round. I just, like, fling myself into their whole team once or twice. All right, well, let's see this. Uh, I mean, they have a soldier now, so your movement's gonna have to be a little bit more solid, and or he's just he should just beam you, but he might not. Make sure you're on speed boost. Once. When you're oh, this is 100% backwards. I thought I was, and already ran the amp. I noticed yeah. that when I watched this replay, I was pissed. Honestly, you should be on speed most of the time anyway, unless you're like all stacked in bronze, I'd say. But obviously, it's situational. Here's an old man moment. No, I mean, that's happened to me as well. Um, the big thing I would say is um, this is more of like a Lucio thing in general. When you're trying to support your team with damage, don't boop right away. At least yeah. try to hit the, the primary fire burst before you boop. Like you don't want to push targets outside of melee range if your teammate is trying to kill them in melee range. You don't want to boop them back into a team, back into a diva defense matrix. It's making things harder. You didn't lose anything because of it, but like right there, it's like we're we're booping the soldier away, making it harder for us to to land more consistent damage. And he wants to be farther away. You, he doesn't want you to be in his face. Right. Oh, he's gonna make this harder for you. Oh yeah. I get away from him a couple times, but I don't think this is one of them. When you're taking one v ones, just try to play on walls as well. Walls are your best friend on Lucio. Yeah. Um, walls and speed boost. Uh, it, it takes time, but I honestly think like Vaxter, just like free for alls would be your best friend in terms of that. But we'll talk more about that at the end. I want to see more. See right there. Bam. You pretty much just won the fight for your team. Maybe. Well, you should have. That's their, that's their Moira in bronze. That's like their only source of healing. I would focus on probably getting your team back and then taking a fight. I don't mind the idea of just forcing out the jet school down though. It's not terrible. Yeah, that's uh, that's honestly not bad. I don't think the amps needed because no one's crit. So make sure that if you're gonna amp heals, that you have a damn good reason for it. Like everyone will get the full 
utilization out of the heal. If not, just speed amp in. At yeah, this rank. I generally switch it over to, to speed if I realize I've done that, or the other way around. But I mean, I, yeah, I like the, the thing is, don't make things to too hard for yourself mm. either, though. Like if if you're gonna you're gonna get it doesn't matter. The speed boost gets you in, and then you can look for the heals after. They're not gonna be doing enough burst damage to kill your teammate in this in this rank. And I'm really just trying to to like everything you're thinking. Yes, that's important. Once you get to that next level, we're just focusing on getting out of the trenches because this is the trenches. I am fully aware. I get it. You crawl first. Yep, you know, forcing out the M. I just focus the diva to get her out of mech, but she just alts anyways. That's always gonna kill someone in this rank, which is just wild. Honestly, I think just more aggressive behavior and more focused damage earlier, you you would have gotten more out of it. Cause like they're they're eventually gonna do the damage they need to, but they're giving you so much time to get it done that you can just take advantage of it. If you take the first act, they're not gonna be ready. Yep, this is a good rollout. I, I just want to see more wall play in general. Yeah, I don't do that well on this map. We want to okay. see that if we do a, if we do like another round. If you got gotcha. you, okay, okay. I, I see what you're I'll saying. Get you like a like a Pariso. Um, I'll get you Lijian Tower maybe if I'm lucky. If they ever put me there again. Uh, let me let me see what happened to your Moira. Because is there anything you could? Okay, your Moira's flanking. Okay, yeah, your Moira's flanking. So this is just a problem of like your team's just staggering, and there's yeah. there's really nothing you can do about that. Other than climb out of bronze. Yeah, I mean, you're because they're not going to listen usually. Like now it's okay if you want to play to heal your team, but reality of it is is that you just shouldn't take this fight. But your team's not going to leave, so I think this is just an L. Mm, okay, yeah, the Moira just faded in behind you. You didn't see it, but if that ever happens, that's like priority target number one. Like, take the moira like force out the fade and then she's dead essentially but in this rank they're just gonna fade to get closer so if they ever do that shift your focus and just kill moira yeah they just lost the fight because their moira like faded in for a reason unknown okay i'm, I'm okay with that heal amp that's a good heal amp that's one of the only ones that i was like okay that's really solid yeah i definitely use it too early on this match uh i think all three rounds I think there's some really dumb heal amps on the third round as well. Our tank went Reinhardt, and I was not doing a great job of keeping in line of sight of him. And that downtown map is, is a pretty good Lucio map. I just wasn't playing it very well. It's hard with how far away everything is. They just don't peek the soldier. Yeah, Lucio boops you into it, which is good. Yep, that's a fine heal amp just to help your team because you're the focus. Okay. Again, right here, it's like I'm 80% to my beat. Why are we all standing on point? Let's maybe get up there and try to like find a pick or get some damage uh, to get my ultimate, which you do do eventually, but it's too slow. And now their team's already here. And now you're severely at a disadvantage. Interesting. I do like the, uh, not to push back at all. I, I, I think I actually enjoy that moment of breath on the on the point where we should have been doing something where we should have been going looking for the damage where's the damage as, as awkward likes to say i think i actually enjoy that that breather but i'll, I'll work on just staying mo mobile i mean that's really that's that's lucio's life right like if you if you I mean, aren't realistic moving, anyway. we're probably doing something wrong <laughs> the thing is it's like yes exactly if you're not thinking about the next play and you're just sitting around doing nothing while it's like calming and it's like okay we won that fight it's it's not letting you have an easier next fight and it's going to make the it's you're fighting an uphill battle then there's no there's no time for respite in overwatch unless it's between rounds like that's like the only time that you have off time it's always go 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 and that's that's part of the allure to overwatch right and the thing is here is that you shouldn't always be doing damage i mean it's always a very good option like it's de facto just always going to be decent um, but in this rank, like realistically, it is just like, Hey, get damage to get your all up, get damage to find a pick because people are staggering. You can take advantage of that. If you're in the right position, really keep shooting. Okay. like bam, right there. You kill the echo. Oh, did you get the beat on everyone? It looks like you barely did. 
I might be the only person alive there. I just knew that that ult was going to get somebody because it's bronze. So I figured, oh, hey. Yeah, I don't know if the don't beat even say. I mean, you really should. I don't think beat saves from Diva Bomb, does it? You'd have to test well, that. If, I think if you're uh, like a low max, like it's not going to save a Widow. But I think anybody else, I think it might. Yeah, I mean, if it does, like maybe it's worth it because bronze people don't really run somewhere. away from it. But that's a habit that you'll want to break pretty fast when you climb to silver even because yeah. like no one should be dying to diva bombs to the point where you're going to be using your beat for it it shouldn't happen a lot but oh, i gotta find you more replays you're gonna be surprised how i mean i know that bombs. it happens a lot which is why i'm okay with it in bronze if it works <laughs> but no, like that is me not... everywhere because no forward momentum if i'm flinging myself somewhere my my luck is i will be committed to an arc and i cannot change it and i'm just following a diva bomb that's now going along the same trajectory out in the open i mean that's just at that point it's like through time you'll get better at movement and anticipating things and then you won't get hit by it as often you know sure well not committing to a longer trajectory yeah. like that when she might have bomb that's yeah. fair yeah and and, and it, at that point it's like when you get to those higher ranks it's very predictable but right here i like yeah it's who knows what's gonna happen but okay we have reinhardt and may and moira if everyone stays together go ahead and speed boost them in and play off of them if not mm -hmm. looks like you're gonna be flanking so let's see how this works this map Speed out of spawn, nice. Make sure that you don't go too fast. It looks like you do still Probably get did. everyone there. Okay, yep, we're... I don't love this far of a flank, but it worked. Well, it, I, I think it's, it's to check for flank. To be honest, here's the thing, right? The previous match, right? If, yeah. you're, if you're checking for a flank here, like you're gonna know that they're coming there before... Uh, well, let, let's play the numbers game, right? Let's say you have all five people running down here. If, if there's a person or two on that team that's running down over this way, it's a 5v3 if another team goes through here. You just win the fight. That's fair. If all five go down here, you're going to know, oh, no one's here, no one's here. Uh, okay, they must all be going to point. Now we have high ground. There's just no real need to okay. scout down there. I mean, sure, maybe you could look for a boop. I don't think it's consistent no, you're, enough. You're right. You're absolutely right. I used to get good boops there again, the, the very bottom of bronze when I first started out, but that's totally logical. Like I just didn't connect the dots that way. That's really smart. Because even then it's like, if they do go down here and you guys have the high ground, you hold this, th they're not going to know that they need to take you off high ground. They're going to stay in this small position here and you you might find a boop. It's not worth deviating this far to go for a, maybe a boop, especially when you could go this far, see down there, and then make your, your pick to go that way. I don't think it's worth it to flank that hard. I thought, realistically, I thought you were going to go all the way around and go back this way. I think this is one of those moments where it's like you can pressure off this angle, which is pretty common, or just play play off your team and like boop them off so they don't take this high ground, which is really important. I like splitting their attention like that. That's a good idea. And like, here's the thing. It still, it still worked. Like you did something so weird that the whole team looked at you for it. And, and now that that's a thing, like you can look for any stragglers, which always <laughs> happens, always. Yeah. Look, oh, there's a Torbjorn tor alone and you have two people ready to kill it. You're going to love the way the rest of this match goes. And and here's the thing. It, it, it probably won't go that way, <laughs> but here we go. It will um, and it won't. Our, our Ryan is going to, I think, die here in a minute. If he hasn't already. Again, playing off walls definitely would make your life a lot easier, no matter the map. Yeah, um, yeah. And not booping right away so that you can actually fight them when you're on the wall or booping them to a wall instead of just booping them to push them away because it's making it harder for you to hit shots. Because like you'll start hitting full bursts and then you'll just boop them away and then you can't hit a shot. So don't don't play into the weakness of Lucio, which is like playing in a weird like mid-range interesting i don't know Wait, am i hitting full burst because in the aim trainers i actually have better luck when i boop them because they have less control over their crazy ass motion in the air that's a that's a predictable trajectory or closer to a predictable trajectory yeah so i can get four of those slow ass lucio bullets in like vaxta or jpyhg after booping them in the air and when i'm like struggling to maintain that uh, the jpyhg has like this countdown thing they get yeah. faster they get slower uh, and i i definitely have better results on lucio I honestly I think do, that the codes, the, the codes are like the only like Vaxta and stuff for Lucio. I think he's one of the only supports where I would advise against it. And I would say do like free for all death matches for Lucio. 
Reason being, it, it actually yeah. it actually makes it so that you are shooting real people and you have a lot more walls to play off of. Because Vaxta, you have a big ass room with four walls. That's not how Lucio's played at all. And maybe a lot less attention on me necessarily, which is yeah. it'll it'll mirror the well mirror the situation that I used to be in in the '90s when we mostly only had deathmatch, a little capture the flag. Team yeah. deathmatch was a new thing. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So I, I think the deathmatch like on, on an arcade is probably your best bet. And when you get better, try hard FFA lobbies. You can look that up. Sometimes it's usually from like five to nine is that, or five to seven because it's before scrims. Um, those are typically the times that people are going to be doing that. And that's Eastern time. Um, but that's again, something we can talk about later. But I, the thing is, it's like, I think if you're struggling in the boops, the thing is you're booping an AI that's going to move like an AI when it's booped. It's not really meant to move that way. So maybe the shooting players will be more beneficial. Okay, I like the poking. The only thing I would say is you're playing against a Torbjorn. It is your job to kill the turret as Lucio. So if you are playing against Torbjorn, make sure you yeah. are, are shooting that turret and not getting you're distracted. You're going to like the way this match goes because I think it's either next or the next time out. I think we get destroyed in the next time out. I have a nice angle on his turret early on. I didn't poke enough here. Honestly, the, the main problem I have here is like, okay, yes, we are going for the angle, which is aggressive. I don't yeah. mind it. The problem is we took one, two, three, three seconds to even shoot on the angle. And by that time, the Ryan got bored and just pinned in. And now that you're not with your team and you're not actually taking advantage of the angle, you just kind of fall out yeah. off worst of both worlds yeah right because i wasn't so, with yeah. him to help him and mm -hmm. i didn't get anything done on my little side mission i guess yes you. so it, it's realistically just being faster about it uh be, and the thing is like you do have a bastion so the moment he turret forms like you can speed him that's like i'm pretty sure any bronze could make value out of that so if he's willing to do that you have to really justify the flank some combos are really easy to pull off being the bastion speed um but even then I'm okay with you flanking here because it's bronze and you can make anything work. Yeah, like that dude's all the way back there and the Ryan pinned in. If you flanked earlier and there's more attention on you, the Ryan probably lives, gets value, maybe gets a pin kill. But because we took too long, all the attention was on him and it's it's kind of over from then on. And maybe we get out here. I don't know why the Bastion's still there. Aim could be better, as always, for every player. Okay, everyone lived that diva bomb. That's new. Everyone's yep, I'm okay with the healing. I like that you're chasing the echo. Do you kill? Barely, you don't. Nope. That's fine though. And now they beat it. Oh, this is just an awkward fight, but it's working. I don't think it does actually. I don't think okay, but still, like they they nice beat it. They diva bombed. They just yeah, used they all their spent. alts. But yeah. like. Even though you were down alt economy and they used more alts, you guys were still pulling through with the fight because the idea of just going in, flanking, and taking attention was you were doing it. They were looking at you. The Ryan had then the opportunity to pin in while they were distracted and got a kill. It's not really what you should do in like plat silver, not plat silver, like plat gold area. Like the games will be a lot more cohesive at that point. But and at this point, it's yeah. like there's so much BS going on. Just take advantage of it. Just take advantage of it. Go all it's in. Like the, it's the best and worst part. Yeah. It, it's it's dumb. And it doesn't feel fun to play in. And you're going to lose games, even though you're really a better player than these people. But in time, if you just adopt the, the bronze lol mindset, like you'll have a lot easier of a time. And yeah. Okay. They dumped all of their alts. Let's see how your team's going to actually do so. I mean, your team almost won that fight when they had beats. Yeah. Diva bomb early. They had a copy. There was a coal in there somewhere. Lots going on. Yeah, well, and we have four coming up. And I think I go work on a turret right here. Yes. Yeah, that turret's in a terrible spot, too. It is. That, All right, nice. That All this damage helping. is helping your Bastion kill things. Okay, yep. We dueled the Moira. Now she doesn't have Fade. Priority number one is to find this Moira. Beat was not needed. At that point, if the fight's already won, make sure you're not wasting your beats. And we're going to talk about yeah. the beat at the end. Well, I wasn't counting them. I, I'm, I'm just getting better at counting us dying. I'm not good at counting opponents dying, and that's a real problem. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I mean, understanding when a fight's won, 
that's going to yeah. be important. And that's just something that I, I don't necessarily know how to teach that. I think that just comes through with time. You could hate this. It's like, again. I thought I heard something. It doesn't really... I mean, it doesn't justify it. I know. Even Sorry. if you hear something like they, they got a Lucio Moy, like the only thing that you could possibly boop on their comp is a Torb. You would know like if it's Torb's footsteps. Out. That's true. It, he does end up over there and he gets booped off once or twice. Yes. Somewhere, somewhere in this match. But it's like now it, it's good that you're like, oh, like you're not going to like this because you kind of realize like, oh, this is like a moment of I could literally just be like carrying right now. I'm going for like these high value plays or that you just don't need to go the for. shot. Oh no, I yeah. knew in the moment sitting there I'm like, "Oh, this was a bad commitment." <laughs> going for like really high value plays that are only going to occur like 1% of the time. Oh no, way this works out, right? I'm convinced oh, that I hear God. somebody. You do. You hear the Moira, oh, but yeah, she's just going to fade yeah, back she on. Fades. But I mean, yeah. you did force out fade and you possibly could kill, but it's just too much. It, it's too much what if. Yeah. And it's not consistent enough. And you want it you want it to be as consistent as possible. I was just setting up early. Yeah, yeah. There he yeah. goes. Does he get back on? I think he gets back he, on. Yeah, he's gonna that. get back on. It's so hard to boot people off there. But okay, bam. Awesome. We forced out fade and then like there's better ways to do that that are much more consistent, albeit. But the fact that we did that, like if we can do that every fight, that's great. Obviously, right there is you were just in a bad position because of where you started and it, it yep. led you to die and led you to not be able to kill the turret. And here we are. Yep. That's one of those moments where it's like, you can on, on a map like this, you can play with your team and just poke down this angle from like the high ground. And that's the value you're going to get because they, they have three lanes to choose from. Realistically, they only have two because this lane down here is so terrible that they're, they're going to just walk at you and like, you'll get the value if you just press M one from range other maps, not the same thing, but I, I trust your intuition on like what angle they're probably going to come at and then shooting with time. Obviously right here, it's like we didn't have this knowledge, so we're going to go for those flank plays. But okay, this is for bronze, likely last fight. I don't like that we're sitting on low ground as a team. I definitely don't like that the junk rat just died somehow. But I'm okay, we're helping your team. Health, not even shoot. looking for this health pack when I arrived. I think two died in that moment before. No. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that boop. If you're low on health, he's winning that. If you win this, uh, I don't know. It's not looking great, but it's not looking terrible. Yeah, we have beat. Nice. Okay, we speed amp. Maybe after beat. We don't need to be healing when we have beat because there's nothing to heal here. Your other healer is probably going to be fine. You want to speed in and actually take advantage of the beat. You have 600 health to work with. If you can kill a target, much better than just healing people that don't need the heals. You do switch yeah, to speed eventually, but understand the, the bigger picture here. If we can just focus on the speed and get things in, great. Yeah, I, I that is a delayed reaction that I have frequently still, which is, wait, what am I doing? And I flip over to speed, but I will very often put it on heals after beat, especially if it's a reactive beat where people look hurt to start with. I mean, it's like, yes, if people are crit in the beat, that is sometimes fine. But you also have another support that should heal it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm giving you benefit of the doubt because this is bronze and sometimes your healer just will not heal. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm owning the mistake. I, I yeah. definitely make that mistake. And I have to, it's like a second or two before I get over to speed. Oh, go wait, I should speed this. I can speed this. Yeah, and yeah. it's not like you're 100% wrong. I just want to explain that like yes but still like you have beat you can be aggressive with it let's be aggressive with it and focus on the healing later but okay we're almost done with the gameplay you should win this fight yeah okay starting with the boop again like not my favorite not my favorite especially when she doesn't even see you if she, and she's effectively moving still like you Bronzes don't move good, like well enough for you to just like start by booping them because sometimes they'll just stand still for you and you get a free burst. So the number one thing that I'm going to just say off the bat is just more aggression in, in we we've talked. It's not just aggro. It, it's aggro in the right places at the right times, yeah. but we talked about that. And I think 
you're a smart enough player to realize where it's the right time and the wrong time. I think it's more so just a realization that playing for your team and playing to speed them around is it's so macro heavy that it doesn't really even really come to fruition until maybe diamonds like maybe maybe plat it, people aren't thinking about i want to speed in three two one they're not you can't make those calls and because of that you really just need to just do poke damage and and utilize the speed off walls that you have to take 1v1 duels and win them consistently now, if that's yeah. not something that you're able to do it's either the choice is either to practice in 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 uh death matches and free-for-alls like to to get better at the mechanics or just play a character that makes it really easy like i don't know just like anna just anti that just anti them and then they'll they will just fall over naturally like that yeah. it, it's so much easier on anna but this is this is unranked to gm lucio so this is what we're talking about. This is what we're doing. This is what we're I, doing. I think I can get there again. I have played that aggressive Lucio. I have a jillion clips, uh, you know, of it. And I have some replays of it even just from the past couple of weeks. Um, I used to have more success with it like six months ago than I did uh, a month or two ago. And so that's part of that either inconsistency or genuine decline or whatever the hell happened to me in spring. But I, I enjoy playing that way. But I get I think I get gun shy the times when I do it at the wrong time twice in a row that's the mental starting to decay and 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 you know uh allow the tilt to come in and 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 gain ground it's most likely what's yeah. happening but i'm more than more than happy to to keep that closer to the top so that i can start seeing the feedback of when did it work why did it work when didn't it work why didn't it work yeah and i the thing is i think you know when it didn't work but the mental all i can say is like it, it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day if you are making mistakes you are learning from them and you're improving and then you'll get to that next level that's that is the fact like that will happen especially with what i've seen the thing is it's just like i'm not saying be as aggressive i didn't i don't know how aggressive you were before with what we talked about today Absurdly. and how we thought about it see yeah we can still tailor that aggression to be like safe yeah and i think what you're gonna see is that you're arguably safer when you take that first initiative um than if you hit, sit back like i don't know if you've ever played D, &D baldur's gate though it's an action economy game if you get the initiative and you can just kill an enemy they don't take their turn you just that is so big for you in that kind of game and in overwatch in a way is an action economy game that's just a lot more action if you can just like kill someone from a fight they are not present in that fight you are now at a, at a severe advantage they're, they are at a severe disadvantage. You have a crazy advantage, and you can take it. You can take account of that. I like if I can kill that. their spellcaster in the back, now they don't have heals. Right bam! There you go. Yeah. Okay. I, All I game like theory like kind that. of is intertwined, and it, it, this is why the pro players can play pretty much anything at a pro level because all games have that fundamentals, si like similarities, with some yeah. differences. But yeah, like the number that. one thing is aggro. Number two thing, I just want to talk about your alts. Mm -hmm. um and, and just like the thing is if you play more aggressive you are going to have beat much more frequently therefore i want to see beat used aggressively a lot of the time unless you have to deal with like a nano blade combo or like a very a very obvious combo you have to beat out like i don't know nano visor visor in general nano blade blade anything like that you can maybe save the beat for if they're being like really oppressive but at the end of the day, like if you look at the scoreboard and they've gotten 500 damage after four minutes, they don't have blade. They do not have blade, brother. You can you can just yeah. use your beat aggressively. And, and if you're playing more aggressive, this is the crazy loop that makes it like once you flip the switch in your brain, it's, it's going to make sense. And bronze is going to become much simpler. If you are being more aggressive, you get your alt faster. Your alt makes it easier to be more aggressive and win the, f the the fight from the beginning faster. Like you almost guarantee a pick, and you're just gonna keep cycling this, and you're gonna have three alts and it, essentially three team fights one and around before they even get an alt that probably isn't even gonna win them because they're not great at using that alt. Because I mean, mm -hmm. they're currently in bronze. There's a very high chance they're not the most efficient. It creates this cycle that you're just going to keep snowballing. And if you and, and everything about low ranks is if you start the snowball, it is very hard for them to overcome that. Even in high rank, but in bronze, like yeah. almost definitely because. Oh, I've been on I've been on both sides of that for yes. sure. 
If you can start the what you're snowball talking about here, I didn't connect the dots smartly, but I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen it and gone, man, I have ult already. You know, and that's when I am getting away with being aggressive early on. Yep. And maybe it's a map I'm more comfortable with, uh, even a game mode I'm more comfortable with, like shooting down a lane uh, under the Coliseum. I get yep. ult before they even get to the robot. Uh huh. Like I can see frequently it. with my slow ass Lucio bullets just covering that area that they yep. have to walk through. And a bronze team, enough of them will walk through that spam. And my team is standing in some and I'm healing them, you know, and I'm moving across the, the pillars and whatnot. And yeah, I get alt fast, but I didn't really connect that to aggression. And that's that's much smarter. Yeah. That's, that's good. I like that. Thank you. 100% like that is, it's going to help you out a lot. If you can be more aggressive, you have beat more and you're going to start that, that snowball. And when you win that first fight, th the other thing is like, even if you if you reclaim a point with beats and you only get one pick and then the fight slowly trickles down thereafter, the pick that you got in bronze, that person is very, very likely to stagger away from their team. And now because you're aggressive, you're going to see this guy apart from all of his other friends. And now you get to just kill this guy again and again and again and again. And then the game's over and they're like, oh man, why'd we lose? Man, this guy right here is so terrible. Well, you, you made him look terrible because you, you got the beat. You killed him. Right. You played aggressive. You're going to keep poking him. It's completely different. I get that. You turn not as good into terrible. Like you, yes. you force that. I see. Yeah, and, I and because they're not thinking, oh, I should probably just wait for my team. They're not thinking about that in bronze. They're, they're, and they're not thinking about that in silver and gold either. So like, again, this is something that you can take with you really a, a very far away um, until you get to places where things are a lot, not, I wouldn't say consistent, but they're a lot more consistent than they are in bronze. There's no consistency in this rank and that's normal uh, for, for the lowest rank in the game. You have some people that are smurfing. You have some people that have been there for a long time. You have some people that it's, they're playing on 10 FPS. But once you can get more consistency, yeah, the game does get a lot more fun. Too. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten I've gotten thanked for reporting a few of those. Yeah, no, I'm sure I am sure that there it's, it's a wasteland. It's a wasteland. I, I haven't played in bronze in very, content, a very long Paz. time. It's a farm. It's where you farm content. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I I don't think anyone seeks joy in me beating it's up on bronze. Where you get bronzes. us to farm content, kid? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the last thing I'm going to say, okay. I've said this before, uh, just, just for the sake of your time, because I know you only have a few minutes left. Um, it's the death match. And what this is going to help you do is I, I, I don't even necessarily want you to focus on aiming anymore. I think what's more important for you to focus on is more so movement. I think, and, and I know okay. you've watched the alt channel video recently. Mm -hmm. That video, I talked a lot about movement before I even touched on aim. And I only touched on aim for maybe 30 to 45 seconds out of that video. I, I yeah. think a lot of people disregard how important movement is in a game like Overwatch, especially when it comes to Lucio. Like that is what this character is all about. If you can move better and you can just secure a strafe off of walls in yeah. 1v1s, you're not going to be taking as much damage and, and it's going to be easier for you to hit shots on Lucio. Like the movement is a big part of making everything else easier on Lucio. I, I can guarantee it. That is the number one thing that I don't think I talked about enough in all of my Lucio videos is like the movement is really important. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I SK can, is good I to watch for that and also Cujo, but go ahead. Than you've seen. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I, I can move a bit better than, than you've seen. And uh -huh. I can look for, for replays with, with better examples or maybe just play the games from, from the collection. Um, but the, uh, the strafe thing, I keep forgetting to go back to that video, dig out the code you mentioned that will, I, I assume it's a workshop code. It puts you in third person. So you can actually make sure your character is moving and not uh -huh. just, you know, standing kind of still and quivering. Um, I have not remembered to go do that yet. That, that could I be helpful if, I, I mean, realistically, it's more so what your problem with movement is, is that you're just not even playing off a wall. You're, you're sticking yourself right in the middle of a point with, mm -hmm. with a very far angle. Like it, let's say that you're, there's a circle and you're, you're right in the middle. It's yep. very, you're, you're making the distance very difficult to get to a wall where realistically, if we're looking yeah, at the same circle, we want to be more so like here on, yeah. on this quadrant or 
So control that point maps that do not have good walls, what, what I would consider good walls. And Busan, one of those rounds does, and I just don't use them well. Um, but other control point maps that do have what I consider good walls are like Lijiang. Yeah, uh -huh. um, fine, absolutely fine. Or the hybrids where you have to unlock the payload, like King's Road. Yeah. Uh, you know, that unlock point, there's good walls, but they're so far apart. My tank's always on the wrong side. You know, so it, I, I do have to make that decision. Like, I can't. I can heal you, but I can't heal your positioning. So maybe I just need to not create a monster and, and let you learn your lesson. The other thing is when you play off of a wall mm. and, and you have your speed amp on, I, I think you're you're severely underplaying how much of a speed boost you get from jumping off of a wall. Like you can go anywhere off oh, of the a skin. wall. Yeah. Oh no, I, I kill myself with that by flinging myself too far that I can't change trajectory anymore and now i'm walking into it flying into a diva bomb with nothing to grab onto to change directions um i have trouble getting that started if i'm already engaged like the slow from a moira the obviously may is it's really tough to start to get away but once you can yeah i can like do the, the little late skim thing which tap 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 and you're just like a hundred miles away if that, is it, that's what you're talking about yeah no 100 percent. i okay. and here's the thing what i'm just trying to get at is I want you to start doing more deathmatch. I want you to start playing off of the walls more to understand and get the, the muscle memory down of like, this is the capabilities you have on Lucio when you're playing on a wall. It's okay. so important to learn that and, and get that down. And, okay. and like we talked about that, but the thing is I can't really teach you how to do that, especially since I, I'm not the best at Lucio movement. I understand though how important it is to play off of the wall and that the way that I got a little bit better at it was not doing Vaxta where there is no wall. It's about combining the movement first and then the aim that's kind of with it at the same time. Like that is the way to do it. Yeah, so the aim being downstream is good because I am terrible from high ground. I used to absolutely hate the the fact that high ground is good because I can't hit shit. Because it's an extra, it's an extra, it's an extra um, degree of rotation. Yes. Right. Like if if we're on two degree, two two dimensions, it's an extra dimension. It's a third dimension. Mm -hmm. Shooting down at people is way tougher for me to to predict where they're going. I mean, I can do it, but it's way less likely than just no. It's harder down a in general, even level. for us. It, like yeah, at, even yeah. top five hundred, like it is. It is harder to aim on yeah. like the hypotenuse of a triangle. Yeah, but I think I down. can wall ride better than what you're seeing. I just need to force myself on the maps where it's easy to not go to the wall and stay Always. with people. And yes. Is to just say, nope, it's just like playing Aliens versus Predator. If you're the alien and you're on the floor, you're an idiot. Don't do yep. it. I exactly. just need to get the hell if off. If you're not on a wall, you're doing something wrong on Lucio, usually. All right, fair. If you're not playing off of a wall to like speed amp and jump off to get closer to your team, you're doing something wrong. So, wow, they already there started with the wall. Epic. Yeah. We'll see how the first few fights go and then I can give you my, my thoughts. But like I said, really just off the bat in, in these elos, I, I'm always just thinking, how can I get my alt charge up? And that's typically through damage, damage, damage. Okay, yep, I said it awkward. It's damage, damage, damage. It's no, true. No, um, it's 100% something that every support should be doing, um, especially when we're yeah. playing Lucio. Like, yes, our soldier should be taking an angle. Our soldier should be taking an angle, but he's not doing that. So you can't really speed with the soldier here. Really, what I would be looking for is like, okay, when's my Sombra going to reveal herself and I'm going to just try to flank with her and try to kill a target? That's... that's, that's yeah. You're going to see what's going to happen. Right, you're, you're, calling, you're, calling, you're calling what's going to happen. I mean, if it does happen, I, I, I hope that keeps happening because then we shouldn't we shouldn't struggle too much this game. Um, okay. The aim was... Uh, hey, dude, a... you know what? My aim is not that great right now either. It, you know, aim is something we can fix. And I'll give you yeah, a code okay. at the end uh, that will oh, help you out. I've been not necessarily that. a code, but just the method for Lucio, I think. Um, I don't mind that we're just kind of chilling and trying to kill the May with the team. I don't know why she's not falling over, but... She should be dying. Yeah, that, I just don't think everyone's shooting the same thing. Yeah, uh, because the Mercy is healing her, firstly. And second of all, nobody's targeting the freaking yeah. healer. Now here, look, that's what I meant by I, get, I, I have a tendency to make everything a 1v4. Yeah, overextending, I, I can see how that might be a problem. Honestly, I feel like you... No, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm still going to watch because I don't want to say anything that's wrong. I want to see what your tendencies are. Like, honestly, right here, like, oh, sorry. Um, what I would no, say no. is, like, all that time before that we were kind of just 
doing nothing here. We had a pick. I, I still feel like we can... If they're not going to turn for you and you are still like 1v4, I don't agree with you pushing that hard. I feel like all this time we still could have been finding damage and trying to find a pick. Um, because That's a lot of this true. rotation... Let me let me pull this back just a little bit more. There was a lot of downtime that I think we definitely could have... Well, yeah, more could downtime have than that. that. Um, like this whole time, I, they're not even turning for you. I feel like you really can just stay here and just... Instead of going for the May, I'd probably help your team with what they are actually shooting. With the Ram. Um, the yeah. Ram or the the Alari. Um, True, but, but like right here, it's like they don't really turn for you. So why even, why even, you know, run away? I just got place? scared off by the May because if the May slows me, and I, that's a dumb death for no reason. And uh, honestly, I just was like, okay, well now I got their May, and at the beginning, their Mercy was healing up the May because she she saw that the May was getting fucked. So she was like, oh, I got to focus the May. So I took a part, one healer off of their tank. So that, yep. that gives my team a bit of space to move up. And that's what they did. I wasted time, obviously, but I was just trying to get back into the back lines, check up if I need to heal up anyone or do anything. I see and what I you're trying like, to do. But what I'm saying yeah. here, right, is like, sure, mm. in, in a normal environment, when you kind of int in here, mm. And you're 1v4ing, as you said, they should turn for you and kill you. I agree with that. But we have to adapt to the situation and just play to hard carry here. Which, I mean, the initial yeah. mistake was probably just jumping in like this instead of taking the high ground and flanking behind. Ground. If I'm really yeah. going to be, like, nitpicky here. But in reality, yeah. like, this May didn't really turn for you. And we already yeah. left. This was a lot of, like, alts, charge rates, and pick potential opportunity mm. that we're just missing out on and it's not like yeah, you would do that in a gm lobby to be honest we wouldn't uh, everything that's been happening since we left the door wouldn't have been happening in a gm lobby but what i'm saying is this is just unnecessary to leave because now we're mm. gonna not have alt for the next fight that pretty much just wins you the fight if you have the alt it is what i'm getting at here yes. I, I understand what you're trying to go for but keep an open mind in the sense that maybe what we're trying to do is still wrong it, it, no, what you're saying is 200% right. I totally agree with you. Like, I I noticed that I that I messed up a bit too late there. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm already up now. If they turn for you, I think it's fine to get out. All the other thing is, like, the May freeze or the May slow doesn't really bother you if you're playing next to a wall because you're a, a wall jump away from being You can just wall ride. So you're a lot safer and maneuverable as Lucio than you think. And, and what I would say is if you want to get aggressive... Think about other mm. ways to get to an aggressive point in the fight instead of just beelining, yeah, right? Not even beelining, beelining just straight rushing straight, straight in to their front line. Like, think about, I mean, you said you were an Overwatch 1 player. I think you mm. can recognize at least the OG maps a little bit more. Yeah, it's like, yeah. there's a lot more agency here. Like, for example, first point, watch point Gibraltar is all about this high ground, and they didn't hold it yeah. at all. We could have started a, an engagement from up here. We could have went down mm -hmm. below here. We could have just yeah. honestly chilled here and just poked until they walked back and then maybe taken an angle on the right side. Anything Nothing. to avoid walking straight just through them when in. they have a Ramatra, Rhine, Junker Queen, Sigma, anything that's really just going to be able to turn on you. The crazy thing is yeah. they still don't do it, but this is more so a thing to think about when we start getting into like plat gold. Higher lobbies, yeah, that's 100%. Yeah. And out of curiosity, do you know what your sensitivity in DPI is? Uh, my sense is I, I, I change it up quite often and that's one of my tiny problems is I have certain days where like I can go up to six uh -huh. and like, I'd feel like it's even a bit slow and there's certain days where like I'd be on three and I'd be like damn that's too high today it's on five I think no it's on six do you know what your DPI is uh DPI one sec uh nope no idea where it is so, so DPI is bound to your mouse. Oh, the mouse sensitivity. Yes. Oh, my, it's original. It's any, like any other mouse. It's so normal. probably like 800 probably. Yeah. Around that. I think. Honestly, for me, I run 800 DPI six ends. That's considered pretty high. Um, there. What I can say to you is just like pick a sense and just like play around mm -hmm. with it in, in a, a free for all death match. And, and we'll talk about that at the end, but I think that's going to help you realize like the positional stuff that we're talking about because like sometimes you take the right type of engagement but you miss a, ton a bunch of shots and it makes you think that you're doing the wrong thing but in reality you're doing the right thing it's just like a matter of practicing the execution the execution yeah um because i mean i still still, still there are ways that 
And, and here's the thing. You're, you're overcompensating for a, a lack of just like being consistent by mm. beelining through a front line, which I, I, you know, this is wrong, but you do this because you're thinking it's like the only way you're actually going to hit a shot. I feel like that's yeah. kind of what the back of your mind is that, telling you. That's kind of it. Yeah. Um, and because I'm given no opportunities. Like if you haven't noticed how passive my team is playing, like uh, at a certain point here, they're playing a tiny bit aggressive, but in the rest of in the rest of the engagement, they're gonna play so passive. I mean, I would argue that it doesn't really matter what your team's doing because if you take these engagements at better times and in better ways, you would get more effective damage and it wouldn't be a problem. There's a lot of moments where True. you could have killed a target, but we chickened out. I or it all, yeah, we, yeah, it, yeah I a lot of it. Like yes, I understand your team is going to be bad every single game that you play because it's silver. But it doesn't mm. really matter what they do because you can always carry this rank. 100%. You can always do it. That's that's fair. Uh, when that's you get to plat, sometimes it gets a little weird. But at this rank, you can almost always do this. Somehow, you're going to actually get out of that. Oh, uh, that right here is just want to be on yeah. speed boost to yeah, try to get people I'm, I'm, out. And you also just don't want to go into a mail. Dash, dash straight into it. Yeah, that, that's my big problem is that since I don't have audio, I couldn't hear that she popped the alt. And I just like... Once I realized that she popped it, I, it was a tiny bit too late and I was ready in it. Why, was, why don't you have audio? Is it like a computer thing? No. Uh, well, my thing is uh, my current headset is at a friend's place and I okay. haven't seen that person in a very long time. Okay. And uh, so I, I don't have my headset at home right now. All right. So got yeah. you. Got you. I mean, once you get the headset, then you're just going to get a giga buff, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's going to be like. Damn. Yeah, so you can act. You, you Let's can, you break can, it down. You have you have more um, perception of I guess what's going on, a better Up perception. Game. Right. And then yeah. yeah, your movement your movements honestly better than most Lucio players at the rank that you're at. So that's good. Uh, I've trained that so hard. Like I, in like a week. Now it's been two weeks that I've like been consistently playing this game, and I have like 48 hours on Lucio. That's impressive. That's impressive. Thank now, you. I'm watching this and I see your movement and and the level that you're at higher than I feel like you it, it needs or what usually it is at this rank. And I'm I'm a little I wouldn't say upset. It's it's um what is it disheartening? I suppose. Also, I mean disappointing. It's disappointing because like we don't use this movement potential that you have to the to the highest it could be. What I mean by oh yeah. god, I keep hitting the wrong button. Yeah, what yeah. I, mean by I, see, this, I see exactly what you mean. There's no follow up. And here's the thing, like we. Right here is a moment where the fight isn't really going to go anywhere mm. if you push right now. Um, yeah. Yes, you do eventually are like, okay, what do I do? Yeah, you shoot the turret. But like this whole time, there was just so many opportunities for you to pressure a different angle so that your whole team doesn't just fall over and they can actually walk in. They can feel mm. like they want to. The other thing is that your app got hacked. You could have... Um, if you would have yeah. had your headphones, you would have heard it. So I'm not really even going to talk about that because uh, you could have peeled for that earlier. But in this situation, if everything else was null and void, like there's so many options for you. You can kill this turret and then we can maybe wall ride off this to the right angle. Maybe we could just back off both walls, get this high ground over here and just start pressuring from somewhere else to make the shots for you easier to hit and also just more valuable because you're going to see the target that maybe is out of position that thinks they're safe but isn't. But instead, it's... Mm. We're kind of just using Lucio as a heal bot, which is not what we want to use Lucio for because Lucio's whole like product offering is the this speed boost. It, 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 he, he is all about speed or like being able to take a different angle and find a pick if you're going to play Lucio outside of Brawl, which is really what we're going to be doing in Ranked all the time. Our thing is like mm. our, our hog is using his alt. This is a time for you to actually enable him with speed if you want to play with him. This yeah, is a moment that you can see like, hey, the enable the team. Here. That's the thing here is that I was not really playing with our hog because our hog had the bap. So the bap and hog were playing together and I was just trying to, as much as I can, play with my DPS because the hog was really not like staying close to me. And like if if the tank is not going to make the effort of actually like playing off of my plays, I'm not going to try to play off his. So the other support can do whatever he wants and like take care of the of the tank and whatever. And I'll just take care of the DPS and I'll just like speed them in and like heal them out, you know? I would argue that that is a bad way to look at it. A very bad way to look at it. And it should not be the way that you look at it because it's going to lead to your downfall. And, and, and I think something that would help you is if you look at value 
you don't even look at your teammates as you're enabling your teammates. It's more so you're going to get more out of your kit. Like, how can you get more out of yourself? And when you're playing support, naturally, that is going to be based sometimes off of your teammates. If you yeah. see an opportunity that you can enable a teammate better with a speed boost while they are walking in, you should just do it. Take it. It doesn't take matter it, yeah. if you are looking more so to help the soldier take an angle or help the Sombra get on a flank. Yeah. At the end of the day, if there is a chance to get value in a fight and it is the best you option, it. you take it. You, it doesn't matter yeah. who it is. You're and right, you're right. and I agree with you that like, hey, the Baptiste is usually going to take care of this hog for the most part in terms of healing. The hog hell can take care of himself. He has his own exactly. breather, That's which is why he's playing that character because... I mean, it's very Got consistent highest, in both ranks. Highest healing output in the entire game. For, for a tank. By the way. 100%. And it's... Yeah. Like, you, you shouldn't look at it as, oh, well, I didn't speed my hog here because it wasn't my job to help him when, like, he's trying to make a play here. And if you speed boost him in, I reckon that you would probably at least kill this Alari, maybe get away with killing the May, and then we've opened up the fight. It's not about, like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do in the comp and I'm overthinking things. It's like, I see value. I, I enable that value. If it gets enabled, great. If it doesn't, okay, whatever. Uh, there's just mm. a lot of missed opportunity here because it's uh, for me and i'm not trying to be that yeah. guy but it sounds to me like we still have the mindset of oh my teams are kind of terrible like oh dude what are they doing yeah that, you got to just get a, that out of your head and just think what can i do better kind of got in, into like i really got myself into that mindset because like okay there, there was like the first few days where i was playing this game and i was like going crazy and like you the clips the i sadly did not save any clips but like i had insane clips and uh, eventually I just like messed those clips up and like ever since it's been like harder and harder, harder lobbies, harder, like harder to get into the game. The game's vibe was a bit harder to get into. Yeah, I see what you're talking about, 100%. And I mean, the clips will come with time if we hard focus on ourselves and eventually get to that level that we need to be. Like we just said, we can get more done if we take angles, support teammates, and make sure that the mindset is about you and how you can improve Let's keep this going. Mm. Mm. So yeah, right here, whole time. Yeah. If we just speed boost this hog while we are doing this, life it is good. It would have been more efficient for the life team. Is that's, good. that's right. Um, uh, I don't mind the beat drop. I mind that we still haven't been speeding in this entire time when we're playing with our whole team and we just beat it. Um, yeah. So, so the big two things I'm seeing right now are there are times where we could start a fight with a better angle, a better flank to get more damage on a more um advantageous target number two using the speed boost to help our teammates when everyone is stacked together and trying to take a brawl and then we can that that's really where the, the amp is going to be going is when can we speed boost when the, the fight is starting to happen yeah i see because right here we're just sitting on heels like no one needs heals everyone has shields right now they need to speed in and kill things you know that's true And yeah, right here, it's like, we could reload. We could do a lot of things. Okay, I like that I we tried to boot to the there. Mercy yep, out. yep. I, I see what you're trying to do. But the Mercy still got the res off. Yep, it happens. Yeah. Honestly, right there, a lot of it was just not speeding the team around. And then... Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, not being able to lock in and focus really on a target afterwards because it was like a lot of things were going on. Yeah, that's true. I was, I was like so panicked out here. Like, yeah. Mm, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? Speed? Okay, no, we booping. But so, okay, we're he like here like the the bat put down his uh like the zone thingy and I was like okay we're good. Right, yep, I'm okay with you healing there when you're low. Up in your team with the May, yep. Here, that's that's here. I isolate, I isolated her. Yep, I mean, that's her. fine. Like, you can take a duel every now and then, but it's just the way that you go about it can be a lot cleaner. That's that's what I was yep. about to get back to is like, yeah, and like it's more like the the start of the engagement is like so poor. Like, I'm like, mm. I would also just like to see you playing with your movement a lot more to help you. It's really everything I said, like the this wall riding the off of it. That was the only game where I was like really not on the walls. And like, if you want to like see the other gameplay that I, that I provided, like, as well, you will you will realize that like, okay, here the 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 wall riding is is very different. It's like, okay, there's way more wall rides in the other game than there is in this one. 
I mean, I'm sure that there are. It's just like this is something we have to think about. It's not even necessarily whether you wall road or not. It's more so like we're not thinking about like what is a better angle to go for and where can I get like a, a more advantageous position instead of just like me running straight in without beat. And what I want to talk about here is actually how we use the beat. Mm. Um, we should never really yeah. use beat in a fight that we're up one, like a five yeah, to four. True. Um, that's true. That's this true. is just a bad use of the alt because we we already kind of won. Yeah, here I, I was panicked and I was like, okay, well, let's let's make it. Oh, uh, well, actually, it's four and four. It's four and four, but we killed the to tank. Use it before, like pushing in and like, or as a counter to other alts. So in this game, I was like using it as an enabling weapon, if you want. It's like, okay, I'm enabling my team to have a lot of health and push in as much as they would like to, like play aggressively. And uh, and it was more. It was mostly like the execution was really poor, and I like I I did not really. I wasn't scanning the battlefield as much as I should have been. Yeah, and I, even then, like sure, like those are good, like ways to use it. But this is just not the right time whatsoever. We killed their Ramatra, which is a much more valuable pick yeah. than a Sombra. It just doesn't need to True. happen. Also, no one is True. on the carts. Also, we're trying to engage beat when we also have been saying that our team doesn't speed in and walk in. So. That mm. doesn't make a lot of sense either. We got to think mm. more about how we're using this beat drop. Um, but I, I don't think that's the main thing we need to worry about. I think a lot of it is disconnected from beat and more so about how are we approaching a fight with angles? And then also how are we supporting yeah. our team when the fight actually happens with speed boosts to enable them, which I don't think is a thought that is typically going through your head that you're always like thinking what is yeah. it i feel like right now and this is a problem with a lot of just players in general it's just mm. like we play the game and there's so much shit happening that we just kind of get lost and the fight just turns yeah. into chaos That's but it. this That's with using these tenants it's going to direct character. it these tenants are going to direct your thoughts and make it a lot easier but mm. go ahead what were you saying mm. uh, i was saying that like especially like you, you were talking about the pace of the game and especially as a lucio main like and you're the fastest character on the field if that makes sense yeah 100%. like it, it's extra fast paced you got to constantly be uh knowing everything you constantly got to keep an eye out for for a lot of things and like in this game i was really not capable of doing so and like i i totally agree with like a lot of your points it's like and like most of them the the beat usage was garbo um mostly the way i engage into fights or like push into fights is like also questionable and like I know why I'm at my rank. I, it's mostly like gameplay wise. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. think if you okay. if you go into and also just every time mm -hmm. you're gonna look for a beat engage, what should you be doing? I should be looking for at least the, uh, how many players are on the enemy. Think team about what we were alive. talking about. Think about what we were talking about. If we do use the beat, what should we use with our crossfade? How should we use amp? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, or we're speeding in. We're speeding or, in. Or if, That's how simple it is. And, and I, I, here's the thing. I want to. I want to. I want to help your thinking here. That's how simple hmm. it is. You beat. You speed in. It's not all these other things that you're telling me. Which I'm. I'm glad that you're thinking that. But this is the reason why you're struggling is because you're thinking about so many things that just don't matter. And that's a problem that a lot of lower elo players have is because you make it so much more complicated than you need to. You you see your you see your hog alting, you speed that guy in. That's how simple it is. And it makes it a lot easier for you to perceive what's going on because you're actually worrying about what matters. You're not like a bad player at all. It's more so that you're Thank over you. you're over stimulating your brain, which makes it so hard to see what's going on. Cause I see what you're that's trying to say. But like, yes, yeah. it has merit, but it's not what you need to focus on. It's not what I need to be doing yes. in that gameplay. Yeah, yes. Right. And it's a lot of just like, oh, I did this to try to do this. But think it, it, it it's really simple. This game, it can be very complicated, the very highest levels. But at the level that we are at, it's better for us if we focus on ourselves and our own fundamentals to really push improvement. Like That is what really matters here. Right here, mm. we beat it. Okay, yeah, that was a mistake. How do we compensate for it? We don't speed boost in, and that's why the there's no value. It doesn't matter yeah, if we're looking for specific things. At the very first step, we've messed up. If we don't get there's the no first step right, if you have the beats down, yeah, you're yeah. Right. And if we don't get that first step, and we don't even speed our team in to try to help them make value, it doesn't matter that's who we're looking at because they can't even shoot it. Focus yeah, on that first step, the most basic thing, and we're gonna build up mm. from there. We don't want to do calculus before we know algebra. We need to learn algebra yeah, first. That's two hundred percent. I was about to say, I like, I have a tendency to have like, okay, I'm, I have good movement and like, okay, I'm trying my best on like certain like certain things, but and like, 
certain players my rank do not do those one things that I do. But like on the other hand, there's the basics and the 101 that I do not know anything about. I just broke my nail clippers. Oh, damn. Oh, Out. wow. That is so wild. All right. Well, are you okay, coach? No, we're good. We're good. Are we good to keep going? We're good. But I 100% agree. Like, yes, there are things you're doing better than some of your teammates, but it doesn't really matter if you're better than your teammates because we're all still in the same lobby. We all have 200%. one thing we want to do, which is win the game. And the only way you can really influence that is with yourself. So that is something that's, to think about. That's facts right there. And then here's the thing. We we um, had our heat lamp on instead of speeding. And it's like, mm. you can get in here really fast because you can wall jump. They don't have yeah. that luxury. I have that, yeah. I have a tendency to overlook that and I have a tendency to like get tunnel vision as I mentioned at the beginning of the gameplay review is that okay but once like target is on lock on I stop thinking oh there's my team there's me like, it's just like they're low and I'm gonna mess them up got you here's the thing when we when we fix the speed amp problems when we fix our approach to a fight and that's what we're focusing on mm you can still do the same thing and like look at a target except now we've we've done the first steps now we can do the second step right now we're just skipping to the last step and not thinking about what what happens yeah. before that that's going to make that, it more that's, successful that's the one that's the one coach you got me and then there we go we still got the pick but no one's pushing cart which does kind of suck which is why i yeah. think the beat wasn't really even worth it from the beginning but um okay i don't mind that you're being aggressive i do mind that you push this hard but you're still going to get out of it because silver is silver should get out of it. Silver is silver. Yeah, I mean, that that happens. You can do that, but I think that's a little too far. But I I, I don't mind with being aggressive. Though, I trying agree. To get My, no healers around me. No tanks. No nothing. So that was that was kind of the dumb play. It's more so just like we like went like into here. their spawn. Look, I'm staying under the rem, so the rem doesn't like he can't back up as much as he wants. And as soon as my boop is available, I boop him back into like the DPS and the tanks and stuff. Yeah, and I such. can see that that can be a small thing to think about in the moment so I, I understand what you're getting at okay we're back on point honestly yeah i think we just stack three two point try to get this as close as possible they're gonna have mm -hmm. a lot of alts but we're probably yeah, gonna yeah, be able to speed are. out of that they might not even touch with three people on they should touch doesn't look like they're going I to i don't i don't think they're gonna no, it doesn't look like they do <laughs> no they're not gonna be able to that's my second that's my third death in the game i think or second doesn't matter though, because we got the point and they wasted alts. So we're, we're yeah, that's here. true. Real trap shit. Yeah, uh, here that that was embarrassing. Yeah, here here I was like, okay, spy track, spy track, but I wasted a bit too much time doing that. So I was like, okay. I think we saw the uh, sombra in front of you so this isn't necessary but i don't mind i wasn't idea. sure though i thought she went in this and might have snuck back and i was like yeah mm. i got you i got you and now i'm stuck with the mercy in a room and the ram comes in yeah the entire team is gonna oh come my. in and here i'm like okay i pop out I got lucky yeah that, i missed that boop up i mean it's fine i don't mind the idea okay we beat it and then immediately what do we need to do Speed boost. Speed boost our team in. And you can see, but the, the thing is like, yes, great. We beat it and we're pushing the aggression, but like your team doesn't get anything out of it because they can't get into the fight. And that's this true. loses so much value. Like it's that's, crazy. That takes the value out of the beat. Yes, because it, now it, you're, it's only you really getting anything out of it. And it, nothing true. really comes of it. Uh, and this comes with true. like every single fight. When we want to take, when we get a pick with the hog and it's a 5v4, immediately what we should do mm. is speed boost in if they're close. So that we can just clean up while we have the advantage and don't give them time to react. To Stuff react. like that yeah. is like Snowballs. key to a Lucio's kit. Um, if we're not going to just start the fight with a flank. And we should really think about yeah. that. I see. Yeah, the, the and then right here, whenever we see a male, we should speed out. Uh, I get that you don't have audio though. Um, it, wow, you don't die there. Oh no, you do. You should, I was gonna say, no, I did. definitely should die. I did, but like, I was three seconds away from making it out, and I was like, oh my god, I'm about to live. And then the mercy just pops into my face. Oh, this is quick yeah. play. Okay. Yeah, which is fine. Quick. Which is totally fine. Honestly, this is fine because we still learned a lot out of this. Um, and I think honestly, in this stage of the game, quick play is really just ranked. 
But it um, is at, at yeah. this point. Yeah, I was about to say quickly gets so much more competitive than comp, and like it, it's actually funny. All right, here these are the things I want you to think about, and and you know I'm just some random dude on the internet, and I can't tell you what to do, but I no, really I'm think you really would. Appreciate it. I really think you would benefit from forgetting everything you know about overwatch not necessarily but for forgetting all of the oh i did this because this and this because this and just yeah. take all of that dump it toss it toss it in a garbage yeah. and focus on these two things and and allow your your brain to have more real estate to think about the things that you are what seeing and, yeah. and not overcomplicate things because you have to understand like yes you're kind of on the right track but, but there's so like many it. small details you're missing because you haven't you you've skipped a lot of steps that it, it makes you play worse as a result when you get mm. there and you improve you're gonna start seeing okay i was on the right track this is what i need to do now and then the, the improvement skyrockets but the first thing i want to say is just looking how mm. we're approaching fights and i don't usually say this to players uh because mm. it's not really a specific cooldown but your approach to a fight needs to depend on like what you're seeing and here's the thing if, mm. if you have like a reinhardt or a reaper and they want to go. try to close the distance you you want to help them with speed boost to do that um mm. if your team is playing really split then you're gonna want to approach the fight in the way that we were talking about where we're maybe going to try to find a different angle that isn't just we're running through the enemy is. team yeah that's if true. you do want to just run through the enemy team typically you're gonna have someone that wants to get close like a reinhardt and then you can just play behind the Rhine and speed the Rhine in when they start walking forward. If they never mm. start walking mm -hmm. forward, go back to the flank play style and just take an angle. Your approach mm. to the fight should never always be, I'm just going to run past the enemy back line or the front line to the back line and just start shooting back line. Cause you're going to start yeah. getting punished for that very soon. If not already. Yeah, I got punished for that already. That was like one of the few games where I was like lucky and like that, that slid with me. But in general, yeah, I get you. Your point is 100%. The number two thing I would say is with speed boost, which, I mean, we talked about speed this boost. a lot. Speed, speed boost during amp. Speed is the reason why you are playing Lucio. If you're playing yeah. Lucio to heal, just play you're Brig. Just, just play Mercy. Just play Brig for AoE heals or literally any other tar per support for single target heals. If you're really going for AoE. Yeah. If you're looking for damage, you could have just played on a BAP Zen Kiriko. Yeah, that's true. The thing is, what sets Lucio apart is his speed boost. So if speed. you're not yeah. speeding yourself to get into a backline with a different approach or to to uh, amplify a teammate to help activate a teammate is usually what I'll say. But mm. that word is you'll understand when you get when. No, no, I got that. When, I, I know when, when someone is activated, like when someone is using a visor or when your hog starts using all or maybe your hog found a hook and we got a pick and now mm. we want to go in whenever yeah. someone created value you are like a uh what do they call it a catalyst for success catalyst, I was about to say you that. are like you're like an exponent even you you could be anything that's going this this is you anything that's multiplying the value that is what support is all about you see an opportunity and you boost the value out of it you by helping it. your you team you're supporting your team to do more that's why support's mm -hmm. called support it's not called support because you heal they just kind of happen to do that you are called support because yeah. you are activating your team more so with you're the value that you're doing you're, you're amplifying 100%. Them. that That's is a, and, and honestly if we were to focus on anything i think this might be more important than your approach but i think your approach should be still on the forefront of your mind because it's gonna affect how it you're is. gonna speed it is it really is and i've then, been thinking yeah. about how i engage into fights and, and then the last thing i would say is just before you you log into a ranked game and i think you should mm. just play ranked more now that we're talking about this because it's a little mm. bit more consistent than quick play i would just say just go into a free-for-all death match on lucio I'll don't do, do vaxta don't do lucio Not surf do just do free-for-alls before you play because that's going to allow you to take duels with other dps and mm. it's also going to force you to move on walls while you shoot the reason why yeah, Vaxta that, isn't good is because it's a flat plane in which you were just shooting. There's no walls, and that isn't mm. usually how that's not how Lucio works in the field. In the field, True. he's off walls, he's taking duels um against targets that are usually DPS. That's why I I believe FFA is the way to go 
for Lucio. This I stuff, I know it seems really simple, but there's a lot of depth, a lot of depth in every single one of the things that we said. Yeah. yeah. Right here. And these are like Agreed. the three things. If you, I just want you to focus on one, two, and then three is just going to be a byproduct of like what you're doing to, to help and practice. Mm. This is what you need to worry about. It's not about what you see in videos at this point, even mm. my own videos. What it's about is just locking in on what you need to do and, and just mm. making it easier for yourself. Don't make yeah. the game more complicated than it is. It is a complicated game, but don't it make is. it more so because right now, yeah. and a lot of players have the same problem you do of making it, much more analytical and complicated than it needs to be. I don't know how to put this, but Lucio is definitely not a great pick in this composition mm -hmm. because we have a Zenyatta and I mean, Zen Lucio isn't terrible in the past. I still don't think it's really that bad in Overwatch 2, but the problem is, is that, I mean, people don't really know what they're doing. Honestly, mm -hmm. though, if you were to run Zen Lucio in a composition in gold, this would kind of be the composition to do it because mm. everyone has like pretty much good self-sustain. So you don't have to worry about that too much, but because you have a Zen, you might be on heal amp a good bit yeah. in this game, but we'll see kind of like, I mean, what I see immediately just from looking at this game, right? Is like, if we were to really take the game in our own hands, which I feel like we kind of have to in lower elos, the, the best way to really go about doing that is to just look at like what the enemy has and they have a widow and they also have a sojourn. They do have a mercy as well, which is pretty easy to kill. I would say can compared to other supports, but the fact that they do have a widow and a sojourn, if, if those characters start popping off, like you can take it upon yourself to deviate from your team and take duels, which is probably what's going to have to happen. The other thing I want to say is you picked a map where Lucio is just so bad. Like everything Ooh. about this game is really bad. And, and here's the thing. I <laughs> like that you picked this map because I feel like a lot of people don't really put map in, in, in like they don't factor that into the character they're picking. But like Lucio just has a really hard time. Like the thing is Brawl's never really played on this map. It's usually dive just because there's so mm -hmm. much high ground that realistically, I think what you're really going to have to do on Lucio on this map with this composition is just look to take an angle and make it work. I'm, I'm going to be honest because like you're not really playing brawl where the speed boost is going to get a whole lot of value. A lot of it's going to come down to your hog wants to just hook main and you're going to have to look somewhere else for some value and try to like surround the enemy and and, and, and look to, for when it's time to deviate, to be honest. That's what I'm getting out of this. But uh, let's start. If you have any questions, let me know and, and we'll we'll see what we can do here. All right. So, all right. Right off the bat, you're looking for a flank, which I don't mind. Honestly, right there, if I ever see a Widow that's on her own and I'm playing Lucio, what do you think I should be doing? Dive the Widow. I'd be running at that. I'd be running at that character. For the sake of not getting demonetized, that's what I'm going to keep it at. Um, but realistically, it's like if we just wall ride to the le right, left, right, and just up here, bam. I think that is a free pick. If you can do that every fight, you'll carry out of gold easily because you're, you're, you're forcing a 5v4. Mm. By staying here and just kind of like AFKing with your team... It doesn't really do a whole lot for you and your healing isn't really as powerful as you think like mm. your hog has breather the orb is probably going to be on the hog zen has self regen the healing here unless they had like a tracer or a sombra the healing here isn't really going to help you got so much burst damage that you just need to kill I, I think killing the widow and then going back to healing your team is the option standing around here and just letting her have an angle not a fan all right what is blood doing and how is he getting away with it? He can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> what Take is that? Kick her off. Okay, dude. Yeah. She lived for like 30 seconds more than she should have. If you're ever playing Lucio in a comp where you don't need to be right next to your team, you're not speeding around a Reaper, you're not speeding around a Reinhardt or a Junker Queen or, or anything else, you don't need to be on them now here's the thing things have switched now they have a torbjorn your job is to kill the turret um and playing with your team i think is a little bit more warranted un un until you you find some value with your amp with a speed boost probably which i, I want to see more speed boost out of this again here, here's the thing target taking an off angle out of position what should you do you should run at that target in gold every single time without fail 
I'm going to be completely honest with you. Until you hit diamond or masters or these people start like being pretty scary, if you see a hit scan on their own without a mercy pocket and you're playing Lucio, your your thing your, immediately if you're not playing a brawl comp should be to just take that angle out. At least boop them away and then go back to your team to look for a heal amp. Heal lamp or speed amp and then use your wall ride to get on that target. Because realistically, your team doesn't really need you here on Lucio. If you were playing BAP, it's different. BAP, you kind of hard carry. Lucio, you got to find ways to make it work. Um, which, I mean, all things considered, I don't think you're doing a terrible job right now. But the thing is, letting this Sojourn kind of do her own thing. Let's see kind of what she does with it. Like, she has such a great angle on the entire team. She should have killed the Zen there. That's... I'm not even going to look at that anymore. Um, let's go back to your POV, though. Because I actually want to see a little bit more. But... She has a free, you can see how she just has free reign on your team. If you stop that sojourn from doing anything, you're actually, you're healing more than what you innately heal because you're taking that damage out of the fight, which is more than what you heal. AKA like damage is healing, whatever. I don't know how long you've been around the community, but we've, that's been like a, a pillar of support for a while. So damage is healing. If you take anything away from this VOD, I hope it would be that, especially on Lucio. But all right. I don't mind the heal lamp there um, because of the sojourn E. I think the reason why you were forced to heal though was just bad positioning. I think just yeah. understand with Lucio, rule of thumb, play around walls. Never put yourself in a position where you are not close to a wall that you can get away. Uh, and that will also help you take less damage because you're going to be behind cover more too. So, but the reason why I say that you understand that if you jump off a wall, you go faster. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's important to know. Some people don't know that. Like, honestly, right here, not, the, not a whole lot's really happening. In these moments, I'm looking to just take an off angle, get the turret, uh, take an off angle, find some damage from my beat, take an off angle, and do something. Because Lucio doesn't really do great with teams that aren't really active, that are just kind of chilling. He wants to get stuff done, so, like, sometimes you have to go for that and, and go for a play. But your team's doing really well at just playing what they needed to play. Yeah, this is where my game is kind of... I mean, you're playing on a controller. I used to play on a controller. Yeah. I understand how it'd be. Um, just there are ways that you can get better about it, which would be just doing death matches before you play. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm not going to be able to teach you aim. I will say that your sensitivity seems much higher than what you're comfortable with, at least for controller. Uh, yeah. I ran 50-50 when I was playing on Xbox. And that a was couple months ago, it was 70, and then I raised it to 90. And it's been like that for a little while. Uh, for both up and down. Yeah, so. honestly, dude, I think just practicing more is what's going to help you out the most. Because like changing your sensitivity all the time, that's what my friends used mm -hmm. to do when I was playing on Xbox. It's not a good move. <laughs> honestly, I don't, I don't hate that you're playing cart in like a coordinated setting because you have the easiest time to get back into the fight. Mm -hmm. The problem is we're in gold. We're in gold. Uh, I, I don't trust my teammates all the time, especially when my soldier is not looking to take the high ground. If he's not going to do it, someone's got to do it. And I'd rather it be you. I'd rather it be you to just take, take people off of angles. Uh, if you don't see your team doing it, you might as well just take, take the, the torch and go for it. Uh, wow. Your widow's hitting shots. That's epic. Right there is another uh, situation of just like positioning. Always put yourself on a wall. If you ever need to get out of something, you switch to speed, jump on the wall, and you're safe. <laughs> it's a rule of thumb. So right now what I'm getting out of this is just you you need to realize that you can be an aggressive force on Lucio. And um, you, can, you, you, you don't need to just be in the open all the time. You And you also just understand that you can be aggressive. And, and take people off of angles. Like, that Sojourn should not even have been able to kill your soldier. Yeah, she shouldn't have been able to kill your soldier if you're just more aggressive there. All right, let's see. Speeding our team back. Dude, the low rank players speed their team back from spawn more than the high rank players. That's <laughs> wild. That's wild. It's crazy because your teammates naturally do less for you um, the lower you go. But here we are.
So like a lot of this is just, you're kind of, you're just not actively trying to like influence fights, I feel. Uh, the reason why I say that is because you know, like, hey, I can speed my soldier that's visoring. Because you do it, you mm -hmm. just do it late. Um, yeah. You realize that you can help these people take angles and you can help pressure people off of like power positions, but you default at the start to just kind of like playing with your team because we've been like conditioned as Overwatch players from the beginning that you should play with your team because that's how you work, do it, and that's how you win. And if you stay next to your team, you're naturally playing with them. Now, I, I'm here to tell you that that's not really how teamwork works. <laughs> and some people want to do different things. Like the soldier wants to take an angle. So this is one of those moments where it's like, if you want to get off the cart, let your Zen just stand there if he's going to do it, and then speed your soldier around to tr help him get a different angle when he's visoring, don't react to him doing the visor. Recognize that he has a visor from the start of the fight and just be with him naturally because he's going to want to take an angle anyways. And hell, if he's in chat, be like, hey, lose, hey, hey, soldier, you want to take high ground with me? We can maybe visor behind them. Be like, oh, yeah, sure. That sounds epic. I'll get a 5K. You know, like that's that. Yeah. I mean, that's the average conversation I have when I was plat all those years ago when I was playing Lucio. Yeah, I was a console player in plat playing Lucio at one point. <laughs> um, and those are the those are the kind of conversations that win games, oddly enough. Um, so, yeah, I, I think being more proactive and understanding that you can take angles and, and I think a, a way to think about this that's going to stick with your head more than me just yapping at you <laughs> is like, what's the competitive advantage of playing Lucio over literally any other support in the game? Every other support in the game heals more than you. Most have better alts than you. <laughs> I mean, really why you're playing Lucio is because you got speed boosts and you're really fast and that's pretty much it. It's all the speed. <laughs> so if you're not going to be utilizing speed or the angles that you have, either with your team in a brawl setting or to take duels when you're playing these weird flank compositions. I mean, why are you playing Lucio? There's no point. So that should be in the back of your head. Like I'm playing Lucio. This is what I should do. If it's not working, I either need to get better or I should just play a different character or it's both, which usually it is even for me. I'm terrible at Lucio. <laughs> <sighs> I'm terrible at Lucio in practice, but in theory, I, I understand him. I just can't do the wall ride shit that SK can do. Sorry. SK is crazy. Yeah. But again, it's like right here. Like, why are we sitting on car? Why? Why are we sitting on car? Why don't we just like get in there and like finish off the Torb and the Mercy? Like, why don't we just get those picks and then go back to cart when we won the fight? <laughs> why are we making it harder for us? Why is our soldier the one sitting car? Like, oh. I understand that low rank players like have this obsession with cart, but understand. Oh, understand that like they're the low ranked players and they're going to just naturally do that. And, and you're gonna climb by like being the goat. I like that beat for the the uh, social alt. One of the best beats I've seen all day amongst all the vods I've done. Oddly enough, um, <laughs> come here and I'll heal you. That's really funny, bro. That's a really funny. We're gonna take a slight detour. All right. <laughs> Lucio's healing passively does... I just, I just want to get the correct number here. What does it do? Crossfade, healing. Does, does 16 healing per second. That's funny. That's funny that you're like, come here for healing. You're playing Lucio for healing. That's crazy. <laughs> um, Lucio's healing is really just for AoE. Just for mm -hmm. anything that's going to get you alt charge. It's just to, to get alt. I'm going to be honest. I think so, I was too scared to go in the open. I didn't want to get picked off trying to... I mean, trying to heal him isn't the play. Yeah. If anything, you're going to try yeah. to speed him out of it because it's one target, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think I think just fundamentally you have... And I mean, I'm not targeting you. I'm more so just like mm -hmm. every Lucio player that is not like Masters and above like has this idea that you need to be healing all the time and you need to play next to your team. But like... That's when Lucio is in an optimal scenario. He's going to be speeding a brawl team around, which never happens in ranks. It never happens that way. You almost always have to flank, which is why I don't play Lucio on stream like ever when I used to play like <laughs> competitive every day. I just never am picking up Lucio. One, because I'm terrible at him mechanically, but two, it's like you don't even get to play him in his best light. So you got to make it work if you're going to be a Lucio player, which the healing isn't the way to do it. Like right now, 
I think this fight's lost. They just mm -hmm. rezzed. But, I mean, like, maybe if we find a pick on Sojourn, we can win. What I'm thinking right now is just taxi the team back. Go next. Or mm -hmm. take an angle, at least, with the with the Widow and try to get that turret that she's being negligent of. Again, if you have any thoughts or questions, let me know. She died to that turret. That's epic. <laughs> Okay, at least you have speed on during Trank. GM players don't even do that. They're thinking a little bit more than the average player, actually. I kind of ignore the hog. Honestly, this is just because you're trying to play front to back, and it's like, yeah. it's it's a little, it's a little just sad to see because like the moment you learn this, it's like you're gonna just become so much better. But it's like, this guy's safe. He doesn't need speed. No one's pushing him. You don't need to kill yourself to go this way. The moment that a hog maybe commits to the, your hog, then you can maybe try to go for a boot play to just place him. But any other way, like you're just shooting back line, doing just any more active play style that's like more about taking an angle when you're playing the comp that's about taking angles um, is the way to do it. Overall though, like even though your, your, your play style here is suboptimal, I think your mechanics are good enough to sustain yourself in this rank like it's not an aim problem it's more so a thought process problem which is a good sign which means it's like after the vod it's going to be a lot more effective um again right here the moment that a turret goes down your job on lucio is to get that thing taken out because you don't have a fall off um and it's a standstill target very easy to hit again what do you think the problem is here that i have in terms of positioning when you were back at this car in the open. What do you think the problem I had there was? Uh, too far up, maybe. And in accordance to walls, where are you? Not near a wall. Exactly. That's why you almost died. <laughs> um, a funny little story is that um, Lucio was picked in a meta at the start of Overwatch 1. A lot of people thought it was because Lucio was good with the comp. No, the whole point was that it was just hard for Sojourn to build rail charge off of that support compared to any other support in the game. Because Brig was better for the comp, but Brig was a battery for Sojourn. So you actually ended up just playing Lucio so that she couldn't get rail charge. <laughs> if you play on walls as Lucio, even the pros can't hit you, is the whole thing I'm trying to say here. Like, if you play next to a wall on Lucio, you realistically won't die, unless there's like five people looking at you. So keep that in mind. Like I, I'm telling you, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. see, it seems pretty small. Like, oh yeah, I'll just play next to a wall and I'll be more covered. No, mm -hmm. just everything you can do with Lucio off of a wall is crazy. Make sure you're playing off those. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. And your hog is like taking the angle you were taking. That's... Interesting. All right. Yep. Speed boost when he's tranking. It's good. Good habit to have right now. <laughs> I know it seems really simple, but like, trust me. Um, honest. Ooh, I beat this. I think. Oh no, not anymore. Let me let me take a look at this fight again. The reason why I'm saying beat this is because like. <laughs> This is such an important fight to win. I feel like you've played long enough. Maybe I'm generalizing. But like this is like the most common spot to get full held on Dorado. Like if you don't win this this fight when you take it, it's really hard to push through that, especially in gold. Mm -hmm. Cuz there's like a way to retake it, but they don't no one knows that, not even GM. Honestly, like the moment that I get this and the fight's been kind of back and forth for this long, I think I think we beat this, honestly. In fights where it's like really crucial that you win and you're not sure which way it's going, I just think you it. I think you just beat. Um, at least for now, to get used to just like firing beats. Um, and then look back at the VOD and ask yourself if you really needed it. Um, but in this situation, it's like four on four, everyone or four on five, but everyone's really split and your Zen's kind of low. You didn't really realize that. But when these fights kind of feel weird, I don't know. I just have this intuition that it's like time to beat. And I don't know how I got that. But even when I was watching this, I'm just kind of like, oh, I think we might, I think this might need a beat. 
Like right here, it's like nothing's dying and now my Zen's dead. Like I would just pull the trigger right now and beat. <laughs> but everything just fell so fast. But even then, like now it's three on three. I still think the beat's worth. I think just getting used to pulling the trigger is very helpful, especially in gold. Because you don't want to have the bad habit of just only holding beat for, for alts that you want to counter. Yeah. Um, just because this position is so important to win, like this fight is so crucial. Because who cares if they overclock me on third point? Um, if I get another stab at it anyways, I don't have to deal with having to retake second point with an overclock on high ground that has so much more sight line. That's a pretty high level thing to be thinking though. Um, I just want to call out a comp switch. You don't have a widow anymore. You do have a reaper, so you could play off of, to speed boost that. This is like the first reaper I've seen probably all of the unranked the GM. And I've done like four of the seven VODs or whatever right now. I don't even know how many I have to do, but I've done a good bit of the VODs. This is like the first reaper I've seen. So this is a moment where it's like, I think you can start by speeding the reaper in. The moment he's in, then you get you, you start doing things. All right. But right here, we instead just are like, yeah, I'm just going to chill with my hog because that's what Jeff Kaplan told me to do like five years ago. You know, play with your team. Don't be toxic. But it's like, what are we really doing for our team here that like, I don't know, any other character would do here. Um, if you're going to beat, always save the amp just for full speed to get people close, close the distance. Right there, we have to speed the Reaper out. Honestly, I think this fight comes down to just a bad and bad approach to it. I think if we start with the Reaper and we start by speeding him in, it's going to open up the fight better for you just in every way possible. But we do, him in, we do manage to get the point. Okay, that's interesting. And we boop the Hog off. Wow. Okay. Because, I mean, yeah, I, I just think you can... I think the Reaper trying to flank in this comp is actually a really good indication because he did, he did a pretty good job of, like, where he you want to go as Lucio. Like, trying to take that bank control. We could, we established control of that. Everyone got pushed out. Now we're on the high ground. No one's going to, like, hook up there or slide up there. Got a pick as well. The Reaper did very well that fight. And I think that's kind of what you got to look at in terms of, like, the model. Mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense? Yeah, so watch the Reaper, how he kind of flanks, basically, and apply it to how And I'm not I saying, flank. like, how every Reaper flanks. I'm just saying, yeah. like, this last fight. Yeah. We, we can look yeah. at it so that I make yeah. sure I don't... Anyone that might yeah. be watching this far isn't... Um, okay, this is... <laughs> yeah, he walked back from spawn. All right. Okay, like, obviously right here, not good, but him taking the initiative to be like, oh, look at this. Like, this is kind of like... I want you to do what this Reaper is doing, but as Lucio in these compositions, like mm. taking this 1v1 against Torb so that he just dies, doesn't get to Molten Core. Yeah, you just won the fight. Mm. You do have beat, but if you support someone that's taking this flank, like this guy dies so much faster. He almost lost that 1v1. Eh, that's crazy. Huh? <laughs> is he about to die to a turret? Wow, he's walking in straight lines. See, like, if that guy can get that much value playing like that, and you mm -hmm. can play like you already have been playing, but as Lucio and just being a little bit more confident, you're going to get a lot more value. He had the right idea, though. Like, here's the Torb yeah. on an off angle. Let me take this angle. And then if what you would have done with that Reaper is you would have uh, taken this high ground, gotten this turret killed, mm -hmm. and now you just have free high ground to beat off of, and then, like, maybe speed the Reaper into the back line off of the beat. As opposed to sitting in the middle and yeah. having really no options. It feels like there's no options, and you're kind of right, but it's just the approach that we had 20 seconds ago. All right, all right. Again, if there's any questions you have, just let me know. Torb is flanking. <laughs> you just saw him shoot. He is top left. I'm very mad that you're not looking for a 1v1. And if, here's the thing. Actually, you don't necessarily need a 1v1 in this situation, but just at least spot checking him and knowing where he is and maybe trying to bring that duel back to the team to get the pick before the fight starts. 
so valuable because this guy's probably gonna flank and like kill your support yeah i'd be willing to bet that that's in the future here bro oh my god that life weaver just sold so hard and i don't know why your soldier is visoring what the hell dude dude what in the life weaver lived the visor yo what yo what is that that's crazy you guys be struggling out here like you guys got some crazy things that you be seeing wow your soldier hit that though couldn't hit someone with a name bot, but hits that flight pattern. It's just wild. Honestly, this moment right here, I'm, I'm totally fine with you just being on cart because it's just an all out brawl. Um, and, and the fight is just spiraling out of control. I, I, I don't know. This this is fine because there's a lot of people that are crit too. So your AOA healing is getting a lot of value. Hence the reason why you almost already have another beat when you used it like maybe a minute or two ago. But if it's a single target and you're amping, you gotta have a really good reason for it. Okay, I think we beat with speed boost after the trank. Yeah, this is where I start just focusing on cart too much and everyone started dying. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I, I, I think we will get infinitely more from just looking at any other fight in the game because that fight was just so chaotic and not like any of the other fights you took all game. Mm. Oh my God! Guys, we have a Junker Queen. Lucio in his <laughs> habitat can finally be reviewed. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right, dude. So everything I told you about flanking mm. on Lucio still low-key kind of applies. Like, mm. if they had a Widow in this composition, after you speed your Queen in, if you want to deviate, mm. go right the head. But now we have a Queen. So now we can actually speed someone that's useful around. I like ye, I like ye, like ye. So we're gonna see how you actually play off of that because this is two different styles of Lucio completely. Let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, so for some reason she is playing on carts. Never, never seen this work. See, okay, so like here's the thing, right? Mm. I love how people be like, dude, I can't aim. I, I'm useless. I can't go on flanks, right? I can't, like, push. But it's like, let's be real here. Homie was shooting the broad side of the red building. Didn't hit a shot. But that echo still backs off because there's so many things flying at her and she's getting low health that she has to leave. <laughs> That's literally all you guys got to do if you're in, like, bronze, silver, gold, and you think your mechanics aren't great. Just put the practice in and eventually you'll be the one killing that echo in one burst still get the outcome that we wanted here um so you know what i i commend you for that okay but we we want to be on heat speed no one needs heals right now you want to be on speed okay we want to speed that ash out of there get her out of there because healing isn't going to help if someone gets hooked we speed amp out of that all right and we're speeding our j queen in why is she backing up I like that you're playing aggressive. Um, fifth shot's the charm. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I get very lost when I watch back my own games. <laughs> nah, I just wanted to say that because I was like, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah. And I know yeah. that he's going to be cool with it. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is perfect. They have a window now. You have a J queen. We're going to see when it's time for you to deviate and take her off of her angle. I right hear, okay, we're, it's, people are taking damage. Yep, I like that you didn't amp, but the speed was there. All right, she just axed. This is the moment where you're supposed to speed in, but I don't mind that you didn't speed in because this is such a dumb place to be playing. <laughs> And if anything, we're really just trying to vibe out on the corner, which you're trying to do. I really want to see more speed boost, though, when you see that your queen might be looking to hit the axe. Because the most important thing for Junker Queen is that she hits the axe swing. If she doesn't hit the axe swing on something, she's pretty much useless for all of the time that she doesn't have it online. So you want to make sure that you're actually making sure that that gets hit. So if you see her start the animation, switch to speed, amp. 
that's your go button. Even if it's at a really bad time. But now that that happened and I hear that the Widow is shooting everyone, the moment I hear a Widow shot and I hear someone take damage, I'm looking for the Widow. I'm not looking for the Hog that I'm not going to kill that has a Mercy Pocket and a Breather. I'm going to be looking for the person that is going to kill my whole team, which this happens pretty commonly. So... I think this is more so just that you might not have realized that they even had a widow. Yeah. yeah. And this beat uh um could have been better. Could have been better for sure. Uh, I think you understand that. Oh wow, she domed you. <laughs> but the beat right there, we're down to that fight's not one. I think we just give it up and we try to retake here. What is blood visoring? What is blood bobbing? <laughs> To be fair, though, your beat was just as bad. All respect. All, with all due respect, yeah. your beat was just as bad. Um, so we can't think, be blaming our teammates. Do you think it would have made a difference if I went in with the Ash and Bob? Um, I, was kind of I think that, that in, if instead of beating, you tried to speed mm -hmm. your team out or just let them die and went back mm -hmm. to spawn to taxi your teammates out and then engaged with your beat, um, I think you actually win this fight. So like, all here's the thing, right? All of the mistakes that your teammates just made in an alternate universe where you played perfectly and you won the fight with your ultimate, they would not have fed with their ultimates. Therefore, mm. their mistakes are your mistakes. I know that's like a delusional Dante's type way of thinking about it, but that's how you really have to convince yourself if you're going to climb to be like the best player you can be. Because like you could have switched the situation that they don't make a dumb mistake. Yeah. And I mean, you're a support player, so your job is to make help make them make easy, uh, easy play, easy, easy plays. Mm -hmm. Your J Queen almost walked into that trap. Honestly, I'm speeding out of here. I don't, I don't get the appeal of heals here, or just like sitting in one spot with a J Queen. I'm either speeding out or I'm speeding in with J Queen. I don't think your J Queen understands that principle though, so. Mm -hmm. So the reason why this kind of play style was working a little bit better with a hog than a J queen though, is because hog can just kind of shoot and hook in the neutral and just kind of exist. But J queen can't. Mm -hmm. So you, if the J queen is just going to sit around, honestly, just call a three, two, one speed when you think it's the right time to just walk past the, the, the front line and go for back line or just kill front line, locate that moment. And if they don't follow you, then just look to flank and kill this widow. Like if nothing right now, I think if you just trade widows all game, you're, you're going to have a much higher chance of winning than if you just kind of sit around with your queen. That I don't think she shouted once. I don't think she knows what that ability does. And there's a very real possibility that that's true. It, it just pains me because like this widow is like, you're going to go for her now, yeah. right? You're going to yeah, go for her yeah. now after she killed half of your team. <laughs> but why didn't we do this earlier? And look how much space you're making, by the way. All this time, even though you haven't killed any more, anyone... Charging Bull got his, like, first two picks of the half. It doesn't seem like you're doing a lot, but trust me, like, you're you're kind of carrying. I want to see it from his POV. Well, actually, first of all, did this Life Weaver have pull? Yeah, Life Weaver had pull, but he was too focused on you. We're not even going to look at Widow. Let's look at Charging Bull, though. What did he do? He or she or they did. So while all this was happening, he was just shooting, or they were just shooting mid, missing all their clip. But now that this Echo doesn't have any healing from the Life Weaver for the duel, he can miss half, they can miss half of their clip and still win the 1v1. You don't need to be, you don't need to be mechanically crazy to get so much value on Lucio or really any support, right? Mm. And here's the thing, you might understand this and I might be drilling it in your, your head at this point. Um... But it's more so just for people that are watching to just make sure that we're really seeing that this is the type of value. And this is something that I've talked about almost in every single rank so far. It's just like you don't need to be crazy to get the value, especially on like console. Mm -hmm. You just don't. Um, this whole time, like the dude doesn't have heals because you're in, in his head rent free. The life weaver that is. Yeah. W pool. And then Grumpy Kitten still back. But honestly, like, I don't I don't mind that you went away. They started to look at you. You got the value you needed. You left. 
sure, maybe you could have done more. That'll come with time. But I just like the idea that you finally like aggressed on the widow and didn't let her just kill your whole team. Um, it sucks that your Zen died early and it forced you to do that. But like now that I'm telling you about this, like whenever you see a widow, she better be dead. Widow, Sojourn, Cassidy, Soldier, Ash, anyone that's alone, just absolutely raining hell on your team. I don't want them to be alive. Um, that's a transcendence. That is the transcendence of all time. Not going to lie. Dude, holy moly. Like, it's real, guys. It's Calm's real. Fever dream. The One Piece is real. The <laughs> Overwatch ranked teammates you get, they are real people. Holy moly. Dude, tell the goat. <laughs> no way this guy lives. Because you speed him out. What the hell? Dude. Oh my god. Now they're copying? Dude. I, I just I, I feel like you guys like when I react this way because you're like, yeah, oh, nah, dude. They're recognizing that this is what we go through. And it's like, yeah, like, honestly, like, I just think it's so funny, like, playing it, like, just looking at everything and you're just like, dude, what the hell is happening? Like, it's almost more enjoyable that way. It's also really tilting, though, when you're trying to improve and win and your teammates start doing this stuff. But yeah. you, you can focus on yourself and just carry here. Like, right here, like, it's just clean up. I feel like your whole team should be walking up to kill the soldier and, and whatever else. The, the soldier echo that is oh an hour yeah. yeah honestly right here is just we started to aggress after when we should have aggressed and that was like right when we got the first pick mm. right when we killed i believe it was the hog all right yep yep i don't even care that you missed three clips or three three shot burst things because then the Widow wasn't shooting your team for five seconds, and the Soldier got to shoot main. I like this. I don't care that you didn't hit shots. She is now on low ground, which is suboptimal for her. And now your Zen kills too. It happens every time like clockwork. If you just do it every fight, I'm telling you straight up, you're a god. Do I agree with the fact that you are full health on heal? No. Do I agree with the fact that you were sitting main, not against the wall? No, I don't agree with that. Man, speed in and kill that Mercy. Go sicko mode. For lack of a better term. Dude, like, you're so reactive. Trust your gut and just do this shit, dude. Oh my, I think I'm just scared of the hog because I've been hooked by so many hogs before. Honestly, just play, know, play next to a wall and start jumping and they will not hit you. They won't even try. I, I, can, I can promise you. When you go for engages, just just wall ride uh, off of walls and just start jumping. They won't hit you. Now, walking around on the ground with no wall on heal amp. Yeah, you're going to get hooked a lot. All right, yep, right here. We're chilling. We have beats. Ah, oh, you need a speed. You need a speed and beat, honestly. Honestly, whenever you have a J-Queen that has her ult online, just try to save your amp for speed if it's at the start of a fight. Um, cause speed amp there wins you to fight much easier. Um, okay. That's like the one situation where the heal amp worked out for you in every other situation you should be speeding. Mm -hmm. You barely keep her alive enough for the Zen to just pop trank when you've already won the fight. You got bailed out for that one. Not going to lie. What is going on? Okay. We lost one. Yeah. The problem we have with this fight. This is niche. When Queen has alt, make sure you have the speed amp to speed in with her and help her. Um, and then yeah, that's really all that this fight comes down to. Cause now, now it's just devolved into nonsense. Usually, whenever fights end in chaos like this, there's something that you messed up earlier that it leads to this chaos. And I think if you're ever doing a VOD review, and this goes for anyone. If there's chaos and you don't know what's going on, usually it was something that happened like 15 seconds ago that you could have done better. Usually. And that's where you should look, not like, what should I have done in this fight that was chaos? Like, dude, I don't know. You'll get better at that when you play more. There's no science to fights like this. People are just pressing Q and, and praying. 
Good speed in for the Junker Queen onto the Widow. That was an interesting positioning uh, solution by her. We seem to win this fight, so I'm, I'm wondering when we press the go button with beat here because I'm all for it. I Honestly, I would beat right now. Hits. He just mishooked. He just mishook. I'd beat in in speed. Maybe we just don't even use beat. Yeah, waited to overtime, I think. I mean, dude, we already won the fight at this point. Just go in and win the fight beforehand. Better players are going to shit on you there, for lack of a better term. Better players are just going to realize that you're just, like, playing the React game and just do it first. Honestly, though, I liked that you sent this VOD because there's actually a lot for me to take away from this and something that's actionable, which you don't always get actionable results from VOD. Eh, well, actually, I feel like I'm... I'm, I'm going to gas myself up. Maybe you get some consistent, actionable results from a VOD every now and then from the Paz VOD. But okay, that's enough gassing. Let's get more takeaways, and then we're going to hear some questions from you if you have any. The first one that I'm going to say is more of like an active thinking instead of a... a what is it? A um, reactive? I want to see active mm. thinking here. What do I have any brawl tanks? Can I, can I, can I speed the queen in? After I do that, what's next? What angle? What what person could I one v one here that maybe is going to take them off an angle so I can deviate from my team? I'm not saying you should flank in every comp all the time. Sometimes you are going to have a soldier that has a visor that wants to like take a specific angle. Sometimes you're going to have a queen that wants to walk me. Other times though, especially now that Hog got a buff, mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot more Hog. In those in those instances, that's when it's just like, all right, I'm just gonna flank, or like I'm gonna speed him to try to find him a hook on an angle, and then I'm off to doing my own thing again. Finding that balance of when it's time to help your team, when it's not. Most of the time in this rank, you don't actually need to help your team all that much. I know it sounds wild, but that's like the widow. Like, okay, there's a widow on an angle. She's about a one shot half my team because no one's looking at her. Take it upon yourself to just throw yourself at a widow. If you learn nothing else from this vod, see widow without pockets. I play Lucio, I wall ride to Widow, one for one trade, four on four. You're probably gonna win a lot more games that way. Gonna be honest, because Lucio's a worse character than Widow. Lucio's pretty bad right now, outside of like pro play. And that's always how it's gonna be. What do you think the second one's gonna be? And it, it, it deals with um, a song that starts with wonder and ends with Wonder wall. Walls. <laughs> walls. Yes. Playing off of walls. Um, here's the thing. I I've said this to every single person today. Uh, maybe aside from like maybe the, the, the masters player that didn't really think, but was really good mechanically. Make sure you're playing off of walls. Um, and, 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 and the last thing I'm going to say, never mind what I'll say for number four, because I'm going to give you a lot for this. Number, what I'm going to say for number four is just doing FFAs, either tryhard FFAs or death matches. This is what's going to help you out a lot. If you're using like Vaxta to warm up, don't do that anymore if you're playing Lucio all day. Do a death match and get used to dueling off of wall riding. Um, and here's the thing. You're playing on controller, so try a claw, a, a claw grip. I don't know how you play. I have uh, left trigger bound as my jump and then A is boop so okay yeah that, that that should that should work yeah okay that that would work that would work i personally used claw grip whenever i played lucio mm -hmm. that's why my lucio wasn't the best because mm -hmm. i just wasn't i don't know i've never i've never been great at lucio mechanically i just know that this is his role because i've played mm -hmm. with enough of my lucio one trick buddies that are just crazy and watch their stuff like yeah um but the last thing i'll say is um when you said active thinking walls beats i think you can just be mm -hmm. more aggressive with beats in general, uh, there's some alts that are like, I don't know, like Nano Sojourn, like Nano Blade, the obvious stuff. But like, if you think you can just run in and win a fight with beat with speed boost, goes back to the active, active thinking, do that shit. Just run in, get it done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with I'm all, just, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so no, I think I'm just worried. What happens is I have beat and if I use it, I feel like I'm not going to have it when I need it. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't see a single like aggressive yeah. thing that the enemy team was doing to you that you mm -hmm. needed to use beat. And you know what's mm -hmm. crazier? You were running Zen Lucio, yeah. which was the least problem. healing in the game, and healing was never an issue. 
the issue was there's a widow killing three people and we're sitting on cart, you know, like that is really big because no amount of healing is going to help you from a widow pop in your head, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think just being more aggressive and understanding like, okay, I can help my team in this way, but there's other ways I can help my team by just pressuring angles so that they don't have to worry about it. Like the damage healing concept. All right. And you know what? That's fine. Um, but you know what? I just want to get started talking to you. Um, I actually, this is kind of epic. I'm not going to lie. Like, this is probably the best comp for Lucio I've seen in the entire unranked I, GM. I, I, I organized this comp. I made sure the teammates switched. It's <laughs> actually wild he's that a, he's, you he's have in Brig or I'm leaving. good stuff right now. <laughs> no, can we start off Brig Lucio? I was like, oh my, what the? <laughs> and, and for those that don't know that why there's three people uh, in, in the call that will watch us back the video, this is actually Quinn who plays for a team on Penn State and Quinn's brother is a Platinum Lucio. <laughs> so this is actually really cool that we get a lot of people in on the same call so we can all look at things together. Um, especially when you have like a duo, how that kind of changes things a bit. So I actually really like your comp. I think that this is one of those comps that you can speed most of your team around. However, if Quinn end up, ends up doing air on Symmetra, that's kind of <laughs> your way of saying, hey, maybe I can go on a flank and try to help Bagel Brownie on Echo, although I'm not too confident in that name on the Echo. Um, but here's the thing. I think stacking with your team to start and looking for speed boosts for your team in Platinum used to be this way is honestly a fine play. I don't think it's a complete, uh, I don't think it's completely inting. So I don't know. We'll see how we're going to like flex around, but I hope that we can look at what the sh problems were. You said of just getting caught out a little bit too much and see how we can go from there. If you have questions, let me know as we do the VOD right off the bat. Wait, <laughs> never mind. Take the teleport first, then speed out of spawn. That would be the way to do this <laughs> for sure. Playing as a plat. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? This is platinum, so stuff like that will just happen. But okay, let's see how we do this. Okay, I honestly, dude, you're doing better than like even some of the even the diamond. I think you're kind of on that diamond level of just you're already starting to poke. This is not as bad as you said you thought it was going no, to no, be. No, 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 it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll have to take your word for it. Uh, All right, yeah, so chill. we're chilling on point. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Honestly, I would be on heal this whole time just because we're not really trying to engage on anything. And that this is like the one yeah. moment where I think heal is good just to like heal up poke damage retroactively and you don't have to worry about it. Now I would be like switching the speed if we wanted to engage on yeah, something. No, now I, see I that right there? We don't even got to talk about it because we know. <laughs> Why do we walk into ram? All right, cool. We just go next. Man, that mercy already has 90% on alt. I would love to go back and see why that is, but I don't want to waste the time because it's not important for you specifically. Okay, yep, we're playing with Ryan, just chilling. Honestly, after this Ram drops his fists, I would love to see a speed amp from you. Yeah, honestly, right here, speed amp. Oh, never mind, they're still wasting more cooldowns. Heal amp isn't terrible. Honestly, I so far. No, wait, wait, don't watch that a little bit. Just one more second of it. Okay, Mario didn't cross with you. That was <laughs> and then I get booped off right after that. That wasn't even you, I don't think. No, I'm, I'm going to be I'm honest. Like, here's the thing. In Platinum, it's almost never going to be your fault on support. Um, <laughs> because, like, you're trying to support people that are kind of dead weight. The problem I see with this is just a lack of initiative being taken. Like there's a lot of windows of opportunity that we could have speed boosted out and not let them get, not let them think long enough to be like, oh wait, I can just, I forgot my Ramatra ability slows them down on a choke. Maybe yeah. we could take advantage of this dude not thinking. Cause I'm telling you, there's not a, there's not a thought going through this person's head. I don't think they know that Ramatra can slow you down. I just don't think they know that. Yeah. Someone might've called it out for their team for them. That stuff happens all the time. I think uh, pushing the aggression m m faster probably would have helped that fight a little bit, but. Um, the thing is, it's like, sure, you're playing with your Ryan and your Ryan isn't really doing anything. Well, at that point, you kind of just have to look to carry elsewhere. That's just how we carry in these ranks. So yeah. I think Quinn is right where it's like, okay, like how much of this really is your fault? Um, very little uh, is what it feels like. But it's not like we couldn't do more. There's yeah, always more I we could think do. I was playing a little bit. Like, uh, it's just more of, yeah, we're taking the winner's opportunity, playing space, right? Yeah, and uh, here, here's the thing. I think you're thinking too much about it, and I think you just got to play the, like just play it out and see how you can do more and carry it. 
that's what these this is what it always comes down to it's just like i don't know let's see a little bit more fight a little bit more fighting to really lock it in and see what's going on um because i don't want to go to assumption so far but i definitely think we could be a little bit more uh what is it uh what's the word i'm looking for aggressive aggressive is one thing more like you're taking advantage like you're Initiative. Initiative. That's the word. You're taking more initiative. That's what taking, I'm taking. Like, a little bit more initiative in the next round. It's going to be hard, like, though, because your teammates aren't going to follow up on this until maybe like Masters. And so. I mean, here's the thing. It, you got to believe that your teammates are going to follow up until they don't. And then we adapt because yeah, you got to have some hope because you don't want to play wrong right off the bat. But we'll, we'll see. OK, like right here, I think our team's ready to go after this slowdown. I think we just speed amp in. Doesn't matter if they take it or not. We just speed amp in, uh, especially like when we're making this rotation, because then everyone won't be split like we are. Um, and if they don't take it up, then we just start to flank afterwards. All right, big wall from Quinn Gaming <laughs> should win us this fight. Yes, big wall from Quinn Gaming. I think right there, you didn't have to chase the Ren the entire fight. I would have probably. I mean, that's like really go. small stuff. It's more so yeah, just looking yeah, at the repeated yeah. things of like, we could have speed amped in and then this would have been a lot cleaner of a fight. The, the stuff where it kind of goes into chaos and out of control at that point, it, it, there's things that would have made it a lot smoother from the get go that makes it so that maybe we don't make those mistakes. And that's very true. I think even in GM, it's like, usually it's the start of the fight that we just mess up and go from there. Okay, Beggle Brownie, the goat. <laughs> Maybe we get a booper res here. Doesn't look like we're actually going to be able to. Is she not going to res? Oh, no, she reses it late. Okay, that's not the worst. We still have beat. I think playing point is totally fine beat. here. It happens so after right. Okay, I like this beat. I want to speed amp in, though. I want to speed amp in off of this beat so we can maybe make something happen, but not hold on to amp for the whole fight because this then makes your character kind of mid. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't use amp. Yeah, it's been like three fights, and I think that's the problem so far that I'm seeing. Because everything else seems like pretty decent. Like, okay, you're taking the angles when you can. You're 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 taking the right by the book plays every every fight by, by the looks of it. But then the amp isn't there. And like the thing is with Lucio, is he's kind of the worst character in support in my opinion in ladder. <laughs> because like if yeah. you're gonna play Lucio to heal, you might as well play literally any other character because they just do more healing. Even AOE, Brig does more. Um, the only thing that really sets him apart is his speed boost. And if we're not using speed boost effectively or using his like mobility to try to take angles, um, it's kind of, yeah, you're going to kind of lose games, even if you're not necessarily doing anything wrong in throwing per se. I feel like Quinn kind of understands that for like GM ranked. I feel like you, well, GM ranks different because people actually might follow up on your speeds, but it's not every game. Yeah. GM's a lot easier, yeah. actually. Yeah, GM on, on Lucio, I think, is a lot easier to do Even the right thing. GM 3 is way higher than GM 1. Oh, yeah, no, I can but see yeah. that. At least if we're, like, playing playing for your team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, GM and 3, I'll just go, like, right at Lucio. Pingus Pongus just killed Beggle Brownie again. I would love to see the stat line. Again, right here, it's, like, key moments in the fight. Everyone's stacked. We want to make an engagement. We just hit a grab, and we're holding on to Amp which kind of hurts you a lot. I still like, here's the thing, you still make the right play where it's like, okay, I yeah, need to read it now like, because nothing's yeah, going on. Stuff. Like, I like that you eventually realize that it's time to just like de uh, detach yourself from the team to look for a Reddit play. I would have just loved to see that initial burst of, of value through your, your speed boost so that maybe your team can get things. Wow, okay, she lives there. But at least she used all of her cooldowns. She did use all of her cooldowns. And you get her again? Oh, no, just barely not. Yeah, really all this is is just speed amp usage and that's like kind of like everything with lucio so i like this round a lot more. oh okay quinn on the bastion i can tell this <laughs> round's going to go very well I, I i love this round a lot more yeah just speed just speed boost quinn on the flank honestly in, in plat and that'll probably yeah, get a, you the win yeah ryan bastion we're playing together around the uh yeah we just we just played main the entire time yeah it hard? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if this was like a coordinated environment, we definitely go cage, but this is plat, so yeah. <laughs> screw that. They're We're not running. <laughs> they're not running brawl either, so we, we know that, so we can just do this. And that new ability looks so whack. Yeah. That was a good speed right there. 
Yeah, it sucks that no one used it, but like, at least it was the right idea. The Ryan kind of did. He's about to get pinched. Yeah. Bagel brownie on the junk rats. All right. Okay, yeah, see, like right here, I'm totally fine with healing, heal amping here because I'm, I'm assuming two or three of your team just got hit by a dynamite or good positioning from them. Yeah, two people got hit by dynamite. I'm okay with, and we won, like, we're, we're already, like, closed the distance on a target. This is a, a fine moment to use amp to just get some alt charge for heals. This is, like, the one time I think it's, it's actually good for Lucio to heal amp. And we did it. Cool. Awesome. Sometimes I, I'll be telling you stuff that you already know, but it's also for the people watching in post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't even know why I healed them. They am there, to be honest. <laughs> well, now you do. <laughs> well, now you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just like, I didn't, I didn't realize until we watched this, but I actually did that thing. We forced out ammo. We have speed amp. I like that we're not going for it too hard. I like that we speed up now when the dude's out of position. Um, yeah, it was whoa, cool. what the f oh. That was crazy. Oh, the yeah, bash of my moves is that far back. That was crazy. That was just unlucky. Try to, try to Honestly, out. like, I don't even think this is your fault. I think it's just the fact that the Ryan wants to play as close as he does. I was trying to try to get this boop here. I mean, yeah, he, no. The ride would have been fine. He was just the wrong guy. That's well, here's the, the thing, right? Like, we don't really have like a brawl comp that wants to just like stuff this enemy in. Like, I, I almost feel like we want to like bait them in a little bit more so the Bastion can turret, and then we turn the corner with speed boost instead of trying to just run through this tight choke. Where like, why the hell is the junk rat up there? I mean, I guess it's either or, but. It's just a really weird angle that they can always just get out of the Bastion LOS and it's really difficult. We're not, yeah. yeah. But that's like, what are you going to do in plat about that? I don't know. Not a whole lot. I also think just like building off of like when you want to use your speed boost, you also want to look for key things that you're actually going to speed off of, like we said with the grab before. But most importantly, if, if Quinn's going to go Bastion and that's your duo, like always looking to speed boost when Quinn wants to like turn a turn a corner with his uh his turret form yeah right. because that's really where bastion gets all of his value right like everything else about bastion is pretty eh, but his sentry form is like wow it's a lot of damage like really uh tightly packed in one short burst so you want to enable that as much as you can uh, but this is stuff that like we weren't thinking about before but now we think about it and we probably just climb if we were to just do it with a bastion in theory like it, it just changes the game for you but um Let's keep watching because we do win this round for sure. Judging by a 14 minute game on Ilios, which is a long Ilios game, mind you. This is one of the longest Ilios games of all time. Yeah, See so yeah, right here, I would love to see a speed boost like because these people are about to, yeah. to turn the corner. If we speed boost Quinn, he doesn't have to just run in. He can actually just run to the side and get that angle if he wants. But let's Ryan's see what you do. Hooked. Ryan's hooked. Eh, whatever. Yeah. He wasn't doing much anyways. <laughs> Ryan gets hooked. He wasn't doing much anyways, and I think if we get the speed boost, we might be able to kill this Bastion. No way, that's two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to blame you for this one, because if, if Quinn has the speed boost, he's all the way over here, and there's no True. way he doesn't see this hog hooking him. There's no flipping way. No flipping way. Also, I can tell Quinn might be trolling a little bit so that he's not <laughs> completely rolling plat games. Just a little tiny bit, which I'm sure plat players rejoice and they appreciate that. I guess the ones on the enemy team, but your team, I don't well, know. I didn't want to like, I don't know. You didn't want to hard carry, but you didn't want to int. And I appreciate that you're trying to play before. like a diamond. Yeah, we played one year before and I feel like I did. Yeah, and I rolled on sin. So you had to dial it back a little bit. You know, yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. I'm sure they do too. Um, okay, they have Bob. I'd honestly say if they Bob, we just speed in with our alts. Yep. Or this as well will work. We should win off this fight. Oh no, please don't die to high noon plat. Plat doesn't die here. Oh wait, that's big. Big boop. Oh wait, that's huge. He ulted too. Wow, that was... That could have been a lot cleaner on both sides, but I won't complain. Because we we use speed boost there. And that's what I'm, I'm looking at for the most part. Okay, yep, I like the flank. Yep. Yeah, it's like this kind of looks like 
present day Masters gameplay once we fix the the speed boosting problem. Yeah, I'm gonna be, gonna just, be honest. It's, just, it's mainly just due to lack of playing. Yeah, just, just taking a break from the game, which I, I don't blame you. Okay, yep, we just get out of there. We don't even need to use speed amp. We don't need to. Now we're oh, now we need to use speed amp to get that brother out. And he did. Yeah, we did. A little late, but we still did it, which I do like. And we should just win this round off of this. Oh, no, we missed a key boop opportunity. That's okay. You were doing it most of the game, so I'll give it I'll give it to you. All right. And yeah, that round was a lot better. Also playing characters that weren't Symmetra into a ram, but you know, we make we're making it sound like we lost this game. So I'm interested to see how that happens. <laughs> Amping out a spawn on control, I think, is always I the I can play. tell you we didn't win it, so. All right. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Not just kidding. Spoiler. Yeah, I think amping out a spawn here makes your light, your first fight much easier because then your Bastion can get set up on the health pack. Um, be, it'd be a much better position, but... Oh, lordy lord, what happened here? Don't watch that. No, I'm I'm watching it. No, I'm watching it. <laughs> Storm arrow. Holy. Storm arrow. Uh, and where was the shield? Nowhere to be found. Uh, where do I trace this back to for this specific VOD review? We didn't speed out of spawn. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if we did speed out of spawn, he would not have been in that position, and he would not have made that true, made that mistake. True, true. And when you're playing with plat players that aren't Quinn, um, that's gonna happen almost every time. Quinn's doing it to, to play up the content, I, I, I assume. Okay, big pin. Uh, yeah, speed the team in. Speed the team in way before this even happens, because then we probably follow up and kill this Baptiste. That was going to emo the Ram, and then we kill the Ram, and then the fight's completely different. Um, again. If we take the initiative first, we just kill things before they kill us. Damage is healing, you know, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, this fight devolves into nonsense. Tomfoolery, if you will. The Lucio special. Okay, yeah, we're just chilling. Um, I don't know, because, like, you're playing off of walls. You're playing with your team. You're not even playing that bad. It's just the one small thing that really brings it all down. Compared to, if you watch the unranked to GM, compared to a lot of other players, you're, you're not looking that far off. And if I just start playing again, I'll probably get better, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, but like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's we'll Overwatch. See. It's really Overwatch. It's still playing. good to look back, because I think this is also, yeah. like, helpful with other games. Like, I mean, you you said you play Siege. It's like taking yeah, the initiative Siege. in Siege is still really important. Yeah, like, it's a swinger be swung Siege. meta. It's a swinger oh, be swung yeah. meta, and it's like if you're not thinking and, like, listening and understanding the map, and you just sit there, it's still the same idea. Or if you don't swing an angle, and you know that they're going to swing your teammate, and your teammate dies, that's a zombie that only used one of her concrete pancakes, and now you're down four, <laughs> things look a lot different. Things Very look a lot much. different. Uh, it can be really be applied to any game. It's not quite the same, but okay, yep, speed boost. Still late compared to where the Bastion was trying to use the turret form, but I still like that you did it. You can recognize that that was a good idea. Um, I just don't know... There's no real way to coach this because it's like now everything's just evolving and it's really just mechanical. But like you're playing off the wall, you're hitting your shots. What the hell is that? <laughs> I don't really know. Oh yeah, now no, they're just I'm lost and then I get dashed. The only thing I could say there is the way we start the fight changes everything. Because if Quinn doesn't die and gets more value, then they are down a, a player and there's no way it could possibly devolve into chaos. And I mean, here's the thing. Even I, I, I lost a lot of games in Plat and my Ana and Baptiste unranked to GMs. And like, this is why. Like, games like, what the hell did we shatter for? <laughs> like, it's just so really bad. Don't know. It's just, they it's shattered just, only. It's just... <laughs> so terrible. Like, how did you ever think pressing Q was the play there? Just, wow. <laughs> Not a only... thought going through their head. And I kind of, I'm kind of envious of it. Like, I wish I could have that much fun playing a game. Like, what the hell? Oh, man. Like, I wish I could have that level of ignorance. Honestly, right here, I would... Well, never mind. I'm just... I, I was going to say speed out wall, but we already used it, so... Okay, but good boops, though. 
I just kept booping yeah, him good, back. Good boops, good boops. Most flat Lucios would just let it happen. And probably like heal amp. <laughs> uh, oh wait, the beat hold? The beat hold? Oh my goodness me. That's so good. That was solid. That was solid holding of the beat right there. Uh, it didn't, uh, I think it just didn't feel like the Genji was going to get much value out of that there. Yeah, and, and you know what? We already won the fight too. You know what I'm going to say for this moment right here though? <laughs> We're not talking about <laughs> that. We're not talking about that. Dude, if we just speed on this dude, bro is dead. This dude's gonna live though. Watch. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler. I don't even care he if you lives. missed your shots. It's just like you could speed the, the deep. The yeah, good, the deep I realized that, but I just felt like I couldn't there. Uh... Oh, wait, do we die for trying to kill this guy? Oh, no. Uh, Please don't no, die. I don't, I, don't. I don't. We don't talk about my aim. We don't talk about my aim. Yeah, I, I mean, the siege. The CJ go crazy in that situation. No, I, haven't, oh. I haven't been playing CJ recently just for we, This dude is not going warden on the 1.5. We do not trust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just trolling. Oh, Bagel uh, Brownie the goat. Also, uh, Tim right here. They're like, always like this. Not window peaking with the warden with the 1.5. If you just sit above like our speed, speed, you can boop tanks in. Like, that's what I would do. They didn't go in this time, but I would have just sat at that arch and waited for the tank to come in and keep it into our team. Just like that. <laughs> Kuno Quid got slept there on his ult. Oh, yeah. Honestly, dude, I'm just happy that we sped in on the fucking Reaper ult because that's the stuff that we need to do every time. I don't think, like, the booping and everything needs to be, like, the hard focus. I think you're right. Like, there's some real giga brain, like, boops you can make. It's just, um, like, in high rank, maybe one every five rank, five fights, we win because I booped the tank in. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And it just works. So I just many. think I think teaching that to players that are like diamond and below will cause them to make bad decisions. No, well, and, and yeah, it's, but I'm but more so. Here's the thing: when we're making a mistake as big of, we're not speeding in on key things. Like that needs to be the focus because that's yes. literally why you play Lucio. I mean the boop too, but you really just play Lucio for speed. And if if that's Honestly. not getting caught up, it's like you yeah. should just play break. <laughs> Because Brig can just do everything better. It's kind of I wild. hate Brig. Yeah, I do too, but um, I don't... Actually, do I hate Brig? I think I like Brig more than Lucio because I hate playing Dive. That comp is so boring. Uh, or not Dive. I hate playing Brawl. That comp is so boring. Sorry, dude. Yeah, I know Lucio's you're a Brawl enjoyer, but I hate <laughs> that. And what is the deep doing? He's going deep, that's for sure. No, I'm a, I'm a Rush enjoyer. Yeah, because like you're, well, you're a Lucio player. It makes sense. Yeah. Brawl's okay. Ball is the best comp. Why? Because I get to play Zen and I get to kill everyone. <laughs> Couldn't just die. Huh? That's all I got for that one. <laughs> all I got for that one. All right, no, no, so this no. is watch really the, bad. Watch the, watch the tank in a couple seconds. Yeah, I mean, this the, is really bad because now it's a 2v5. You got to speed your team back. This is going to be epic. Watch this tank. I don't like how over... Oh, how did he <laughs> die? <laughs> Watch the day. It's like I don't know if you have to babysit him or something. <laughs> oh my god. He just yeah, that's, died that's there. Game. It's basically uh, just game because he died there. Instantly. Dude, bronze players play better than that. What the flip did you got? Honestly, the game was the game was over after he went this deep, and then two more people died here. <laughs> That's really where the game ended. So we maybe could have speed boosted them out, but we're not going back to that fight. Um, yeah, I mean, in this situation, all you got to do is try to get your Moira back and then Cole engage into a beat with Ram alt. That's maybe how you win this, but then Ram just falls over. Right here, I just think taxing your team back is the best play, but... Yeah, this is for sure over. Wait, but the game goes on for 40 seconds. Yeah. Hope is not lost. Okay, we beat it. Our job is to maybe kill turret if we can find it. Um, nah, this is just over. I'm just trying to stay on. I'm yeah, not even an OWL player is going to carry that situation specifically. No. Okay, nice. but wait. Deep is on the way back. Oh, that's one. And 
that's. Oh, that's crazy. two. Oh, that's two. <laughs> so. Couldn't deny the reds with his E or his shift that he had online that he chose not to use. All right. All right. Yeah, I think this is the end of the game then, too. That's a joke. Uh, let, let's see the... the oh, oh. Okay, okay. The big rollouts. There's probably a better one that I'm not aware of. All right, well. Platinum is just such a joy to watch. It doesn't It's just such a joy because it just shouldn't be that bad but it is <laughs> wow that ram clip was really funny just dude it's instantly the second they got in it's just depressing like <laughs> you're not even a plat level player i would say more akin to something like diamond but like what are you gonna do some of these games you know what we're gonna do though you know what we're gonna do know. we're gonna speed we're gonna, I wrote this probably in every VOD review. We need, we're gonna speed more. And what I mean by this yeah. is to take more initiative and use the brain that I know is in your head. Um, because you know, you play Siege, like, actually that's not even a smart game anymore because it's just swing or be swung meta. So. It really is, like, it's- I mean, at it least you play Smoke and Goyo. So you have to have somewhat of a brain because those characters are actually kind of in depth. A little bit more difficult than uh warden 1.5 shotgun is crazy though well that is true that is true smoke shotgun, shotgun but crazy. there's no more deployable so that makes him kind of dog compared to goyo with a 1.5 on his vector but i digress um ever since they buffed shotgun so it's been that is true did they buff that shotgun they, they know that they buffed all shotguns even that one huh okay interesting sorry all i don't want to deviate too far from the overwatch yeah, yeah, yeah. audience yeah. but no, I, <laughs> I do enjoy that game a lot more at least right now um but yeah i think taking initiative on speed we talked about it all vod today if yeah, you basically. don't take initiative with your speed amp so and you don't try to find lost. value you're gonna have the deep go deep and die and then you lose but if you take initiative and just carry even harder there's just no possible way that the deep could lose that's kind of what you have to do in plat uh i speak from experience and even when you do do all of the right things you'll still lose some games but because that's just how plat is sorry oh hate to break it to you that's why some of my unranked <laughs> gms take nine hours instead of a few because well, I can't say that or else I might get banned because we're going to stop. Now. Um, but some accounts are not fun to play quick play on. That's all I'm going to say. Um, The second thing. What is the second thing? I mean, like we could talk about boops. I think your boops for the most part were pretty good. I think your beat drops for the most part were fine. Aside from the speed boost, the problem that we have. I think you were playing on walls pretty well. Uh, I guess we could taxi our team back more, but we did that with speed. Honestly, most of what I could say to you doesn't seem too bad. I guess we could start thinking about just deviating more and looking for um, more solo value when teams are kind of bad. Because you're not going to have a Quinn every single game telling your entire yeah, team what yeah, to play. <laughs> so I yeah. think deviating sometimes for some speed. Holy like moly. I just woke up. Like a buy for this as well, so. <laughs> um, I think solo value and just like looking to deviate off of your team sometimes is good. And you're going to do that. I mean, with the speed amp too. Like when you try to 1v1 that BAP, just being aware that you can speed amp just yourself when you're cleaning up. I completely forgot even like. had it. I yeah, I, I mean, it. to be honest, that's really all that it needs to be done here. But solo value might be the next step. And I think if you really want to get better at aim on Lucio and movement, usually people say Vax stuff for every other character in the game. But for Lucio... Yeah, I used to be a little bit better. I just have, I have different sensitivity on the Yeah, no. I mean, I, I do too, actually. So I 100% understand that. My Ana sensitivity is so fast scoped in compared to my Siege one that's like super slow. So no, that I also makes play sense. Ana. I play Ana and Lucio. Yeah, well, I mean, Ana... My two favorites. Ana is definitely much more fun. Sorry, Quinn. Um, <laughs> your character's boring. Uh, sorry, no, not suck. really. Lucio is actually pretty fun. I just suck at him. Uh, I have a code I use okay. for like aim training for Lucio. And you know what? If you want to use that too, can, can you actually tell me what that is? I sent it in chat. Do you know what? The, can you can you say it out loud? Because I can't see that right now. I want to type it. I want to write it down for the homies that are J F R J W F R J W K W K W. Okay, that's okay. Trying to make it work. Trying to make it work. Yeah, J F R K W. The first things first is Lucio is. 
Lucio's a really interesting character because he wants to really speed his team around in a brawl. He wants to close the distance with speed boost. Like that's really what sets him apart from other supports. And that's something that you want to start thinking about when you get to out of the metal ranks and you start thinking like diamond and masters. It's like, how am I going to help my team? Not as much as it is in masters, but still important. And, and the thing is you said like, Hey, I'm looking to DPS a lot, but the thing is that's, that could be a mistake or that could be good depending on the map you're on and the team that you're surrounded by. And what I see right now is that you're playing kind of like a dive core. I mean, like you have a Doomfist who definitely wants to surround the enemy. You have a Sombra who definitely doesn't want to be around people. You have an Ana that kind of just goes on her own angle, looks for an aid. And then you, you have the Cassidy too, but like he can kind of do his own thing. I don't think it's that too, too important. The thing is right here, you're playing more of a divier core, therefore you can play a little flankier if you can get away with it, is kind of what I look at this. If I had characters, for example, like Bastion, like May, like Reaper, a Reinhardt, or a Junker Queen, I'm going to be staying next to those people because that's what they need of me, right? The Doomfist doesn't need the speed boost from me. He has punch, he has slam, he has a power punch if he, if, if he uses his abilities right, like he'll be fine. Whereas the Junker Queen wants that. She needs that little bit of boost for you to really push in and, and help her out. So in terms of the idea of like, oh, I don't know when to DPS or not, the characters you're surrounded by will definitely help that. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. And, I usually try to play Lucio and there's a Rhine or a Junker Queen. So yeah, and, and, and I mean, here's the thing. Like, Lucio is a very versatile character. You it, Good Lucios will always be able to carry games. It's just really hard to be good with Lucio. But to build off of... The team that you're with the other thing is like and this might be a reason why you would pick lucio in like a dive composition is also what is the enemy playing like who's really popping off because i think in masters it starts to level down everyone starts to be kind of at that same like skill level some gms are smurfing in there but mostly people are like the duels are being traded back and forth so in masters this is going to be really important um who's really popping off on their team it's like they have an arisa you're not really going to do anything to an arisa you're not going to like it's not like a monkey that you're going to be focusing on booping the monkey off of his jump so he doesn't get on your Ana. That's not really what you're going to be looking for. They do have a pretty squishy backline. I know that's kind of crazy to think about nowadays that Ana and Mercy are considered squishy. But but when Kiriko exists and Bap and Moira, like those are killable targets. Sombra isn't really something to, to, to be a big deal about. But something really important is we've all had those lobbies where the enemy Widow is just completely dominating your team. And that is a reason, even if it's not perfect for your team comp, like maybe Brig would be better here, or even Alari would be better here in theory. If you're going to force the Lucio and ladder, it is okay to maybe just try to red it and kill the, kill the Widow all game, especially on a map like Shambali that has such great big sight lines. It is warranted to go for the flank there if you want to in the fight, but you obviously it's, it, it's different, but I, what I, what I'm trying to get at here is in plat, we, coaches typically just tell you oh just like learn the kit learn the character learn how like your stuff works but now we have to start thinking about okay how does my kit fit into the game I against what i'm in and then in masters it's like how what's the win conditions in like bigger brighter things than just starting to think about the basic concepts does everything kind of make sense here yeah of course i just wanted to comment that the Mercy was a smurf and okay. she was mainly on the Widow the entire game. So it was mm -hmm. hard to read it on the Widow. So okay. I couldn't get much value off of that. And the one more thing, and this will also help you with redditing, um, getting the kill doesn't need to be the value. Just the fact that you're taking two people and you're taking the attention of the Widow and she's not killing you, if you're removing correctly, just the fact that that is happening, you were effectively making the game like a 3v4 for your team where the Ana should always be dying. So value doesn't just have to be on the kill feed or the, the nice ding that you hear. Sometimes just attention will also be helpful. But we'll look at all of these things. I've yapped at you long enough. Let's see how we play through this. And if you have any questions, let me know. So I think that's your Sombra over there, and I think your Ana is... Yeah, okay, you're playing with your Ana. I don't mind that at all. Um, let's... Why is it... There we go. Let's just see how this goes. I also don't mind if you want to, like, play a little aggressive here. The only thing I have is, like, just start shooting here. There's no reason not to. Get some ult charge. It's a lot of downtime. You could probably be, like, 20% on your beat by now if you were just poking. 
Right. Yeah, pelping your honor, that's good. Uh, wow, you're actually maybe gonna kill that? Okay, yeah, you, you kill that. Probably could have speeded your Cassidy, but we'll see if that is a persistent problem. For anyone that's watching, we are playing on consoles, so Plat does look a little bit different. But or Plat and Diamond look a little bit different, but still the same ideas of like what we need to work on. Yep, I like this idea. I don't know why she's trying to Reddit you or just battle mercy you, but that's interesting. Um, all right, I don't want to say anything about the first fight because we do have 22 minutes of footage to look at, but I'm just still looking at kind of what we we got here, just at, just for like a, a wake up into the next fight. Now we have a Hanzo. Now we have a BAP. How does that change things? Your comp honestly looks a lot worse. I don't know why we switched to BAP and Hanzo, but you're going to have to help your BAP a little bit more, I guess, if he plays out of position with the Sombra. But other than that, still could look to flank if we want to. Deviate from our team after we amp. Stuff like that. Hmm... It just looks like our team may be staggered. We didn't really get the fight we wanted there. Um, okay, now we're speeding our team back. Okay, yep, I like that pick. I don't love the engagement after, but we'll see if it still persists. Um, wow, your team really is staggering for Diamond. We haven't even gotten a real fight yet. So, okay. Let, let's watch these fights again because I'm I'm surprised we only really got two fights. That was one fight. Yeah, that fight didn't really even happen. We die or we get out here, which is good. And then this is our fight. Wow. People really stagger. Is this a problem that you, you usually have in your ranked games? In terms of like every day, really? Wow, because like this isn't even in like in like PC Diamond. I don't really see this a whole lot. This is new, like that. That is crazy. What I would say, how do you even prevent a stagger on Lucio? You really just have to taxi people back or just go in. I I don't really know. There are things you're doing wrong, but it definitely doesn't help that your team is just kind of like running in the whole game. Like, that's a good pick. Honestly, at this point, your Doom's probably dead. I don't know why he's still going in. I would just let him die or try to speed him out. And if you can't speed him out, just, just leave. The big thing you have to understand with Lucio is that usually if you amp heals, you're not going to save someone if it's like a single target. If everyone's focusing a single target and you're trying to amp Lucio heals, it's not as strong as you think. Most of the time in situations like this, you just have to try to get them out and away from the damage. Um, but right. I haven't seen enough situations in which I can really hammer down that mistake yet, which is why I haven't talked about it yet. But honestly, thing is, yeah, go ahead. In that situation right there, I was, I'm aware of that I should have been speeding, but from what I saw, he still had his, uh, one of his cooldowns. I'm not sure about that, but I think he had one of his cooldowns. So I thought he would have been fine. So I tried to heal him so he could live longer rather than try and escape. That's why you see here when he got hacked, I, he was practically already dead. So I kind of turned around, tried to boop the Sombra, and then ran away. Obviously, it didn't work because I died instantly. But I think the big thing you have to realize here is like, sure, if your Doomfist was like fighting on cart here, maybe we could go for the heal. But look how much distance this dude has to cover. Like, even if he was full HP in this situation, it doesn't really matter. Even if he has his cooldowns, the dude is probably dying. Like, he just needs to try and get out because he's feeding so hard. Which, I mean, this is a little bit of a niche situation. But in that one right there, it's like, the whole team's looking at him. Your healing is not that strong on Lucio, even to warrant trying to healing him, heal him through it. The speed will just help him, if he does have cooldowns, get out even faster, which is what he needs. Is the whole argument for that. The, the amp for heal is like, if someone gets dying, if the team gets dynamited... If a Farah is like shooting in between all of my team, if there maybe was like just an EMP, stuff that is going to affect a lot of people is where we're going to be amping heals for this part. But if we're trying to get a single target out of danger, usually that's when I'm trying to speed someone out. But that 
is variable for the situation. It's why I don't want to say this is the, that's like the de facto way to think about it. But in this situation, the speed was definitely the play in hindsight. I mean, obviously hindsight's 2020. But then, yeah, right here, it was just like, honestly, the, the, the really correct play was just to let this dude die because he's feeding. We got the, the widow pick and just prevent the res if we realize that like there might be some smurfing going on here. Like everything looks at that widow. At least for you, everything looks at the widow. Right. But I don't know. Now we're on hog. Now we're really just playing for angles. And honestly, like you, you could try to play to keep your Baptiste alive, but he really shouldn't die to just a Sombra in 2023 Overwatch 2 when he has 300 effective HP. But if he is falling over, you could try to help him out a little more. I mean, you're doing a fine job right now. That's a kill. In general, too, just try to play off walls more. Don't don't stand in like the middle of uh, a choke ever. Oh, just understand that like Lucio thrives off walls and try to avoid sitting in the middle because then you have like a really hard time dodging things when Lucio's movement is all dependent off a wall. Just it's a small thing to think about. You're doing better than most players are though about it. Some people just don't even don't even stand next to walls. Okay, now we might have some semblance of team fights. Yep, I like the aggression here. Just clean up that fight. Mercy's movement wasn't terrible there. Um yeah, I mean, I like that idea. It, the idea was right. Just execution, obviously, with more practice will get refined. A big thing to understand here, though, is like it's working right now, but in higher levels, like you're kind of just standing next to your hog here. When your hog wants to take an angle, your Hanzo wants to take an angle. I feel like what would be more beneficial is if you try to take a new angle to pressure the team even more and We'll watch a little bit more footage to see what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard because they're walking into a choke. But as the fight develops, I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean. This right here is wild. This right here is a little too much. I like that you're being aggressive. But um, understand that the fight hasn't really started yet. And this choke is very strong. You, you want to almost bait them in a little bit before you go for that angle. Because your team should really be safe here. But this is very aggressive, and it's very easy for the team to just kind of backpedal and kill you because you're kind of just in the spawn too. Almost too much aggression, but I, I like the aggression, the idea that you're confident enough to do it. I think you just need to wait a little longer until the engagement starts and they can't just turn around on you. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, let's see how it plays out for you, though, because honestly, they might not even have turned around. No, I say that, and still somehow the Hanzo is dead. That's just wild. This rank is crazy. Okay, well, you see, the thing is here is like, it's, it's very hard to get away to. Like, if you invest that hard that early, even if they don't look at you, if your team starts falling over and then you try to go back to help them now, you're just going to be walking back into the enemy and you're going to fall over. If we wait until they cross this choke, now we can, now we can flank and the, the, we can surround them like we want to. To be honest, this comp is just so bad and the, the team is not helping you out a whole lot. This is one of those games that it's just very difficult uh, on Lucio. But third point should be doable. It seems like it is considering it's a 22 minute game, but maybe the, this is an overtime push. I'm not sure. Again, you want to wait and you want to wait to do your redditing until your team is starting to take the engage so that the pressure all comes in at the same time that it's not one 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 because then everything's going to focus on you and you're going to have a really hard time redditing whereas if your hog starts to take the peak and now the widow is trying to find a pick on the bap and then you come in on the widow and boop the widow away now she has to try to shoot you see how that's a lot different it's like you mitigate all the damage just because the timing was right compared to i'm just going to run at her she's going to body shot me and now i'm effectively out of the fight So timing now after, okay, good shot. Timing now after a few fights definitely seems to be something that we need to think about more. That and like when to speed, when to heal. But with this comp, you're not going to really get 
too many opportunities where you're gonna have to like heal or speed a teammate because everyone should be pretty self-sufficient honestly i like that you're speeding your team back this is good like really good keep doing this especially in like higher elos that this this makes a difference you you don't realize how many gm players just forget to do that sometimes and it pisses me off again right here you already have your ult i don't think push okay I say that you shouldn't push early, but then your teammates doing that. So like, I don't, I don't mind, I guess that you're doing it that early, but if you don't have someone to help you do that, like don't do that solo. Don't do that solo. 100% like going for like this flank before the fight really started. Like that's kind of why the Sombra just died to a widow, which really shouldn't happen is because she's going for these flanks. But I do like that you tried to support the play. Like that was, I think the best idea. Do you still like? Do you Let's... kind of understand what I'm going for here? I don't know if yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. punctuating, if that's even the word, like, or, or articulating the right idea. Oh, no, you're clear. Because the big thing too is you want to make sure that you're like allowing time for the fight to develop, so that you're not because every time you're looking for an angle, like I don't know if you recognize, but you're always shooting at the Arisa in the front line, which like that's not terrible. Like you're doing damage at least. But it could be so much more effective if we just let this Arisa walk in a little bit like she wants to. And then because we have this comp that wants to surround them and take angles. Like Hog doesn't want to brawl into a Rhine Shield or an Arisa Javelin typically. Now that we've bait baited them in, it allows us to take those surrounding angles and then surround the Arisa. Or have a gateway into the back line because they're not stacked. Just by taking a little bit and letting them walk in in these composition types, we can look for the flank. Even in Brawl 2, if you really see like, wow, my Brawl is like really losing against the enemy Brawl, it's the same idea. Like speed the team in, let the Brawl start happening, and then you can start to deviate and maybe look for a pick on the support. Same idea if you're going to look to Reddit. It, it has to be more scientific almost at this rank. And if you have questions, let me know. Honestly, if the BAP is still alive there and you see the, the Hanzo crit, I would much rather see you recognize that this Arisa is shooting the hog. You still have a BAP that should be able to heal everything. And I would just look to flank on either the Ana or the, the Mercy or the Widow or the Mercy here. Because realistically, like the big threat right now that I'm seeing is the Widow. The Arisa shouldn't really kill anyone here. Not with the sustainability we have. That might be a hot take. I mean, if you didn't have a Baptiste, I think healing your team is the play. But here it's like, again, it, there's there's a lot of single target damage. There's not a whole lot of like AOE that I have to really worry about in my BAP, who's like the best healer in the game is still alive. If he can't do it, I'm not you're not really gonna be impactful here. You'd be much more impactful just trying to take out the widow that's like has her scope probably on the Baptiste here. Well, trying to. He's just not the best. Again, speed here is also just much more beneficial. Because it's more about, let's get my team out of this sight line so they don't get one shot as compared to, let me just try to heal all the chip damage they're taking, which isn't a lot since they only really have the Arisa for chip, if that makes sense. Recognize like what the threat is and think about it. Because I think you're smart enough as a player to realize like what you're going to be able to heal and what you're not going to be able to heal. Think about that before the game and then try to rationalize it. It's going to take time, but you'll get there for sure. The amp just wasn't needed there, but I, I'm pretty sure we're understanding that. And yeah, your Hanzo is just the goat, I suppose. If you have any questions again, just let me know. They're on Alari now instead of Ana, so their healing is really short and low, so... Now, like, chipping the Arisa isn't the worst thing ever. But we probably want... Again, right here, it's, like, timing again, right? And we're also standing in the middle of a choke. So we can't really run away if someone decides to swing us, if they still have the Widow. Whereas, it's, like, if we play on a wall, and we almost, like, wait back in, like, positions like these, or over here, or maybe we want to almost go behind them, which is a little bit of a, a meme play. It just, it creates a lot more opportunities for you because you're not, they don't know where you are. You allow the Arisa to walk in. It's just easier to react. I think it's easier to see now that we keep repeating the same thing. Does that, would you say so? 
Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, and right here, it's like you're playing Lucio. You're trying to like shoot him in in Ana range and Alari range. It's, it's just hard. It's not like it's not like your aim is bad, especially for controller. It's not bad. It's more so you're putting yourself in like really hard situations to make work, which I used to do the same thing when I was on console. Not gonna lie, I used to be an Ana one trick. I was like, man, this is so hard, but it was really just me making things super hard for myself. Didn't need to do that. The moment I started playing for myself to like make things easier for myself and give myself the advantage just through like movement and thinking, I, I, I hit GM the next weekend. I'm not even lying. I'm not even lying. I remember the Volskaya game. Which I guess you guys don't even know those maps anymore. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot, a lot. This, like, this is the situation where I think playing with your hog is good because they're not reacting to it and you're allowing the hog, you're speeding the hog to do what he wants to do, to take an angle and then you get rewarded for it. That was good. That's the type of stuff I wanna see. Like almost consistently in this kind of comp. Like the speed, the heal is almost never valuable when we used it, but that speed, the first time we really utilized it perfectly, bam, it, it worked. You got a lot of value out of it. That pretty much just wins you a fight. Now you don't even have to worry about your Baptiste because who's gonna flank on him? See what I'm saying? Like, the speed on Lucio is really what makes him strong, no matter the comp. In, like, niche metas, the heal is okay, but you're never really going to have to worry about that because that only really occurs in, like, really high top 500 type lobbies. Yep, and then this is, this is like, I want to see you do this every fight. Like, do you see why this is so good? Just, just like, look at what you're doing here. Like, this is Chef's Kiss GM level shit. I have to demonetize. I don't care. Like this is your hog is taking this angle. You spent him to try to get a, get a hook. Bam. Perfect. You realize maybe you didn't, but realize that the sombers on this angle about to uncloak to shoot the supports. And now you're taking another angle and surrounding them. They are not going to win this fight. And if they do someone really messed up, but th this is insane. And let's, let's see this play out from third person. Cause I, I want to see you. I want you to see this from third person at like 0.5 speed. Their team just absolutely gets dismantled. Their Mercy, for some reason, pulls out the Glock. The Arisa's alone. The Sojourn's like, what the hell am I supposed to shoot at? Okay, well, <sighs> Sojourn just completely diffed your Sombra. I mean, that's just kind of unlucky. But still, that was good if, you're, if the Sojourn didn't just completely diff your Sombra. I'm not going to lie. But that's, that's the right idea. That is the perfect idea. Because if we were to just stack, all of the damage would have been going this way. And it just would have been a massacre. But now we can at least try to salvage this fight realistically the hansa should have stepped up here maybe we could have hit more shots but i like this idea like do you see how that idea is better than the the other ideas we were doing earlier in the game at least with this composition the only issue is sojourn ended up embarrassing us here so. and you know what what are you gonna do about it what are you gonna do about it sometimes the sojourn's just gonna pop off the only other thing that you can do then is just keep practicing hitting more shots being a little quicker on it but the idea is there if we do that more consistently and the hog maybe steps up a little faster, uh, life is good. But this is like the direction we need to start going in and then things will, will change for the better. The Sojourn's not going to hit that shot every fight. That's like once in a lifetime for her probably. But still, this fight isn't even lost. Wow. Okay. Well, so Sojourn just Sojourn did well that fight. All right. I mean, that happens. That happens. I'm not going to say that it doesn't. Oh, let's see what happened here. I mean, you did hold on to beat a lot, but they also, like, never EMP'd, which, like, I honestly think is fine that you hold the beat, but that's arguable. Like, you could tempo beat, but then she's just going to EMP. I don't really want to focus on the beat drop. I want to focus on the stuff that we already talked about because I don't want to overload you. It's really about understanding when it's time to flank, which that was really good what we just did, what we just saw. And understanding when is it time to, to speed and when is it time to heal, depending on the comp. So when I'm looking here, I have another comp that's just going to look to surround. They have another comp that's really just looking to surround. There's honestly better supports to be playing in this situation. But for the sake of Lucio, like if you start getting really comfortable with taking the duels that you need to, I think Lucio's fine in this composition. Do you have any questions from last half? Uh, no. All right, let's get into this half then. Um... You could be, you could be a cart bot, but we'll see. Because Widow or Ash might just want to take that angle.
again, I don't ever really love the just poking right in areas like this. I, I much would I would much rather see like a jiggle peek, and then when you want to go to the other side, just wall jump over. Especially when you're playing on these maps that are super long sight lines, like you are not good enough of a character. Not not you personally as a player, but a character does not excel at that range compared to the possible Sojourn Widow, Ash, whatever they might have. So don't make it easier for them to kill you. This is more of like a timing thing again, I think. And and I would have loved to see you speed in if you were going to go for this. Instead of healing, speed in, jump off a few walls. You're going to move at like Mach 10, boop the soldier off in the other hit scan, go back to your team if you're going to go for that. That's that's the play instead of look for the pick and like try to heal yourself. It's much better to just use the speed to mitigate all the damage you would have taken than just trying to heal through it. Because the, the Lucio heal is honestly one of the weakest in the game now. Which is sad, but Inspire's better. Every other AoE usually is just better. So the healing is really not what you're playing Lucio for. And I think that's an important distinction to make. But still, even though the timing was kind of off and the execution could have been better... You kind of got away with it. So that does tell me a lot about like the stuff that you can really get away with at this rank. And if we really refine the skills we've been talking about, like the improvement, the progress will come. And like, I don't know. Sergeant, just the goat, I guess. Right here, if you're not going to look to poke close, I would be hoping that you're speeding your team back. I was thinking about speeding my team there, but then I saw that their team was coming and I didn't want to leave my hog with no support. Realistically, if the hog dies here, it's his fault. Like, if the hog is going to die when he's the only one on cart and he doesn't step back, that's his fault. You're not going to help him. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, and then hog's just kind of taking the same angle as everyone else. And we could have... I think the right play here is to speed the team back. The hog chills on his own angle. And, and now instead of everyone just having to run back to the fight and, and take a a very head-on fight, which we don't really want to do, it allows maybe someone to take an angle over here, which is probably you, a hit scan to take an angle like on this, and maybe maybe one goes really hard and angles over this way, as opposed to what the blue arrow says, which is just, okay, we're all shooting the same angle. It's almost impossible to win there. But I don't know. In plat, sometimes it just works, but it's not consistent. If we, if we fix the slight things that we're talking about, it becomes much more consistent. I'm sorry I'm saying plat. It's like high plat, low diamond. It's very similar uh, in the terms of just the crazy bullshit that happens. And this is just one of those games. There's just crazy plays back and forth. Honestly, this looks more like plat, so I don't blame you. And that's just unlucky. Honestly, that's just pushing too far. And I think it's just like a timing thing that we have to worry or think about. It's like you don't want to be the sole focus because then you actually will die. But when... When the chaos ensues and you then start to really get aggressive, then you have a lot of impact. I don't, I, we don't have crazy great examples this game, but that one that we did on third point was like really well executed. Your team just kind of fell over, which is unlucky. All right, I like this though. If we would shift over and take like maybe an angle over here, maybe try to find that turret since that is your job. Lucio typically is the one killing the turret. I really like trying to go, oh, what the hell happened here? Oh, she died. Um, but taking like an angle over here is, I, I just think, so much more beneficial. Because the hog shouldn't need you. He has himself. He has a Baptiste usually with him. Like, that damage alone should be enough. And if it's not, I don't think your damage is going to be impactful enough to get that kill unless you're hitting all headshots. I think what's better is let me try to focus a healer and like pressure them to not look at the Torb that just got hooked. Unless you can take an angle and still shoot the hog. But here, I just think taking another angle is more beneficial than stacking like we have been. And right here, it's just like unlucky. Okay, I, I like the speed there. It gets him out. Honestly, I don't think the amp was needed. Hindsight 2020. But the speed is better than the heal there because the bap, bap's got it. Don't got to worry about it. Yep, booped off the hog. That's good. Honestly, just the only problem I have with this fight is that we could have been flanking or like pressuring another angle. Not going like in, not not inting, not going in all the way because the time is not, it's not right for that. There's no chaos to like, you're not, you don't have another person taking some aggression. But just the fact that you're present on that angle is going to force them back into this position sooner. Even if your Ash doesn't find a pick or the Widow doesn't find a pick on the Ana. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
it's really it's a really difficult concept and that's why i'm asking a lot because this is a really hard thing to grasp lucio is a very difficult character i think he's probably one of the hardest supports that might be a hot take but the thing is like by playing front to back like this you actually almost lose this fight because you give them the time to recuperate here play to their brawl like they want to because i mean you got a widow and an ash you want to just kind of take angles and poke it the whole day this this lets the torb and the sojourn like get their cooldowns again to turn this corner and just like obliterate you which you might lose this fight because we are all stacking because that's just how it works in diamond even in high diamond but you get away with it all right Unlucky. Right here, I step right on top of that Ash and make sure that she's not going to get headshot. That's a higher level thing, though, so. Because the last thing you want is for her to get blown up. Oh, right, yep, we got the Ana. Honestly, I'm speeding in and I'm killing this. Mercy, yep, I like that. That's the right time because there's nothing else that's going to kill you. Just, just clean it up. You have really good instincts. I think there's just like small, like nuance things that you have to really think about that you're missing out on that definitely holds you uh, back just because Lucio's a hard character to climb on. But once we fix those things, like we, we're gonna see the improvement. Mm -mm -mm. Honestly, for a map like this with how much range you have, I'd be totally okay if you wanted to like wall ride up here and take this angle. I think it would be easier for you to hit shots because they're not gonna be strafing you. They're gonna be strafing your Ash or Widow. This is an opportunity, but this is like a map specific thing. The only reason I'm saying this is like, you're not, you're not playing a comp that you really need to speed your team. If you need to speed your team and you have like a Reinhardt, stay with your team. But in this situation, it's okay to look for the flank. It's not necessarily a flank, more of an off angle is the right thing to call it. Because, I don't know, does that make sense that it's just, it's just easier to hit those shots if you take a different angle? Especially if we think about where the fight is going to end up when they're walking this slow. It's probably going to end up around this, like, zone to the point where, like, having that pressure to at least force them to force you off of it, like, does help a lot. Because when they're forcing you off of this angle, what does the hog get to do? He gets to take the angle now. It's just that the fact that there's so many things the enemy team has to think about, which they're never thinking in the first place and ranked anyways, it makes a lot of value for you. It, it just, it, you reap what you sow almost. And we also have beat. So they don't really have anything you need a beat for. I mean, they have a nano hog, nano so Okay, never mind. They have nano overclock. That's what you're beating. I forgot how strong that ultimate is. Shows me how much I know. And yeah, that's just, I mean, is that unlucky? I think just... The problem here is like you don't have a shield tank and for some reason your whole team wants to brawl when you really shouldn't be brawling we should be trying to get our widow on the angle over there or maybe the ash over there and if the ash isn't gonna do it then you're gonna do it and then we're playing to our comp a little bit better and we're not just gonna let the nano hog just destroy the whole team is that see where i'm getting at here like they're playing their comp better even though they're not really thinking about it it's just they're playing stacked overwatch but stacked overwatch doesn't isn't how you should always play mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to not stay with your team and take an angle because that's what they really need but they did just use three alts and we didn't use beat so now we can tempo beat in like you said you wanted to um but again i don't want to like lecture you on beat other than like we can use it a little more throughout some of these games if we want to press like an advantage that we see but that kind of goes into the whole like timing idea that we need to start recognizing when it's the time to go in because it's not always the time to go in once we figure that out then the beat starts getting better too and that's why i'm not focusing on the beat i'm focusing on the actual problem and not the symptom <clears throat> right here understand that they're shooting at you from up top and that's very dangerous for you to do timing here wait for your team to take some aggression i mean they kind of are but i don't even know i just don't i don't 
agree with just like face tanking the damage here and possibly dying just to try to int for the turret. I think there's a better way to do this, which is either wait a little bit for your team or actually rotate with your team in these situations because scratch everything I just said. Honestly, the best way to do this, just speed your team through this rotation. This is like the one time where I would say stack with your team so that they don't just get destroyed from up here. This is, this is the one time I'd actually say that. Scratch everything I just said before this. In moments like this, it's okay to just speed them through the spot that's going to kill them every time. Like, I'm pretty sure you've played enough Overwatch 2 on this map to recognize that this little window up here is really scary. And, and just try to mitigate the damage by just speeding through it. Niche thing. Um... I guess it's kind of a timing thing, but I think that's more niche than anything else. That's more of like something you'd see in Brawl, but I still think it applies in a comp like this because Hog still needs, he's hes kind of slow. He's not really like a mobile tank to be taking off angles with like a ball is. So he, he needs a little bit of a boost. All right, yep, they use cooldowns. We're speeding them out. Yep, I agree with that. At this point though, what do you think the problem is? Why do you think the hog died? What let, let's let's bring this back a little bit. Let's go from like a over top view. I want to see if this is kind of making sense. Let's do spectate overlay. Oh, that's weird. That's new. What could we have done better after we speed this hog out? All right, so the fights here is pretty neutral. We're just kind of chilling. What could we have done? Your hog is going this way. Your Widow, I think, is doing that, but still is looking this way. We chose to do the Black Arrow, but what could we have done? If we did number one, could have done number two, like trying to get up into the window number one, trying to go all the way around number two, or number three, do you think this was the right way? And here's the thing, there's no there's no real there's no real like right answer, but you said number one. Why do you yeah. think number one? And I think that's I think that's what I would go for if I was because this is a really difficult fight to win. Or even actually going through the tunnel. I forgot that's a thing too. But why do you think either one of these answers would be good? I personally would have went number one because maybe I could have dueled with the Torb a bit easier, maybe booped them down. Uh, so my team could handle him, take him away from his team while the rest of the team were looking at my hog while they're obviously killing him. So that's probably so what being I able to surround done. create pressure. You're kind of get, you're getting the right idea. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at. Like imagine this torb is just hanging. This hog, like you're not really going to be able to. The real problem right here is like he's shooting at a sojourn. He everyone's getting the opportunity to focus him with no repercussions. We need something else to pressure here, which usually should be a DPS, but the fact that it's not, we have to find a way to do more. And which my solution would be, honestly, if you don't feel confident in the wall riding and shooting up there, I forgot that this tunnel just exists. Creates a great angle. I, I've never used this tunnel, but that's also because like, typically teams are gonna actually rotate when you speed boost them in this rank. They kind of don't do that. Um. But this is another opportunity to like look at how juicy this angle would be if we can just like start pressuring any of these targets and they have to turn around. Like what if the hog turns around and now he your hog gets a free hook on one of these? Completely different fight compared to what we did. Let's look at this again. We said, oh shit, I need to help my widow. But like, what am I going to get to do here? And like, oh shit, now they all got the time to just kind of kill my hog. Your Widow did manage to find a pick, but I'm sorry. Diamond Widows are not doing that consistent. See how there's like, there's something we tried to do, which was like, we're helping our team because we're like near them. But in reality, we could have actually just looked to pressure somewhere else because that would have helped them more. Is what I'm trying to get at in these compositions. With a Rhine, just speed them in. Just speed them in and get them close. With Hog... You need to create pressure to surround because if you're going from, from just front to back, you're gonna have a very hard time. But I'm I'm glad that I mean I'm assuming that makes some more sense. I got you. The only other thing I would say 
is if you don't want to try to go for that angle there, you could actually just invest the beat and still just go up the gut. But that's like the only time that you could ever front to back the enemy team with what you have is if you're going to invest a beat just because of the DPS that you got. It's it's not going to be good front to back usually. Maybe if you had a Reaper, you could just front to back it, but you just don't. So we got to we got to surround. Honestly, right here, I wouldn't I wouldn't keep spamming just because we already have our ult and wow, your ash just kind of fell over. Not your faults. All this time you could use to either taxi your team back, which is what I would do, or honestly just look to find an angle. Like maybe look to take this top right now. And then the moment that the hog wants to peek, you start looking. And now they have an easier rotate. There there is options here. It's just you don't want to do like the middle. Which we often fall into. Oh, that's a good hook. Okay. I mean, that's like the first hook he hit all game. It's wild. Yep. I, I don't mind this beat. I, I wish we would have had speed amp for it, but I think the fight before was a better opportunity to use the beat because now they're going to have alts. But again, that's more of like the, the whole idea of like timing. When do we take the angle? When is it time to go in? Which we've talked a lot about. Oh, that's wild. That's unlucky. I want to I wanna look at this again. What happened? I think this is another timing thing, honestly. Do you see why I'm saying that? Like, why do you think I'm saying that? I probably should have done that before the hog got knocked back with the nano. Okay, that that and is the the, honestly that is that is something I wasn't thinking about, but that could that could be true. Like honestly, if you wanted to look for the flank sooner, that's fine. I think there's another thing we actually haven't touched on too. It's like, what just happened? Look at the look at the kill feed. We just got the pick on the sojourn. They just invested a nano and a torball. To be honest, at this point, we got the pick. We're forcing them to run away. We have point control. Do we really need to even push? We got the pick. We we got what we really need for this comp to, to actually win against that. Is there really even need to keep pushing? And, and this is another thing that we, we haven't really gotten to talk about this because quite frankly, your team hasn't gotten these picks consistently enough. But at this moment, it's kind of like another timing thing. It's like, do I need to flank or is the fight kind of over? I think pushing as deep as you did when this is where we're at, when we force them back into a choke, they're kind of retreating. The fight isn't happening anymore. Your team isn't set up. No one else is taking pressure. I think we're good to just kind of chill out. I do like your idea though, too, because if we take this back a little bit, maybe. Like, honestly, if you wanted to this whole time to look to like flank back this way and maybe kill their Ana, like, honestly, I don't mind that. I don't mind that that's kind of where we're starting to think. Like, I think that's a perfectly okay way to look at this fight too. Like, I I'm I think that's fine. That That's a good idea for this comp in this situation. But like, look at this. It's like, I know you want that on a pick, but you just don't need it. It doesn't change the outcome of the fight if you get it or not. What changes the outcome of the fight is if now you die and we're back to a 4v4 situation. Things get really difficult, especially when we're talking about you the player that has agency in diamond. That's a very important thing. And I, trust me, oh, I, not even trust me. I trust that you know that because I'm sure you've had your fair share of, of teammates. We all have. Do you live here? No. Because if you live there, that's just wild. That's wild. Okay, but you do win that fight. Um, I don't want to bore you, so I, I might just start going here. Because we're talking, again, we're drilling the same thing, but... Be surprised right. if the Ana didn't kill me there. It's a GM. Oh, that Ana is a GM. Yeah. On, on another roll. Or are you uh, saying a Smurf? On DPS. Oh, oh, oh. They have a GM DPS player on Ana too. Okay, well, yeah, that's probably why this game is starting to feel. Okay, I'm seeing that. <laughs> I'm starting to see that now. Yeah, I mean the odds were definitely stacked against you, or at least at least it felt that way.
So I like that you're taking the initiative to shoot the turret. What I don't particularly like is just the way we're going about it. So again, this is a high level thing. The turret in this situation actually isn't really sh gonna shoot anyone when the fight breaks out that it really needs to not shoot. To the point where I think it'd be easier for you to not try to force yourself to shoot at this crazy hard angle and instead, like, maybe look to take the angle with your ash over here, or maybe even flank and force this ash off of this incredibly aggressive angle that should be getting followed up upon, but just isn't. For some reason, it's just not. I don't know why it should be, but it's not. Because, you know, diamond happens. But if we, if we go over here, we force this ash off this angle, your soldier doesn't die. Now we have a much better fight, and they're all forced in this one cir circular position. Whereas if we're right here, we're just kind of idling and praying to pray into my team that they pull through, which as we have seen, they barely are pulling through, but they need a lot more help. And we actually might die here because it forces us to play on a really awkward wall that we don't really want to. And we get killed because of it. I, I think you'd be a crazy good brawl, Lucio. But what's up? There. What's up? My hog was going to get pinned in the corner there because the other hog was trying to hit that. So I tried booping him out and then ended up getting myself killed. And, you know, in a situation where you are forced to do something like that, I think booping and running is the play. Not booping and trying to kill, but booping and running is the play. But th at the end of the day, in this situation, what really went wrong was the start of the fight where this Ash killed your soldier and there was something we could have done about it. We could have been back here, forced this Ash off, and now if the hog even tries to go for a play like this, there's so much, there's so many more instances of damage that are going to go at him when he turns this corner, because there's not as many angles that are going to stop your soldier from like swinging this hog or your ash from just focusing this hog because this angle is being taken by their team. Your damage can't even really burn this hog as hard as they want to. And it's like, I know that it's difficult to see that in the moment, but now we're looking at this. I hope we're having this aha moment of like, if we set ourselves up, if we get the timing right, it makes such a difference. You don't even have to hit the shots necessarily. It's just about being there. It takes, it, it forces people off of angles they want to take. And you do a lot more in these really weird compositions. Like, don't get me, I don't want this to sound like I'm grilling you this whole session. This is like a really hard comp to play Lucio in. Like, it's, it's really difficult. And honestly, if I, I think if you played, if there was a Brawl meta and everyone in Diamond just decided to play Brawl, I think your Lucio would climb very easily. You're playing a very strong Brawl Lucio that's playing off of your team-centric. I think understanding that ladder is ladder and it's not perfect and understanding how you can control the game on Lucio is going to do you wonders. And I hope you feel that way too because I don't think you're a bad player at all. Good decisions most of the time. It's just like playing Lucio with a hog, Widow Ash for most of the game is abysmally difficult. Like that is so hard. I don't even know if I could pull through with this game. But there are things that you can try that would make it a lot easier. Okay, speeding out of spawn, don't mind it. Again, if you have questions, let me know. Um, okay, like see this? I like this. We're taking an angle. It sucks that our hog is taking the same one. But the fact that our hog is taking the same one and occupying it, I would just speed pass this way and just occupy this space over here because now they're going to be looking at you. Maybe Hog can walk. Maybe the rest of your team can walk and find picks. Instead, everyone's looking at this area. Everyone's getting anteed. Your Hog's asleep. And, well, your teammates still need to walk out of spawn. So just a bad start to the fight just by your Hog, honestly. All right, now we just need to speed out. They, they nanoed the Hog. Just don't even don't even entertain it. All right, your team does the right thing. We get a pick. All right, we're taking an angle. I don't mind this. I like that we're not going in right away. We're just presenting ourselves here. That's forcing that hog back. He can't take as close an angle as he wants. Now, this is what I don't like is why are we going back to the team? Instead, what if we now see, recognize that our team is starting to walk forward, which opens us up to take this angle over here. And, and... It makes a big difference. Does it? Do you, can you kind of see how this, what you did, is opening the fight up a lot easier for your team than what we did last time? But then also how we can build off of it. Yeah. Okay. 
because it's hard. It's fucking hard. This character is so difficult. But yeah, going back to the team, this is like five seconds of dead space and now our team is now just getting really comfortable on cart again and we're going to lose this fight probably unless unless we like do something with these alts. But after what I've seen and the fact that Torb has his alt, I think his is going to trump a lot of us, but maybe the soldier's going to flank like he should have been all game. Torb alts, you're probably going to die here. You should die here. It's not what you don't, right? I was going to say. Like, I mean, to be fair, inting that hard, I mean, inadvertently did still open up the fight for your team, but you died as a result. The safer way to have, to have do this would have been to take this angle far earlier. It, it does the same result, but then you live, and then maybe we don't have to invest one, two, three, four ultimates. It, it saves your team a lot, which we can't see, but... From knowing how the game functions, I can see that that's going to happen in the free future. We do have beats, so we should win this fight. We should. Unless the hog kills someone here. But still, it's it's a lot harder than it needs to be. Wow, that was a really good shot by your Kiri. Any questions about that half? Uh, no, I think I'm good. All right, so we're back on offense. Ooh, okay. This is really what I wanted to see. Now they are on Brawl. For sure they are stacking together. For sure you do not want to front to back them. Do you see why? I mean, they got a Bap. They got a Torb. They got a Bastion. If, if your Hog even looks at that guy and he's the only one on an angle, he is going to fall over. So let's see how we do this, team. Right now, we have all four of us on cart. That's a really big problem. It's a really big problem. I mean, honestly, any angle you take here would be crazy. Like, right here, if you wanted to take an angle over here. I would advise against trying to go for a boop, just because it's kind of hard to get out. But any angle here is just going to do wonders for your team. Honestly, I think staying on cart, if your team is going to actively take angles, honestly, probably is the best. Actually, no, Kiri probably stays cart here. But... You know, having five on cart against that comp, very scary. I was trying to push the cart a lot. Like, I was trying to rush it because we only had about 40 seconds left here. I kind of wanted to win the game more than I had a trust in my team. And I mean, I understand that the objective is how you win the game. Yes, that is true. But if you do not win this fight, it doesn't matter. The cart is still going to get stopped. If you win the fight, now you get to actually push the cart. Someone's going to push this cart. Um, there's no way that they don't. But if we don't win this fight, you're going to lose the game. Like winning the fight gives you the cart to like about right here. Whereas losing this fight is going to stop it where it is. Winning the fight will always trump the cart. Unless it's like overtime and someone needs to be on cart. But right here, like your team probably just loses right here. It, they should. Everyone's just poking main. There's no reason why the enemy team should be struggling right now but for some reason they are you got really lucky i guess i mean that was a good boop off the wall what is going on here what happened did you does your team win this fight no right honestly i don't remember there's no way your team wins this fight no See, like, we wanted to push the cart this whole time. And, like, really, what did we get? We got, like, this much space. Yeah, you guys are losing this game, right? You should lose this game. You absolutely should. But, uh, we'll see. Um, I, like, I think right here, they, they somehow let you guys live this whole time, which I think is wild. But then you did actually get a boop on the Bastion, which is a lot of value. <laughs> The problem is, is like your whole team is sitting main and they're just going to out brawl you even when you get that high value boop. If if we switch it up, and we start pressuring earlier. I think this is just a complete. I don't know if it's a completely different fight, but it definitely is much more likely that you're going to win uh, if we if we take the angle when we're playing like this kind of comp. Now, I do want to say something that's different, though, if your team, for whatever reason on this map, wanted to play like a Junker Queen, May Reaper, uh, keep BAP, Lucio. 
and you wanted to stay on cart and they wanted to just sit in this bottom area and then as soon as this cart gets to about here you speed amp jump on some walls and look for a boop you get that bastion boop and they all just collapse on him and kill him and then you guys run around over here i like the way that you played but the thing is that's not the comp that you're on that's that's honestly before what we just talked about with the brawl that's the optimal way to play lucio but that's just not what we have right now and we have to be flexible I know that was a lot. Did, did that example make sense? I can reiterate. Yeah, it did. Okay. Because I really, I would love to see your Lucio on like a King's Row with a, with a J Queen or a Rhine. Cause I think it, it, it would look very strong. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if we were to crunch the win rates on the different maps that you have maps like King's Row, you're probably winning 80% of the time with Lucio maps like this, where it's like literally the hardest map to play Lucio in the game. Yeah. You're going to struggle. But this this actually is good to review because it, it I think it definitely helps with understanding like the different ways Lucio can be played. Okay, we're on Alari now. So Yeah. I was gonna I'm gonna look over that. this. I'm gonna look over this if you don't mind. Because I wanna see I how you ahead. approach Alari. Because I think the way that you should play Alari is the same approach that you kinda need to use for Lucio in a weird way. If you stand with your whole team and just shoot the same angle, you're going to have a very hard time on Alari. So let's see how you do this. You're going to have a really hard time because you're going to have all the damage looking at you. You're probably usually going to have a Sig Shield in your face. Or you're going to have the Orisa Jav. You have a Hanzo that you might get logged by. Let's see how we do this, though. Now you should get logged about five times over here because you're way overexposing yourself. Um, but your, your hog has the right idea where he's like on the off angle looking for a hook. Honestly, once you see them starting to walk in, uh, I don't know about an angle this sharp, but even like back here or taking an angle, maybe on this window over here just to look over on the left or just scouting down this way, I think is much better than standing right here with the rest of your team shooting with damage fall off into a Hanzo that could possibly headshot you. And that's why a lot of your damage felt meaningless. It's because, like, you're not really going to get the opportunity to shoot the BAP when the BAP's behind the Arisa, unless the BAP is dumb and does that. Um, but that's not going to happen when you start climbing. Again, right here, it's like everyone's on this angle. This angle is a lot less... Um, it's a lot more surprising to them. You probably get a free shot on the Kiri if you take that angle. Um, make things easier for yourself. Uh, so I should let you know I only have two hours on the lorry, so I didn't even know that she had fall off damage. And you know what? That's totally fine. <laughs> and that's totally fine. I mean, if you're, it, it, I'm just trying to say like, you, you, the fall off isn't even like the big point there. It's more so just like, make things easier for yourself. You know, like don't. Oh wait, what the hell? Wait, the turret is hacked. Still, that's odd. I don't even know. That was odd. Yeah, yeah. Damage fall off for Alari. That that is that is real. Um, <laughs> real. That's like the first thing that came to my head. Um, that is a very real thing that you have to think about. The sound is always like also very muted right now in the game. I know you can't hear it, but the fact that you don't die there is wild. Wait, do you guys you guys actually win this game? Let's see. Like, you guys might actually win this game. Even though that, like, I really don't love the way this is getting played. It's just that they're, like, see how they're, they're kind of losing because they're stacking. And they don't really, I mean, they have a stack comp, but they don't have a Lucio to speed. So, I don't know. Oh, wait, this might be the end. This might, nope, never mind. Your Bastion clutched up. I, okay, like here, like honestly, this angle isn't as bad because now your Torb is taking the angle that you really should have been taking. <laughs> so now this is okay for you to take because now we have multiple angles of pressure and, and it's either one or the other for them. She's just going to Suzu that. Never mind. For some reason, she didn't. Wow, you guys actually won it. Should have won it, right? Ooh, do you? They have alts. Oh no, he's teabagging. <laughs> You're emoting on him. They're gonna touch the point. Oh never mind, they're not. It's funny. 
I'm honestly surprised I won that too. Uh, it's honestly because your team started to play it correctly. The comp that you were trying to play that whole game, you started playing correctly at the very end, which is wild to me too. But hey, we won, which that's all that matters, right? So I'm going to give you some takeaways, whether you want to write them down on a piece of paper or you want to write them down on like a Google Doc, whatever suits you. The, the major things that I would take away from this is number one, timing, I think is the right word to use, which is what the one that we used the most. And, and timing really encapsulates a lot of different things. It's, it's about like, what is the comp that I'm on? What are the comps that are on the enemy team? And it's not quite tempo. I, I don't want to say tempo yet because I don't think we're really talking about that. Timing more so, it's like, what comp am I on? Do I need to be with my team or not? And when is the engagement happening? When is it time to click the go button? Which, does that make sense? I mean, we talked about it a lot. But can you visualize yeah, kind yeah. of what this is trying to teach you? Teaching you like, okay, the hog is walking in now. Now it is my time because we don't want everyone shooting at me. Seems very simple in on paper, but when it comes to the game, there's a lot to, to account for. And if we hit the go button at the right time in those compositions, we have a lot more value. If we wanted to just sit around, we would just play Mercy. But Mercy, I don't think any Mercy players are going to watch this far. Mercy kind of gets boring. boring. Mercy's kind of boring. Not going to lie. Fuck playing Mercy, right? Um, The number two thing I would say is that speed is your friend. Not I show speed, but speed boost. Speed is your friend. I think you would benefit greatly from just speeding more in general and, and looking at the benefits that you were getting from a speed boost. Um, I mean, the, the doom going in, the, the way that it's going to help you off of walls, which this you could also lump walls into this. Um, the way that it's going to help you take angles and, and aggress on things faster when it, when it matters. All of those things with the speed boost, I think just does more for you. I think what would help you with heals is like, Heals is for AOE. Heals is for my team just got dynamited. Heals is for I have multiple people critical and I want to just try to boost a lot of heals right now. Or heals is I want to get my ultimate faster because multiple people have taken damage. But if it's a single target, you're better off just most of the time just letting your BAP or Kiri or Ana just deal with it. If you have a Life Weaver, things are a little different. But uh, for the most part, the speed boost is where you're going to help single targets out. The heals are going to be helped for everyone. And also engagements. Speed is just better in general. That kind of makes sense. Usually the last thing I say is for people to do like a, a FFA warm up. But I think the most important thing for you, just number three, is just to keep in mind is that walls are your friend. Walls on Lucio. Make sure that you don't overexpose yourself. And this really goes for every character because you had a problem with it on Alari too. Walls and cover are your friend. Try to play off of them and be more cognizant of that. It's something that is very easy to forget about. And we forgot about it a little bit in this game. We didn't always get punished for it, but there were instances where it could have helped us a lot to mitigate a lot of the damage we were taking. The number one thing that I think is going to help you and really any player, any masters player that's ready to hear this is tempo. And if you've watched mm -hmm. some of my other stuff, oh yeah, tempo in masters is every single player. The moment they learn tempo is the moment that they really start becoming a great player. It's, it's the difference between a good and a great player and, and is consistently GM like happened to Karovi happened to a lot of other people on the server. They learned tempo and, uh, they instantly just uh, not instantly, but over time, they, they really started to develop a better understanding of really just games in general. And and I think mm -hmm. if you think that the problem is like, hey, my Ryan, he's not being aggressive enough or like, oh, he's just like feeding off off cooldown. I think that has merit, but I think there's a lot that you can do as Lucio to really influence that that I saw already that we weren't thinking about. So really, mm -hmm. the way that I think about tempo is that it, it, it's a it's an entire symphony 
Sorry that I'm talking in like such crazy words. It's like a symphony of like no, no, how okay. the characters really mesh together in a game and how they want to play in a very simple way. It's what does my team want to do? Like how how does my team want to play? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask because mm -hmm. like based on the comp we have here, we have three people that work well in rush, and then we have Ilari and Soldier. Uh -huh. Soldier wants to take the flank. Ilari can also take a flank, but she's more of a poke. So yep. like. I went Lucio for the Rhine and the Tracer because we are more rush than we are poke. So should I have been just like swapping off at this point? Like, I don't to, think it's a, I don't like... think it, I mean, sure. Like playing BAP is probably just always the better option, Yeah. but that's, but here's the thing in terms of just for the people that don't know what tempo is, like, how does my team want to play with our win conditions? Like, how do we really get the most value? How do I activate myself the most? How do I play mm -hmm. to my win condition? How do I look at what my enemy wants to do in their win condition? And how, how do I do what I need to do to win and force them to not do what they want to do to win, causing me to win and them to lose? That is the basic idea here. And you, again, great questions. You're, 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 on, you're on the right track in terms of like, dude, look at my comp. What the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah. And yeah. Every time, every time I, I load into a match, I always wait for the tank at least in order to like decide on what I'm going to yep. pick. Because the Reinhardt picked first in this game. And so now that we're running like a half-assed rush comp, I'm, I wasn't really sure like, because towards the end, I, I could understand that the Ryan either was not getting enough like follow-up help or he just doesn't understand how rush works. I'm not sure, but. I'm going to be honest, like, dude. Everything I saw, I think you could have completely changed the way you were playing and carry the game. I don't think yeah. it was this Ryan's fault. I mean, obviously, okay, okay the Ryan. Could have probably played a lot better, but I also think you could have carried this game because I think your mechanics are there. Mm -hmm. What I saw though is that you you're on the right track. Like, hey, Ryan wants a speed boost. Ryan wants this, but what you have to understand is that every single character is going to can can be played in every single comp, and you can win mm -hmm. any game in ranked unless you were playing in top 500 where the the innate character values really matter it, it it's not going to make a difference. Yes, mm -hmm. sure, the Ryan usually wants to to pin in, but the thing is. The Rhine has to understand that he has an Alari and he has a soldier and a tracer, which is innately different than the way that you're going to speed him if you have mm. a Reaper or a May. You have to understand yeah. that your playstyle is going to have to change, even just with the team. But I think what you actually struggle with even more is not adapting to what the enemy is throwing at you, because that's what lost mm. you this game. Sure, you. I think you have a basic understanding of tempo and we're going to look at the tempo for your team but there's a lot of changes that are going on in this side of the field that are even more important mm. that you did not react to so yeah, switching to sense. bastion someone switching to may later down the line and we did not react so here's the thing our comp yep we have a reinhardt we have a lucio they don't really have any brawl elements so we will win the brawl so it is okay if you want to speed the rhine in in this specific situation the only thing you have to worry about is this sojourn's e the moment that the E is down and the storm arrows aren't just going to break the shield or kill the Reinhardt, you're good to pretty much just speed in and go on the back line. 100% mm -hmm. true. Even though you don't have a, a Reaper or a Cassidy or a Sojourn yourself, you will probably win that brawl. Like, I can agree with that. The other thing, though, is that, like you said, like, you have low healing. You have an Alari. So... It is, it, you will probably find yourself amping heals a little bit more in this weird niche comp. Like if you had a BAP, you wouldn't really be amping heals. But in this situation, like it's okay if you want to amp heals because your Alari isn't going to be doing as much. But you also have to understand like you can't just ooga booga in all the time. You're still going to have yeah. to wait for cooldowns because of what they have and what you have. Wait for those cooldowns and then we can int in so that we can give our soldier time to find an off angle as well as our tracer to maybe find a duel and then we walk in. You're not really so, playing Brawl. You're really so, not. You're playing like a, a weird dive composition. Honestly, you're playing a Rhine dive composition. Just because you have <laughs> Rhine does not mean you are playing Brawl. And I think that it's a very right. important thing to understand, especially in Ranked, you aren't really playing Brawl. And I think I've the never, fact that you I've thought you were that. playing Brawl is the reason why you lost. Because yeah, they pulled out Brawl. They, they pulled out like J Queen and May, and that's a real Brawl, and that's why you lost. Later. Okay. But you're on the right track. I don't want to discuss too much just for retention purposes. But if you have questions, be, I'm more more than willing to, to answer those throughout the entire thing. So just for like yep. min maxing sake, mm -hmm. should I, like in the future, if we don't have like the most ideal comp and I'm like looking to win, 
Uh huh. I know that I should be looking to improve. Yeah. But like, if I feel like I'm ready to like climb, should I just swap to the most viable like pick for the team comp, or I mean, should I just try that's and part of improving, make what though, I want like, to improve? On? Winning more games, like you're gonna have to improve your decision making and like analyzing a situation to win yeah. a game. The thing is, okay. is I don't think Lucio is a bad pick here. I think mm -hmm. Lucio is one of the best characters to carry and climb on. I also think he's one of the hardest supports to play in the game because he's like probably the most balanced. Like he doesn't have like the most broken stuff going on. He's he's very bare bones and strong, but he's not like dumb like a Kiri mm -hmm. or an Alari or a Baptiste or Moira. If you want to count Fade, because I, I hate that character too, but she's not that good. I mean, we're, we're like, we're uh, I'm not even going to talk about Ana. Ana is busted because Kiri's busted, but okay. You get my yeah. point. Like, I think Lucio, honestly, here, still probably one of the best picks because, like, your team is pretty self sustaining aside from the Reinhardt. If your Reinhardt understands and you communicate with your Reinhardt the right tempo in which to play, he shouldn't take a lot of damage and the fight should be done very quickly because, again, right. you're playing dive. You're really playing dive here. Like, I know it doesn't make sense, but realistically, the way you're going to win this is if you surround the enemy better and, mm -hmm. and you go in at the right times. But let's, okay, crazy. let's see how we take this fight. Again, like, characters are not innately like brawl dive or spam. They, mm -hmm. they, they can be very strong in one area, but like Reinhardt's the one, one of the, one of the characters that is like really not brawl, but people think he is because he has a shield. Really, wow. Junker Queen is like the brawl tank now. And that's why we see Sigma with Brawl, because like Sigma is just like really strong right now with what's good. Like, and mm -hmm. I mean, I could go into a whole conversation about this, but right here, it's like, okay, we're just kind of chilling. And I think the amp wasn't really needed here, but it's like, realistically, if we just hold this space and we let our DPS take angles and not die mm -hmm. like they are, they really shouldn't be dying. Like we are okay to just chill. And just control space because realistically, we want them to come to us on Reinhardt. We don't really need to push them. If we sit on point, eventually they have to come to us. Then we just speed on to them when they're on point. We don't really mm -hmm. have to aggress if they give us point first, which they really shouldn't have when they have a diva that really should be able to contest and some other characters to take angles, but they didn't do that. It's masters. But at first I was like, oh, why, man, like, why is this guy like heal amping so much? But then I realized like, oh, I understand what's going on here. I think your mechanics, though, are, like, better than mine on Lucio. <laughs> Not saying that's really that hard to do because my Lucio mechanics are terrible. But your mechanics well, on Lucio are good. While, while your mechanics are good. It's not going to be the problem. It's definitely a thought process thing. But, like, right here, your Ryan's trying to push the aggression, which I think is fine. You can be a little aggressive. But, like, right here, okay, their Sojourn just used E. Problem is, my Reinhardt doesn't have shield. I don't have amp. We can't go in off of it. But that that is, like, an indication. Like, that's what I'm looking at in this mm -hmm. scenario. But okay, your Ryan just understands. I'm just chilling. There's really nothing to do. He really should chill a little harder, and so should you. Like, literally just hold the space unless there's an opening. Yeah, he's just so low constantly. I feel like yeah, I have to be because push to heal. we're we're trying to play it like a brawl and we're taking too much poke. Mm -hmm. But I think we still mm -hmm. win this fight. Like we, we really should because they shouldn't be. They 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 literally can't win the brawl. The Ryan should never fall here, and and he's not going to because we have speed. We have. Like, good close range damage. And then this is what I like. So, a lot of people, like, this is one of those comps where realistically, if your Ryan just wants to hang out and point, you can deviate and just go with your tracer and take an angle. Mm -hmm. You're playing dive. Go into the back line when the tracer goes in the back line. Mm -hmm. Like, go for those aggressive plays. Like, that right there, I like that. That was good. You, you realize that you could kill a key target. You went for it. Now you're back with your team. I would speed in here. And, yeah. Now that D.Va is sitting on car, she's not going to do anything this whole game until she switches off. Yep, yeah, I think I this is fine. Backed up right here because yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm like, nah. I don't like the beat. It's just not needed. I think you can just chill. Like realistically, you don't need the beat to to speed in and be aggressive here. You just don't. I think I just wanted a beat to keep him alive. That's that was it because he's at. You know, he has a shield. Fifty HP. He has a shield. You killed their D.Va. The fight is won. If he dies, he's bad. Okay. Uh, if he didn't have a shield and the shield was broken, I'd go for it, but no Masters player should be dying there. Mm -hmm. um, it does let him go in, which, I mean, that's true. But the problem is, is now we're also investing goggles and now they have an overclock and the next fight's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. your, your, your beat, it, so here's the thing. In, in, in any Koth map, usually the first team that gets the point gets to 99 and then 
the other team gets all their alts. They use all their alts to win. It's 99, 10 now. And then you have to go back in with your, your beat essentially, or use the beat to win the 99, 99 fight. If you use alts to hold the point, it, it, you're, you're not going to win it hundred zero. Just be aware of that. Here's the thing. Even though that you did use that alt in a place where I don't think you should have, I, I do like that you're still poking to get alt charge. I still think you could poke a little harder here, but Yep, we're just chilling, helping the tracer. This is fine. All right, yep. So here, yeah, Alari just helping her. That That's, again, great call. Uh, and then mm -hmm. here's the thing. Like, your Reinhardt doesn't need the help. He, he's, like, they can't really walk on this guy. They have a Bap Brig. Like, they don't have anything to walk in him. He he will be fine. It is okay to deviate and look for, for picks every now and then when the fight opens up like you did. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it's going to happen more when you don't have a hard brawl composition because these people are going to be taking different types of space that are going to require you to help them over the Rhine. So I should be looking for the 2v1s rather than 1v1s in a I think 1v1s are fine right? in specific situations, but it, it's 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 niche. I can't really tell you like a 100% clear answer there okay. because it, it depends on the situation. Right here, it's just you being way too aggressive and trying to brawl in when you, you get the rally out and then you can just dip. You just went the wrong way. It happens. Um, that, that I think, just positioning-wise, could have been better. But mm -hmm. the main thing I want to look at is just like how are we thinking about the game speed-wise, and how can we go from there? Right there is just yeah, okay, unlucky sojourn moments. Honestly, could have played it better with movement, but we see that. Okay, so now things have changed. Now instead of an Alari taking angles, we have an Ana that's going to be with the Rhine. The thing is mm -hmm. now the Ana is going to be pretty and she's going to be the target. So mm -hmm. um, the thing is, though, that you don't even need to really be just sitting around healing the Rhino game. If he does manage to get like walked on or like his shield gets broken, like now you have a lot more. You have even more agency to be going with your tracer when when mm -hmm. the fight develops. So before I was OK with you just kind of chilling with your Rhine, But now it's like you're really playing dive. You're really got to you really got to be helping the tracer because now she doesn't have the Alari to help her anymore. Diana is going to take over the Rhine. I guess like once I seen the Ana come out, my main goal was to try and get like nano speed boost on the Rhine so he can carry, you know? I feel like that's, that's true, but like now. that's going to be 90% 90, 90 away and we want to try to win the neutral when they yeah. don't really have ults. Especially when we just found a pick. We should win this fight here. And right here, it's like we're still trying to like help out a Rhine when we don't need to. I do like that we start pressuring the Hanzo out. Um, obviously this could have been a lot cleaner, but like that was the right play. I just wish mm -hmm. it would have happened sooner. Mm -hmm. All right. And now we're back with our Ryan just healing him. I don't know if our is dead. I think your is dead, but like that, that again, that's, that's good. I just wish it was a little faster, but okay. Another big switch. What just happened? No more Bastion. sojourn and, and no more Hanzo. They're on tracer bastion. So, so now they're running the real dive comp. Well, now they're running something that's arguably better brawl than you. Because you can't really walk into a Bastion all the time. Until what happens? Turret form. Once you wait for the turret form, then you can go in and brawl. You can't yeah. just Ooga Booga think, brawl. You have to wait until you see what I think that's what, what I would have. call out, too, to the Rhine. Like, I would usually like just call it out for him and just speed. But I think I, I, I would expect him to like go in. I didn't really say anything. Well, Which let's I see how it, it goes out. Something, you know, like let, to, to say go in, no no bastion form, you know? Yeah, let, let's, let's see how it plays out because when I was watching, I it didn't seem that way, but we can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ryan goes in. Right here, it's kind of just like, yeah, bastion turret form, whatever. He gets out at least, but you do not manage to get out. Whenever you see that, your Ryan's starting to back off off of your speed, like you get out too. Uh, I know mm -hmm. you're trying to kill him, but he's not dying when he's got a bat. You, you force out the ammo and leave. Mm -hmm. Um next fight. It's being the team out. Yep. All good. Tracer's gonna have pulse, so we still have to look at her Ana every now and then, but there's a moment in which we actually mess up and look at her a little too much, which I'm I, I was actually interested to see. Because mm -hmm. usually it's a problem that you just don't peel ever, but Yep, I'm okay with the speed, honestly, because they shouldn't have alts and we should be aggressive off of it. The problem, though, that I have with it is that your tracer is dead. So we're trying to win a 4v5. 
I think mm -hmm. the better call here is just to wait for the tracer to come back and then go in, but uh, this isn't, I guess, the worst. It's just, pro it's problematic though, because not only did the tracer die, but also we didn't force out the Bastion's turret form yet. So the, mm -hmm. the beat also is kind of null and void for the Reinhardt. So it's a big thing that we're just not looking at what their comp wants to do, what their tempo is and like how we're gonna mm -hmm. uh, react to it. And if we, and it's literally like, there's nothing mechanically you have to do better. You don't have to become shroud. It's just, Things that you need to think about that aren't going through your mind when you're playing ranked. Okay. Because this makes your Ryan die and makes this fight... It makes that happen. Which just shouldn't oh, happen no. in Masters ever. Like, wh why is Diana dying there? Yeah, okay. Like, why is she even walking in? But we could have avoided this mistake mm -hmm. entirely by just understanding, like, hey, force out the, the, the bastion -y. Or what is it? Shift? I don't know what it is. And then just oh, going in after HP. that. Oh my god. Yeah, but even then, it's like that stuff oh, wow. in GM. Like this guy for sure does not die. For sure, you have you have ammo. You have a rally that w I think was out. You have pulse bomb. It's gonna it, it, you, that that Bastion's not dying. That's just it's going to get melted because you also don't have tracer on your team to to provide pressure. If tracer's alive, then the Bastion dies. But maybe dies. But again, it's just understanding like what they have and. The new powers they have because at the start of the game y'all were y'all were fine and then it went south real quick especially in the third round like really just needed to have that uh reaction to what they were doing but we didn't have it we do still win this point i believe but yeah um on the third round i wanted to know like because i i i don't like swapping um if i don't feel like i i absolutely have to because i yeah. want to get good at certain characters I don't like playing meta 24 7 you know like yeah lucio's pretty strong he's fun so i want to get better at him okay yeah no i i but I, I don't think anything's to do with you switching characters i'm gonna be honest okay i think it's all, all right. just the way that you're approaching the game 100 percent. okay so we, we we lose the uh a key target off the rip right here though this is a problem that i have now i like that you're trying to peel for your ana but the problem is, is that yes, you're, you're peeling for Ana because Ana is crit. You're not peeling mm -hmm. for Ana because she actually needs it at all. Because here's the thing, she just slept the tracer and now I just heard that the Rhine is pinning in. She will be fine, should be fine. Um, the, the, the most that you could do really is just be like, all right, I'm gonna shoot three, two, one and then immediately beeline right back to the Rhine. The amp for the Ana here, not needed. She's going to self-regen. She slept the tracer. Mm. We saw that. This makes, and this is like a really high level decision, but like this is the type of decision you need to make if you're really going to get to GM and climb further into GM. Ana sleeps the tracer here, but we still spend all of our resources to try to help her. When realistically, all she needs is one shot to make it so the combo works. And now my Ryan is in the back line and things are getting really scary right now because... Things could actually turn south. Whereas if we don't even help the Ana here, like, uh, we should be fine. So yeah, she does end up getting the kill. Honestly, I think you could have just shot a burst and then ran away immediately. But I think your Ryan actually is going to die here. Oh yeah, and your Ana still dies anyway. Ha <laughs> ha, and now your Ryan's dead too. <laughs> so it's like... Big picture things are really important to understand. Like, if the, okay, if that Ana didn't sleep the Tracer... I think peeling for her and heal amping is fine. But the fact that she sleeps the tracer gives you the opportunity to actually do even more for your team. And it, we missed out. We I really should lose this, by the way. It's I don't know how we win this. It's just it's pure actually, mechanics. That was actually their diva. Wait, the diva killed her? No, the diva, the diva was the one that got slapped and the tracer killed her. Forget everything I fucking said. <laughs> I thought that was tracer's model. Why would yeah, she sleep so the too. diva? Okay, never mind. I thought so too. Never mind, I'm just <laughs> fucking stupid. But in the situation where that happens, I think switching the focus and helping the Rhine is still the better play. Because she should be fine. It's the same idea though. Like, you can go over, you can fucking shoot the diva, and then just go from there. Especially when you hear a Bastional. I'm pretty sure that. I mean, maybe she needed speed boost. That's just a really hard situation. Uh, don't even worry about it. <laughs> like, that's a, like a. That's something that we would talk about in like a. A VOD top for like 500. tier two, like not even top 500. <laughs> That's just like unlucky. That's just a hard decision. Right. Okay. What's more important though, that I really want to hone in on is, okay, look at the changes that are being made up there. 
while this round mm -hmm. develops. They now have a May Cassidy. You are not winning this brawl. They have a brawl comp. They just do. It, I know they have a D.Va, but that doesn't really decide whether or not it's brawl. They have four other brawl characters. They're out brawling you for sure. Like four. So how would I? Sure. How would I play this as Lucio then? Like, do we just poke from now on and play for all? So here's the thing. It's like, you you understand dive here is like okay tracer's gonna take one angle the soldier's gonna take another angle my ryan's probably gonna take whatever main angle there is mm -hmm. and your job is to either support this tracer and yeah honestly your job is to support the tracer and whatever she wants to kill and just go okay. with her or speed the ryan in whenever your tracer is about to take the duel and try to win there mm. and that's gonna and that'll help it's either or so but, it goes back to the surrounding thing where we yes. just overall overwhelm them by surrounding okay. because that's that's how dive is played you surround sense. them force out cooldowns until there's an opportunity and then you take advantage of that opportunity that that is the comp you're playing you're not playing brawl you have you have three dive characters and two kind of brawl characters but ryan is ryan is honestly better played in dive nowadays hot take but i'll stand by it wow I don't think Ryan's a good brawl I'd, tank never anymore. I thought I'd hear that in my lifetime. I, I just don't think he's a good brawl Ryan tank anymore. <laughs> I don't think he's good brawl. He's he's a weird. He's a good hybrid brawl, but not good hard brawl. Because he he needs to do like a little bit of both, which we'll see here. So okay, Ryan gets. Here's the thing. Right here, I'm imagining like you're probably calling to Ryan like, all right, I got speed soon. Let's go. Let's go. Three, two, one. Where in reality, like what we need to be thinking is where in the hell is our tracer? Where is our soldier? Where is our tracer? Actually. At this point, when I seen the May, I was just uh, calling for Ryan. I was telling him, uh, don't be scared of wall. I'll just speed you around it if if it's not like cutting you off. Just don't push past choke. That's what I told him. And we, cause like I realized like the May cast is gonna keep us from like going in anyways. But I didn't know they had a life weaver Kiriko at, at that point. So I was just like scared more of the May than I was anybody else. So I was just telling him like, don't be scared of wall. If you get walled, I'll just speed you around it. I mean, the big thing That's I'm it. saying here is like, we're playing this close up and, and trying to pretty much take an engagement when our tracer is still like trying to find a way into the back line where our soldier or mm -hmm. honestly, even you should be over here like poking and, and trying to force them actually in here into this pink circle. Um, Whereas right now I we're try, trying to just head on. I think I tried doing that with the cast a couple of times, but he just destroys me like it I might was, just be a timing really issue then the it might be a timing okay. issue then or the fact that we maybe just need to play with the tracer but let's see right so they don't actually punish you on a pretty decent wall mind you um the thing is we're still really trying to play front to back and we're shooting into a dm that we really don't need to shoot into uh and somehow you get away with it which i think is interesting i think the speed here is fine they don't have a bastion to really stop you from doing anything or any like real damage so I don't know. That was a weird fight, but really should have lost that. Um, <laughs> I think it's because they didn't have a wall. And okay, now now things That's are really something. interesting. Now they have a J Queen. Like you're not winning this. You're okay. not winning this brawl. She will run over you every time without fail. And we did not react to it. Like right now, really, all you need to do is just kite out her shout, and then we can take a brawl if we really want to. But instead, we try to meet it. And I mean, I like the boop idea. But like, here's the thing that what we just did right here, I think is fine. Every fight, uh, maybe not like amping out, but still just running away from her and trying to take an angle. Your tracer's mm -hmm. taking angle right now, which is good. Right now would be the time to push because your tracer is behind. But now she's forced out. She really needs to communicate that. It's really hard to see her. But yeah, I think holding like I said, holding no a one, choke is just not the play right now. No one else made any comms all game, so I, mean, I was just and that's trying fine. my best to, you know, call engages. I, I think what's more important is just to be cognizant of what's important and maybe just give her a look every now and then. But even more so, mm -hmm. like, why don't don't hold a choke against a J Queen May? Invite mm -hmm. them, invite them to play into the point. Invite them to have to walk around here and give the soldier angle here, or give your tracer here. Like it's it's so much easier to surround them here okay. than when we're going into their spawn. We, we don't in this in this whole idea is like we want to use speed to run away we are really never engaging we're just buying time for our soldier to get value and for our tracer to set up mm. a pick it's because it, we're not brawl we're dive yeah now that i look at it yeah it would make sense for them to take more middle space so we can get behind them yeah right now they're kind of like it's different if i have a reaper main then there's nothing yeah. but going in but that's not the case here that makes sense 
Yeah, your Ryan tries to get out. I like the speed boost idea. Honestly, I beat this right now. I beat this right now. Shoulder if if I if here's the thing. I'm looking at this. Their J Queen is back here. Their whole team's right here. I I had a speed boost that I can I, I was using. Arguably could have held on to it a little more. If I'm going to beat this fight, it is now. Like I think I think if I beat, I secure a pick and I probably can win this fight. Like this would be a great time to beat. Because there's no, really nothing else you gotta beat other than maybe the J Queen alt. But we waited a really long time, and I think we might lose this fight because of it. Or just lose a lot of people we didn't need to. But like if we're going to beat, now is the time, or you're never gonna beat for the rest of the fight. Because like it's effectively a 4v4 if we just walk in, because Queen is she she doesn't have speed boost. She's out of the fight. Is now that would our be the tracer time. in front of us right there. That's your can't, tracer. Can't tell. Yeah. What a weird spot to be in. And it's another thing where it's like my tracer is ready to go in with a pulse bomb and be aggressive. I should beat this. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, it, it, me right here. I'm beating this nine, nine times out of ten. Because we're just kind of sitting around doing nothing, and thankfully our tracer pops off, but. It's so much harder to win this now because we didn't take an advantage of that split second decision. Now we beat. Which, I don't know. I guess this is still fine, but in a higher level scenario, I think the Tracer arguably dies there. Or the Suzu is, is weighted and they, they Suzu the pulse, but then we have to push in after that. that that's the thing. Which, I mean, like, she died as a byproduct of that. Like, realistically, if, if I think just a second earlier makes such a difference there. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, your Ryan's just going too hard when we didn't have that much of an advantage. She should die there, but, okay, you going in to save him is bonkers, but it works. <laughs> wow. Um, I thought so, too, after I did that. I was like, wow, I can't believe I survived that. J Queen destroys me here. And then right here, it's a lot of just like, we're trying to play really close and brawl out against someone that like, has a really hard time closing distance. And But once she does, she kind of just rolls you. Taxing back Tracer would be nice here and not like just inting in. But here again, like why, why is this the play? Like, like, okay, they have a May. And you were walking into a tight choke. What do you think's about to happen in the next five seconds? Take your guesses, boys. Like, it's... They don't even try to hide it is my problem. And why is your soldier here? He should be flanking. I was... Or, or I was here. I was thinking, like, we go in all at the same time. So if we get walled, it's like... Okay. You know, it, we're all together anyways. That's why I would call out the engages. That's great. But I guess that's more of, like... A tight coordination thing because I don't think that's what happens. Okay, but why would that even not work if you did that? If the May times it good, yeah, she can cut. No, our, let's say that she doesn't time it good, but we all are in here in this circle. Why is that okay, still yeah. really bad? We're so stuck with the Junker Queen in a May. You have a Junker Queen May Cass with a Life Weaver in the back ready to pull someone out and Suzu online, and your Tracer is nowhere to be found. We are not winning Brawl. Why are we forcing Brawl? There's no reason to. It doesn't matter if you do the cool mechanical thing and everyone's coordinated. It's just wrong. It's just a bad play. So let's see how mm -hmm. this plays out because I'm pretty sure you guys fall over. Or Master's Magic happens and you win anyway. <laughs> or you get, or he hits a slam. It Suzu's immediately. We're walled off. And what just happened? My Ryan's dead. <laughs> Your Ryan's not dead somehow, which is just... Oh, but then the life, dude, literally everything I talked about happened. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a shit show. But imagine if the tracer maybe went down this angle, which I mean, you can't control or the, or the soldier went over here this way. And then me and the Reinhardt went this way. Cause I mean, what are they going to do? Wall me off from my Reinhardt. I just wall, wall right above. And, and maybe the Ana like plays over here and looks for a backline nade. Like imagine how different that is than... Let's all run. Oh, I got walled. Oh, my Ryan almost dies. Oh, they Suzu'd. Oh, my life weaver. It's still a terrible execution from their team, but like just the fact that they're at least trying to play their characters correctly is making this fight such an uphill battle for you. 
And your tracer dies because she got there late. Because we didn't time it right. And now your whole team's dying. It's just a tempo thing, and you're, you're playing into what they want you to do in a style that is really hurting you. Like, it, it would really help you out a lot if you just started the fight on a flank with a tracer if you wanted to, and then go back to the mm. Rhine, or start with the Rhine and rotate over to the tracer and not really sticking on one. Okay. Because the Reinhardt, he doesn't really need the speed boost when he can just pin on them. They don't have a speed boost to run away, and they almost want him to pin on them so like there's no need for the speed in wow. it's more so a speed out that. i've never like thought that it would be possible like for a rhine to be bad into brawl but then I, I completely forgot junker queen is like better than him in every way in brawl junker queen Plus, arguably sigma arguably sigma right now because of his hands oh, to stop man. a bastion and, and his all that is rock, fault, like then. like Arguably, yeah, Reinhardt is just, he's just like a spam brawl hybrid. And then in these compositions, he's just a, a pin bot for, for dive. He's just an initiator. And he's not even good at that anymore because none of them die in one hit on their team except for the squishy. Yeah, because they have, they have pull and they have Suzu and they have, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, ice block, to be, to be fair though, the, the pin, HP. the pin still does get a lot of value if everyone just collapses on it, but we're, we're playing this like brawl. Yeah. You're playing it oh, like brawl man. too it's like it's That's mind rough. numbing like wow this is what overwatch is now and i don't love it yeah. but like this is this is overwatch right here they push a little bit too far but i mean they still get the rhyme because we're, we're we're literally walking into a brawl we aren't even trying to set up it's losing you the game so easily here they don't even have speed boost and they can still just walk on you because queen has shell so it's like you, the Rhine doesn't need the speed. The Rhine needs you to surround the enemy so his pin does something. And right there, if we're it, like, the thing is, Tracer's been dying like that all game because she doesn't have someone else to help her go in. Typically, it would be a ball or like monkey pressuring a backline so that the mm. cast doesn't just get to shoot her for free or take the duel. Mm -hmm. But now she doesn't have that. So she needs you to either go Brig and pack her or just be there with her and, and get on a backline okay. or, or create pressure. The Ryan will be fine. He has pin. He has the, the get out button, which he shouldn't initiate with it unless like we are going hard on something. But now the whole team naturally just sees Ryan and says, let's play with him. <laughs> Soldier, you shouldn't be with Ryan. You should be flanking. You should be surrounding. You walk into a choke again and get walled, but she misses the wall. So now you can win the fight. Oh, but we missed I it. Called, I called to go in here. This was yeah, which I think right is here. good because we forced out cooldowns. It was not orthodox in positioning, but we did force cooldowns. Uh, but our Ryan missed pin and we we're visoring from this angle and it's just really awkward. And we should lose it. Yeah. It as well. Execution Please. still just wasn't there because even our initial positioning, like even when you have a nano visor, it's, it's an uphill battle. It's so hard to win just from a tempo perspective. Like, all they want to do is just sit on top of each other. They do that better than your team does, except you guys are trying to do the same thing and you're just losing. You're just losing because of it. And and what makes it even worse is now they're like, wait a minute, what if we just went bashed? <laughs> and you guys don't <laughs> even think win a single, like get a single kill almost. This, this third point is brutal. I wanted to make it work so badly, man. I miss Brawl. You still can't I make it work. Brawl. It's just not... It's just, it's just not, it's not brawl the way it used to be in Overwatch 1. It wasn't that I Ryan think, yeah, brawl tank. I think that's what I'm stuck in is like, I'm thinking Ryan is still like the best brawl. And he's I'm thinking, like, he's he, the worst. He can just like, he's yeah, the worst I brawler. I don't, I don't know. I think he, I just need a mindset change off of Overwatch 1. I think he might be even worse than Romacha right now. He's definitely worse than, yeah, he's just not good. He's just not a good brawler right now, but he he's very good at being able to play really any tempo and ranked but you need to understand that to utilize him effectively and i think your reinhardt player kind of understood that at this point but the team was not with it bonkers needed to to definitely flank a little more and yet again we are trying to take them close we are not waiting to force out their cooldowns aka their shouts their walls their their turrets we're just thinking let's go Force out the cooldowns first and then go in if you're even going to try to brawl it. I just wanted to take like as much space as possible before they start pushing us back. So it's like. And that's fine, but I think 
I think effectively the space you really want to be taking is like this 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 choke here and just chilling, and then letting mm -hmm. letting maybe your soldier stay there or your Ana even so, stay in there, and then so the choke at the here. the stairs where the bastions are at is that like just what are you dead, gonna do there? Dead zone in our comp, like, like really, like if, if you like walk in really there, you're just gonna get walled choke. and you're just gonna die. No, it's it's for them to come to us. Like if we hold them there, wouldn't it be like a lot harder than if we were to play in the open? The open Why? Okay, uh, so here's the thing. You're here? saying if we hold here, it's harder for yeah. them. No. Like if we hold just behind it, just like we're at the bottom of the. No, stairs because you're closer you know? to them. You're you're right next to the queen to just walk on you. Whereas okay. if you stand here, not only is it harder for them to walk to you, they have to invest a, a shout. Realistically, they should have to to get to you. You also can just either walk backwards, walk to point. You have so many more avenues. And, and by doing that, where does that leave them when they do eventually walk on you? When they do actually close the distance and they're forced to walk on point here, There's your Ana can now up. rotate over here. Your, your soldier can stay here. Your tracer now okay. gets an angle on here. Hell, you could speed okay. your Reinhardt up here. And now they are in this circle on point surrounded by you. And now they're screwed. They, they, they okay. didn't kill you with their initial engagement. They have no cooldowns. And now what happens is every angle can converge on one target if you so choose, and you win the game. Wow. Never you like, like that. The thing is with dive, and the thing is, this is why Lucio's hard and ranked, because you almost never really get a brawl comp. You don't really get one is that this is so methodical that you have to think about and just understand way before the game even happens that once you hit masters it, it you hit a wall and you don't really know why because no one's really thinking on each side but they have the mechanics of gm players they mm -hmm. just don't think because they don't really know but if you think and they don't you win you can play any character in any comp in masters but you have to understand the tempo and switch your play style accordingly. Right here, we're still walking into a, a May, getting getting axed by J Queen, and it's kind of like. Yeah, I was trying to save uh, him, but I guess. The thing is, it's like cool. you know how you save him from a from a Queen axe. You just make it so that she just can't close distance on you with shout. You would mm -hmm. boop the Queen before in the Queen v Queen because you're also playing Queen. You want to still be close. But mm -hmm. that's not the case anymore. You still want to boop her if she gets close, but you don't want to like kill yourself for it. Instead, just speed out, especially when she doesn't have Lucio. Just get away. And it's like these VODs are always the most painful for Masters players because it's like, oh, wow, this is really simple. <laughs> and we just lost because of this dumb, like, yeah. It's just the, oh, okay, yeah, wow. I didn't think of this before, but it is pretty, yeah. This is why all the top players are like, dude, Overwatch is so easy. Why does everyone struggle? Cause it's like, we've been, we've learned this like f six years ago. And and it really makes such a big difference in team fight games, specifically team fight games. It's so important, but all right, we should be speeding our team back and we shouldn't be all walking. Okay, so, so here's the thing. Th they, if they had all five, they should be holding you in here. They want to fight uh... there. Okay. That is good for them. It is a closed location that is hard to get out of, and there's not a lot of angles out there. They should not be fighting in the open. They should lose right now when they're walking backwards because they lost their Bastion. They so should when lose. You're in, when you're in true brawl, you want to be holding choke points. But when yes. you're in this sort of you're not on brawl. hybrid pose, you're not on yeah, brawl. You're not on brawl. You're on dive. You're on dive. That's what yeah, I'm trying to say. Okay. You're not playing okay. brawl. Because you see a Reinhardt, that's great, buddy. <laughs> you're not on brawl. Look at what's going on here. Even okay, and here's Reinhardt the thing. Equals brawl. Even if you are on brawl here, even if you are running like, I don't know, a sojourn, uh, I don't know, like a let's say a sojourn cast. Like they're kind of good brawl characters. If their team still has the better brawl, you still will prefer to play in the open and force them onto you, so that you can do wow. damage. Use your advantage that you have, the sojourn and the cast that have range. Use that advantage to poke them. And then when the brawl inevitably does happen in those compositions, you will win the brawl because of the poke that you have already done. That's why Rhine is like kind of a brawl character nowadays is because you would use the Rhine to, to activate a Cassidy or a Bastion to get that early damage while the J-Queen comp is rotating in so that by the time that you get there, 
The J Queens has already taken so much damage from the Bastion that you then win the brawl. It's like a spam brawl hybrid. That's the tempo. That's why you, you can't just run in because you have Lucio. You can't just do that. You have to look at the situation, <laughs> what they have, and then react. Okay. Man. I know that's a lot. This has been, uh, yeah, this has been. And it's it's very review. deep and it's hard to understand. And that's why this is for masters players. Because if I try to teach this to a platinum player, they'd be like, well, what is Reaper? I'll be like, what does Reaper want to do? Well, Reaper wants to flank and, and Reaper, he, he, uh, no, Reaper has shotguns. <laughs> Reaper wants to get in the face. That's, that's the important thing. Right. And that's okay that plat players aren't ready for this yet because they still need to learn those basics. But once you learn all those basics of what the characters really excel at doing and you get to masters, this is what gets you over the wall. Starting to put it all together. Let's keep watching your team get completely dumpstered on because it's funny. <laughs> okay, they start backing up for some reason and your Ryan walks point. I didn't call him to do that. <laughs> Why not take high ground? <laughs> Why not take this angle here and maybe look for a pin on the back line? Um, why not just like hold space and wait for your soldier to take this angle? Like so many things that could have been better I, than let's take a brawl against the Junker Queen in May. Yeah. I think he was just getting frustrated. Like I, I mean, yeah, I can see it. Frustrated at this point. Yeah, and he was just. And let, let's go on point. Let's get walled. But here's the thing: you guys still. Oh, I, I mean, you don't win this fight. You almost managed to do it. Um, you had the best chance here. And yeah, now it just falls apart because your Ryan's dead and you don't have a tank to really start the brawl. And then we take the fight in here. It's epic, bro. It's like exactly <laughs> what you don't want to do. Do do not do this. All right, and see, now that they have their whole team, they're playing smart and they're trying to hold you close. Uh, except Masters players sometimes have like a... Oh, look, a squirrel. ADHD. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't want to say it, but... Oh, look, a squirrel. There's a tracer. <laughs> and for some reason, they, they, <laughs> they let the tracer do that. Uh, but that, see, that, that that's exactly what you want to do, though. Like, you, you want to take the angles because then they have to respect the fact that it's there and someone has to look at it. And, and like, imagine if the Tracer's going this way. The Soldier's over here. Viana and the Rhine are almost, almost playing with them, almost baiting the J-Queen to walk in here just to walk out. And mm. then, like, Lucio, I don't know, is somewhere else. And now, and now Tracer's forcing point. And then they have to run backwards, and now you get to walk in, and now it's all, oh, they're like, oh, shit, we just got played. I should pretty much, at this point, like you said earlier, be playing with the Tracer, forcing them to split their attention, and allowing the Ana and Ryan to yeah. bully the Junker Queen. And it's you don't necessarily have to play with just the Tracer either. I just think that's an option. You could also help the Soldier take this angle over here. Uh -huh. um, you could still play with the Reinhardt. Like, if they had a Lucio... I think the Ana is the one that should be flanking. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Actually, honestly, in general, I don't even think you're the one that's flanking. I just think that support players are kind of dumb. Sorry, guys. We're dumb. Uh, and they're not going to take the initiative. To, like, honestly, your Ana should be flanking with your soldier this whole game, and you should just be playing with Ryan. Oh, wow. Because here's the thing. What damage is this Reinhardt going to take? A lot. No, he's not going to take any if you play right. Oh, if, if he doesn't, like... Yeah, pin in like... Like, here's here. the thing, right? Like, yeah. this whole thing before, like, oh, why don't you want to play up here? Well, okay, if the Reinhardt and you were standing here with a shield, what damage is this Reinhardt going to take? True, if you just run true, backwards, true. True, the shield true. takes damage. But by the time they waste all those cooldowns, now they have an Ana on the flank, nading behind them, and the Reinhardt gets to pin in on an, onto an anti and swing. Like, that's just bonkers value, bonkers value. <laughs> wow this is this is amazing vod review like i'm learning how to play ana too at the same time that's crazy like, ana really shouldn't be standing behind a reinhardt in this situation because what is it it's dive she shouldn't be playing next to a winston wow. she should be taking an angle to find the nade because that's literally all she needs to do she needs to find a nade against a comp that it's pretty easy to hit a nade against early force out a suzu then do it again wow we win the fight but instead, we're trying to like force this brawl that is just not working. I'm sw I swear, if every Masters player learned this, because <laughs> like, dude, we're, we are stacking as four inside <laughs> against a G Queen. Oh, it's it's. It, I, I would be so livid. Games, <laughs> if I could, I would have a lot of fun. 
That's how I play it. No one character in ranked is one type of playstyle. I don't know. There's just a correct way to play the game, and it's through tempo. Because it's the most versatile. And it, it accounts for everything. How you use all your abilities and your positioning. But it's a hard concept. All right. We got beat. We got slam. And your Kenji just dies. Yeah. Okay, GG's. I'm sorry. I would, I'd be so pissed. It's a big slam, but... Yeah, this is just mental boom. This is just mental boom. Men it's mental boom. Uh, so much stuff is going wrong this fight, but it's because no one wants to play the game anymore <laughs> in this lobby. And you can kind of just tell on your team. It's just very messy. It, it, this, this, this is just very messy. And usually that's just a mental problem. Okay, let's see where your team holds. I'm really interested about this one. Right now, I think you should be speeding back your team from spawn. Very important. You are down in Ana. Very important character to have against that comp if you're playing dive. They're also on Hanzo now, so that's something to worry about. But instead, we heal amp the Rhine. And well, we could have just sped the Ana back to maybe get Nano built that again because it's faster ult to build anyways. And we are holding them inside. We are holding them inside. Let's see how this goes, team. Waiting for the May wall to come out here. And there's the ult. Because we decided to stand right next to her. Now imagine, right? Imagine if we forced her to use this ult from here across the bridge where her whole team isn't just right there ready to go. And then we just ran away. Mm -hmm. And actually just blew up the Jake Week. She's dumb. Completely different fight. But instead we just decided to hold this choke for what? You know? We're not playing Brawl. We're playing Dive. And you know what? I said it a million times, but it's important that we learn this. And yeah, we all fall down and the game over. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe yeah. I'm just stuck in that overwatch one. Like the thing is, this could be applied to anything, dude. If they have better, we can, I didn't mute. Um, if you have better, like brawl than their dive, then you want to do the other side of the equation. If you, the, the situation with who has better brawl, even though both teams have like brawl characters, it still all applies this whole idea. And I know it's like the only thing we really talked about, but it's really just tempo. It, it really, mm -hmm. that, it, 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 it's everything. It's, it's everything that you need to worry about. It's like, what does my team need to do to win? What does their team need to do to win? How can I play my character that I'm playing right now to the best of my ability to help my team win and deny my enemy team from winning, AKA making them lose? How can my team win forcing their team to lose? Don't play the way that they wanna play if they want to close the distance on you and they want to brawl on you and, and force you in a closed space, why would you ever fight in a closed space? Why would you do that? It doesn't make I sense. Just, I thought Ride was better, but I guess not. <laughs> Ride is but, not the better I, I mean, player. here's the thing. If, if, now that you know the questions that I, I, I asked out loud and, and answered, you're yeah. going to have a better idea of like what's going on in a game and really what you need to do. And, yeah, and, so. and locating like, okay, these are two different comps. Even when you're watching like, well, I was going to say Overwatch League, but like any competitive circuit, when you watch them, you got to be like, okay, what's different here? Like it's the same SIG. Like for example, it was like SIG, May, Bastion, Bap, Lucio. But then a, a variation of that was instead of Lucio, you'd run a Lari. Okay, why is USA running a Lari on Circuit Royale instead of Lucio? Oh, they're not playing to really brawl as hard. They're playing to use the long sight lines with Alari to try to get a pick or find damage before the brawl happens to hopefully win right. that. That's why they're doing that. Let's see how yeah, they play their tempo. Out. Yeah. yeah. Like now that you understand tempo, you can actually watch competitive play and actually get something out of it too. Mm. And that's why uh, it's You like, know, that's crazy. I've never heard any like VOD reviewers talk about this. 
it's the most it's, important it's thing. It's always like positioning and and call cool, or cooldown management, cooldown usage, things like that. But I've never heard anybody talk about tempo. But does it not all come down to cooldowns, to positioning, to how you play the game? It does. If you understand tempo, you understand everything. You I've never you heard understand of, of everything. Like, I've never heard of like. Well, I I think I have heard of it, but maybe I've heard, like just ignored it. But like listening or watching both teams on what we both do and need need to do, I've never taken that into account. You know. And once you do, so, like, like you're gonna start. Yeah. Playing, you're gonna play with more on your mind, and you'll improve more because you know what's going on more. Oh my god. It it. There's I'm telling so you straight up. Tempo. To think about. Tempo, I didn't learn this until I w joined attack mode and Poke taught me, like, hey, dude, tempo. And I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell? I have so much to think about. Like, this this changes right. the game entire, And it changes every game, too. It changes Siege. It changed, uh, well, I can't really talk about it, but Project Loki. Um, it changes League. It changes every single game. But no one thinks about it. That's crazy. The only one that doesn't really change from my knowledge, well, I guess it kind of changes Apex too, but. Valorant? Uh, yeah, it can change Valorant too. If you have like a Neon mm -hmm. compared to like, I don't know, like a chamber that just wants to sit with an op sometimes. Although I don't really mm -hmm. know a whole lot about that game because I haven't played it a lot. But tempo will always be important in any game that you play. Even like Baldur's Gate, it, it oh matters. It, every it, Tempo to every single game will help you but you, the thing is, it's developing that initial understanding of how a game works first is really difficult. It's it's a, it's very hard. So honestly, like, usually I do a two and a three. The three I'm just gonna say is like to keep doing like an FFA warm up or like try hard FFA so that you can get better at like Lucio mechanics. Like that'll always help you. Mm -hmm. um, try hard FFA is usually open around like 5 p.m. 5.30, anytime before like the six to eight scrim blocks, you're gonna find try hard FFAs. So that's a good time to go for it. Um, number, I don't know, number two, it's like you could beat at better times. But the thing is, is like, what's gonna help you beat at better times? Understanding what the hell is gonna be coming at you and what really you need to do. Mm. So to if the you point see where like, it's like a JQ coming in at you and your tracers in the back line. You got to understand that. It's like, sure, is, sure. Like, you know, for example, they might have like Sig Flux and like Hanzo combo. Like, okay, I typically want to beat for that. But let's look at the situation here. Did they use it last fight or not? Or uh, what is it? Um, what was I literally just about to say? Uh, yeah. Did they use it like a fight ago or two fights ago? And now you have it. You think you can push a win to get the, the second checkpoint before they're going to use mm. the flux on you, then the flux loses value because you're not holding as strong of a position. Or like oh, maybe okay. maybe we only have beat and they have Sig Flux and Hanzo Dragon, which a beat might not even win us that. Maybe instead of just holding on to it and we have like a brawl and they have a spam, maybe we hide. We hide close. We, we bait them in with like, I don't know, like an Ana. It looks like it's a free kill. And then we speed around the corner with beat and just try to win fast before they even get to use their alts to Whoa. get up map control tempo changes everything because sure like you could just hold on to the beat because that's the quote-unquote right thing to do but like overwatch is a situational game and when you play in masters and you have players that are starting to actually like really play and they're like cognizant of what's going on not saying the metal players aren't but much more so you gotta start thinking ahead of the game Dude, and that's what makes it, Overwatch fun. That's why I played Overwatch for seven years. That's why you have all these people still playing, even though the Path to Pro system is dog shit, because no other game makes you think that much, aside from, like, chess. I feel like coming from, like, gold throughout the years, like, climbing all the way to GM, it's like a lot of the things that you learned in the lower ranks change. And when you, when you like, when you come from, like, hard... Uh, basically making those rules that apply in the lower ranks if you keep them in the higher ranks it it, it kind of like stonewalls you so like if you were to say like oh i'm gonna save beat for this alt well that now that's not the right thing to do at at the higher ranks you got to think about different things you know i like, mean here's the thing it's not that you shouldn't hold beat for some alts it's more so like what is the situation what is the context yeah so like, here's like, the thing. even never... even in in plat tempo still wins you the game it's just that you're not yet ready 
to start thinking about that because you're start you're gonna start thinking too much and it's it's not yeah. it's not about like what is my team playing it's more so like what person is falling short what job are they trying to do how can i help them do that job to win the game like that yeah. is that is the tempo I way of thinking never, through yeah. plat that's the tempo way of thinking like... through plat and bronze and all those things but the thing is is like that's crazy i'm not gonna tell that to a plat player because the thing is they're still making so many mechanical mistakes themselves that's mm -hmm. what they need to focus on they'll get to that point eventually where tempo is it's time for them to learn that and then they can they can go but it's like getting to the top five percent is the first step I made that video on my alt channel. Getting to there is the, the first step. The next step to get to the top 1% is the actual, like actually playing the game, which I know mm -hmm. sounds toxic, but it's reality. It's like actually playing the game. Yeah, I know, the we, only thing that yeah. would hold us back is a lack of teamwork now. Yes, and in ladder, we, I, I, okay, I'm gonna be honest. The, the thing that I'm scared of is this Moira player because I have no clue who this Moira player is. No clue who they are. And mm. I mean, their name is, Ehor XD, I, at least that's what I think. So <laughs> maybe it's Nolan that's gonna flank because he's memeing, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, we I'm not sure who it is either, but they were flaming me afterwards. I mean, it was oh, kind right. of deserved, but like I don't take blame from anyone. So, all right, yeah, I like that we're starting off with just poking. This is a good thing, a good habit to make. Oh, what? I don't really think that's your fault. I think Zara just kind of got. <laughs> got junk ratted on unlucky um really yeah, the problem about like yeah, whether or not i should be with my genji right there and then i was thinking it's better for us to be stacked so then we can just rush the sigma yeah honestly my, my my problem here is just like not we just waited way too long to take a go button but we also just lost our genji so like what go button do we really have yeah um, yeah the thing is with Junker Queen, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this, but it, this is also just understand like this is also for everyone else watching at home that might not know. It's like if we have a Junker Queen and we're not hitting the go button and we're giving this sig and, and junk time to just like poke stuff like that's going to happen. So let's see how we can change that for the next fights. Maybe when we do have the full five, they don't mind. We, we forced out bells. So this is actually like still fine. We're chilling. Honestly, in this moment, I think we just speed the genji back from spawn and everyone just dips instead of this weird like half and half because we're kind of just giving their moira alt charge for free without like a real engagement where is the genji he's finally back now and i guess it's like that's like a small critique but this is also ladder so i don't mind you looking for your own value because like yeah i think that, everyone I defaulted to turning their brains off and building alt charge yeah i mean that's just that's just ladder so i i can't really flame it but if this was like really a team play setting i'd probably just be trying to speed lucio back but um dude this junk's okay this is wow this really is just modern day ranked like these players are not playing to their potential what time what time did you play this game at i think i find that interesting like was this in like 2 a.m type q or is this like after scrims no it was decent scrims? hours before yeah, it was scrims? like uh before before okay so this is like people four. like warming up for their blocks too so i don't know i feel like i feel like the path to pro players don't really care about their rank anymore and they're really just playing to warm up which i think is interesting at least that's what i get gained from it from like the people that i know that still play they're just kind of chilling it's not as yeah. competitive like as you'll never get a hard calming lobby anymore it's kind of sad it I is know. very sad yeah honestly yeah right here i don't mind that you're trying to build your beat i just think it's when you were playing a comp like this and you have the the high profile players that you have i think speeding back is worth it personally but like i don't think this is necessary like a mistake or a, a mistake in general or like you losing you the game because this is ladder at the end of the day yeah i do think that's something i gotta work on now i end up just like ooh, uh, monkey mode let's build all because realistically, like when I'm botting a GM player or a, I'm not even a GM, like a top 500 player now, I'm more so thinking like, how can we get better for team play? How can we just like enable people that are sentient? Because these are like, these are named players. I know not a lot of people probably know that because this game's competitive scene is kind of mid, but <laughs> um, is that a good speed? Is everyone ready for that speed? I don't even know. Like Sarah's on the flank. You're speeding. Honestly, I think that's fine. What I, I here's the thing that I never because I'm never I've never played on a brawl team. I don't know what comes first. I thought the shout comes first and then the speed amp comes out, but not at the same time. But I might be just 
smoking on that one. So I'm going to have to think on that. It's I, it's one after the other. Um, But again, we're in ladder. So no one's 3-2-1-ing. So how can I really be mad at you here for that? Okay. I mean, I like the idea because like if you hit that beat, you probably win the fight. But like this. Wow, man. It's just this is kind of saddening because this is just. The, the reality of modern day ranked it's like i think your comp is better than the enemy teams but because theirs is just more like do your own thing it's it's succeeding yeah that amp though was kind of troll yeah i i think if we're really going to nitpick here and i mean you're at a point where we, we have to really nitpick because that's like the level we're at but it's that's like really what makes the difference is making the most use out of the speed and everyone's going in at the same time, but we haven't even built DPS alts yet. This is just a rough game, but okay. Frost has switched to, to Arisa so he could live. I think he's, he's the only one getting focused. That's not really your fault. I don't, I don't know if that's anyone's fault other than the coordination. Honestly, this whole time, I just think, mm, well, we do have an Arisa now, so the comp does slow down at least a little bit. If we had a J queen. I, I would be wondering why we're not speeding on something. And honestly, I think that might be like what I what like if there was something you could do to carry this game, I think it's like locating. I mean, who do you even locate at this point? Like the Junkrat forcing out. I think out. it might just be enable my uh, Sojourn and take a hard flank. Yeah, it's they either. Really yeah, I, I can see that because the thing is that like what I was thinking is like locate maybe like a support or something to walk on like a junk or to force. But everything's so like just they just don't die. So. Honestly, at this point, yeah, you might be onto something now that we're on the Orisa, not the J Queen. It, it really might just be like to help the Genji flank or help the Sojourn flank. Honestly, maybe even the Genji. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at this point, it's really desperation. Yeah. Because as soon as we made that swap, that plus the ult econ, and we're just like super in the depths. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we're not going to build alt soon. It's just kind of like, yeah. Damn, that comp you're playing against is so boring. Ugh, there's like nothing to, to even get on here. But okay, Zinnia opens the pick. But now there's a tire in the back line. Okay, but okay, yep. See, uh, yeah, no, you, you have you have the right idea. When we don't have the, the person that needs to walk in as hard as she used to, I think supporting the DPS is the right call. I think you're 100% right about that. Yeah, we should win this fight. Yep, okay. I find it very funny that Moira is flaming you, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything. We haven't we seen the second round yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, word, word. Yeah. I mean here it's like Zero is just like Look, uh, I don't I don't wanna uh, flame Zero because like that dude's better than me one hundred percent. Like I, I will never yeah. touch tier two at the level that he has touched tier two. Or I actually don't Isn't Zero playing calling all heroes? Or am I thinking of another Z? I don't know. Well, everyone has bad games, and this is definitely one of his. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what am I to know? This is this is ranked in 2023. It maybe, like we said, maybe we're just AFK braining and just don't really care. Because I could totally see that being a thing. That the Overwatch League is no more, and it's like we got tier two teams competing for nine hundred dollars on a weekend. Like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> I have I have very uh, big concern for that. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah, no, but the Genji dying there definitely, uh, definitely hurts. We do have beat, so actually we should win this fight. All right, yeah. Well, I don't think you guys should have pulled that out, but I think just because of sheer mechanics and, like, the names that are on your team, we pulled through. See, like this, I just think is a little reckless because, okay, like I, I get it's today, but today is like, actually he's gotten a lot better. I can't even say that. Today's really, he's actually pretty good now. And the other thing is like this Doomfist is, I, I just don't think he dies when there's a Kiri with him. I think Kiri's just too strong. I, I, I would be okay with this push if you didn't already have beat, but now you're pretty much confirming that the Kiri has alt. And this is again super nitpicky, but I I want to see how much more alt charge she gets off of us trying to push here. She probably gets an extra ten. Yeah, I pr I'm pretty sure she does. I think I think this point when he's out, he's kind of out. He's he's got his 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 e up, and I don't think our sergeant's shooting at him either. 
I think that's a good point because re- right here, like when I chase like this, I'm trying to drag out the team fight and force cooldowns. But in yeah. retrospect, it does nothing in the overall image. If we didn't have beat and we're like 80% on beat, I think it's worth the trade. But now this Kiriko for sure is going to be having alt for next fight. And the thing is, is like, are you thinking about this when you're playing ranked? Probably not. But in a team play setting, you're you're going to be alt tracking. This is something that you'll actually like 100% know if we're, we're doing this right. But this also yeah, like opens yeah. you up to possibly dying when it's a Doomfist. And I, I really wanted to p- bring this up because Doomfist patch next next patch. Wait, that's only for his ult. Never mind. That's void. It still heals him for 70 per second, is it? Yeah, I, I'm not okay. entirely sure. I haven't. I, I read somewhere that it was like 75 on his ult, but I didn't know if it did per second. But. All right, that, this is big. We should honestly, the moment that that Kiri ult comes out, I think we should all just run away and just speed out. I think that should be yeah, like 100% yeah. every time. Either that or just go go hard in. Yeah, um, the B blade. Yeah, and especially since we know that, oh shit, I messed up. The Kiri might have ult here. Then we can just get out. Um, I don't even think the beat's necessary because that that is such a terrible Kiri ult, <laughs> in my opinion. It's very I far agree. away from the fight. Um, even without speed boosting, you still somehow don't. No one dies here yet, which even though they should. Okay, yep. Oh, wow, I would be so mad right now. I'd be so mad. I'd be so mad at my Moira for not fading there. That's wild. Oh my God. Wow. All right. That's ranked. That is a top 500 player. Wow. Whew. Yeah. And then you have to invest beat. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not even mad at you there. I'm not even mad at you there. I don't think there's anything you, you can do. I mean, sure. You could have beaded for the Moira that had fade. That, that makes me mad watching. That's wild. Okay. All right. Yeah. You should have just known that your Moira wasn't going to fade there. Uh, I guess. I mean, sometimes it'd be like that. Dude. You just got to read their minds. Like this is, I think this is why I'm a bad ranked player. Like I only really, I, I climbed much more in the path to pro than I climbed in ladder. Like I was a 4.4 K player. I just, I couldn't fathom some of the stuff I was seeing in my games. And like, I just, I, I, I can't, adapt as hard and I, I mean to be honest like i'm not i'm not trying to say that oh i could have made contenders no nah, I, I definitely couldn't have with the level of work i was putting in and like my motivation but like i definitely prefer that consistent environment and i think getting to like top 20 and i don't i just it's a different beast because you gotta like be able to predict that your teammate is not fading there mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm, my philosophy yeah, for comp has changed actually because I talked to Lep. I got coaching from Lep. Oh yeah, okay. He definitely yeah. knows more than I do for sure. We were talking about like how to use comp as training, and he was talking about how it's a really good tool because it's like once you get in scrims, you need to do your homework for the scrims to actually apply what you're learning, and like yeah. it's a completely different game in comms and in fight planning. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. So you need to like spin your like wheels and your cogs and not focus on winning, but focus on like whatever your objective of your own like goals are and like what you're trying to improve on for yourself in comp. When your yeah. teammates throw, that's fine because you're still improving on yourself. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and I like that you have that mindset. I like that you have the mindset because I, I think that's a hundred percent true. Um, I, I also think that coming from a player that's, like Lep that has already reached top 10 in ladder multiple times and has already proven himself. He doesn't really need to worry about getting top 10 too, or like winning the game. But I mean, my counter argument to someone that thinks like that in, in correspondence with what you said is that to, to be honest, like if you keep improving yourself and you keep refining yourself as a player, like you'll just be able to carry some of these lobbies. I just, I just see a fight like that. And the only thing I could really take out of that is that it's it's a 99-77 fight. If we do beat there, we could have saved the Moira from her own mistake that shouldn't have happened and maybe still won. Like, should we have beat it there when they... And arguably, like, looking at their comp, like... Maybe that is the time to beat, even though the Moira did make the mistake, just to have, like... Because here's the thing, you're not going to beat the May alt because if a teammate gets frozen, they're just going to get focus fired and die anyways. We didn't beat the, the Kiri alt because we just ran away from it. They might have had Ko. I don't think it's worth it to go back and, and like lolly gag and just talk about it all day. But maybe maybe it was the play in ladder to beat that. But I I want to wrap this all up and stop my rambling with 
I do agree with Lep, and I, I like that you have that whole mindset because that's how you become a better player. I mean, that's you use rank as a tool to improve 100%. I agree with that. I don't know why I needed to ramble, but here we are. Um, do you have anything you want to add about the first the first round? Like, honestly, what I saw was just really small, minor stuff, um, like ranked being ranked and just the team not all speeding together. But I did like what you said about, like, um, meandering off and going to help the Genji or um, not pushing too hard when you already have alt and they don't. Stuff like that. I, I think it's good to have those reminders. But if you wanted to add anything else, go right ahead. Yeah, I feel like in that game, I was playing okay, but I wasn't really focusing on the right things where it's like I wasn't ult tracking at all. And I wasn't yeah. like paying it like locked in. And then I also wasn't looking to do my job and like use my amp correct or like with full value to be able like that one fight that I just like amped because my yeah. queen was walking. That was just pure instinct. And those are just like, like my brain is off rather than thinking like, should I be flanking with my Soja or my Genji here or should I be sticking with my queen? So I think eventually, like maybe like one out of 10 times, th there will be moments where it was like my Soja is flanking and I should be with her. But like some of the things that you can't see in the gameplay and you just have to critique on your own because like, you know where you're going wrong. So yeah. I have to put those in my mind as notes. And, and honestly, like, I think that's like going to be one of my takeaways is just like when you're in Grandmaster ranked, there are differences from ranked to scrims. And I think being able to adapt and like, sure, you should be speeding your queen all the time. But if no one's following the queen, is there another option that maybe carries harder? And I think that's what you're kind of highlighting. Like, or even when you have the Arisa, like, should I be helping the, the Sojourn? I think that's 100% like understanding how you can impact the game, even if it's not uh, by the book. And because ladder is not by the book. And I think we both understand that. But yeah, I 100% agree with you. Um, if you don't mind, let's keep going here. Let's see what happens. Um, you're still on the same stuff. They're still on the same thing. But now today is locking the doom still. I still think your Sojourn's probably their primary target, but I don't, I don't think they're thinking that hard. But we could possibly boop the Doom and harass him off of his engages. Could be an idea. Okay. Well, your DPS popped off. Cool. Um, you guys held open space better than they did with a comp that kind of wants to do that. At least that's what it looks like, so... They're on a monkey now, so definitely going to pressure the Soge so we can boop that off. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. It's like actually a character I can do something with. I think, I'm, is this too aggressive? I think this is a little too aggressive, personally. The pushing into this angle, I think, is creating unnecessary, like, opportunities for you to just get, like, conked by uh, Junkrat. I think staying here is completely fine to just get a few shots off. Um... That, that, I mean, you haven't been repeating that tendency, though, so... Actually, well, sometimes you do go into the spawn, but that was to try to finish off a Doom, so I don't... I, I think that had somewhat of a reason. This one is kind of just out of the blue. Okay, but he's actually going to jump you on his own? I don't agree with that decision, but... Is he going to get value out of it? Wow, okay. I don't think this was because of his decision, like, being right. I think it was more so just we went too far in, and we kind of fucked up the movement going out. Yeah, definitely. I, I hit like three walls there that I didn't think I would hit. Yeah. One, two, and then three here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, I mean, so. that's just... I think the main I, the main mistake isn't even like, okay, mechanics, whatever, we could be better. But I think it's just pushing too far in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I don't even think today should have jumped that. That was like a mistake on both sides because he should never kill you there. Yeah. I was... I, I, don't, I don't agree with that decision, but... <laughs> I'm Pavloving him to make bad decisions. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> conditioning him okay okay yeah because you get me warmed up on a day like where i i'm not out of thanksgiving break and i escape those i think it was the right idea just really bad really bad way of doing it yeah yeah i mean the execution definitely could have been better that's that's i can agree with you there all right yeah that's a good start and i honestly just speed amp in probably look the pavlov worked it's, yeah i <laughs> Again, I don't want to say anything because I don't want it to sound <laughs> like I have an ego, but that, that did seem like an interesting decision. Yeah. Yeah, like, okay, this or is kind of what I was talking about. Like, I think this angle is much safer for you to get out than the, the angle you took to just go yeah. all the way in. Yeah, he See, really that's what was supposed you. to happen. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm building beat like crazy. Yeah, which is, which is exactly what I want to see. 
Oh, this guy is like... Why is he jumping Lucio? Okay. I'm really proud of myself for holding amp during that. I think that was a good... Yeah, honestly, I, I can agree with you there. Uh, that's not even something I'm really thinking about when I'm playing Lucio, but like, yeah, there is a possibility that you would want to amp there and you did a good job of holding that because um, no one was crit. So yeah, I, I agree with you. That That's a good thing to highlight. I didn't even see that. And then again, you're, also, you're always doing well with the boop. Um, I also just feel like, are you like an OG Overwatch player? You have to be, right? Like you've played like early seasons Overwatch of Overwatch one. one. You've got yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say like the the Lucio and booping the the Winston. That's like the OG thing. But you'd be surprised how many players even in GM don't remember to do that. Actually, you probably aren't surprised. You've probably seen it. Yeah. Um, okay, I like that you held on to the beat or the the boop rather. Um, it was. I mean, Zinnia still like slided that way. So I guess you could have predicted that, but. I think that's just like uh whatever. Um Okay, there's no way you guys end up losing this half, judging by the time oh dude, like I, I'm just curious as to like what can you do for players like this? Because I think that's a really important like an observation that I've never really figured out, but it's like how did we die here? I think mentally, offense and defense, this is definitely one of those defense ones. We just gotta like accept, like you know, just like accept that it happened. <laughs> like, unlucky. Watch I it guess. happen and take a deep breath after, and that's the best way to deal with that one. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, or like the only other thing I could think of is like take the angle while the Moira takes that angle too, because you know Junkrat's there. But that's just like a lot of information you don't know. So. <laughs> uh. Honestly, this fight is going to happen before that Moira gets back. I think going to taxi back here is the wrong play, especially when you have beat. Like, you can still win this fight without the... Well, now she's on Kiri, so I see you're trying to TP her back. But I think we can both understand, like, the fight's going to happen, that you just need to take the fight or get out. Because you can... St like, with Lucio, I, I mean, I know you know this in scrims, but it's like, you can take the fast fight when you're down alt economy. You can also take the fast fight when you're down players if you need to. Because it's better. I guess this is also a really there. good conversation. Because yeah. it's like, would we rather give up the point? Because we're already at 99, pretty much. So if we give up the point and uh, retake afterwards with our ults versus uh, yeah, take this really risky fight here where we're probably not going to win it because they have Rally against an OC. Yeah. And then they also have Tire and Freeze. So if we try to set tempo, they're just going to retract with Rally. And if they set tempo, then we, we get frozen. Yeah. Um. I mean, honestly, so, what I would say is like, because you have such a high mobility comp, you can almost, especially also because it's ranked, you can almost bait them to use an alt and then you just speed out. Like everyone on your team mm -hmm. can just get out. So I honestly, yeah, I, I think we, we just, you just kind of stall, take a neutral fight, try to force something out and then just run. And if you do mm -hmm. manage to find a pick, that's your go light. Cause like you do have a sojourn and you have a Genji to follow up on something too. So like if we, if we do find something, there we go. So yeah, yeah, honestly, that is a good kind like, I think that's a really good point to make. Um, I think it's really hard to pull off in ladder where no one's calming anymore, but that's definitely a good idea that I'm sure not a lot of people are thinking about. Mm -hmm. yeah, now that I, you say it, I think it is better to just stay with my team because there's like maybe like a 1% chance that we get a pick, but that's better than zero. Kind yeah. Of. And, and the other thing is like, if we even want to try to bait something, they're going to need the speed and there's just... There's no way they're winning the fight in a 3v5 when you're away than if the Kiri gets back late and I don't know. I want to see how this plays out because who knows? Maybe it will work out. Okay, we forced out the, the tire. Honestly, we should just speed out and live here. But yeah. Um, honestly, I think if you are there, that fight probably looks a little different. But yeah, we've already discussed that. But at least we forced out an alt. It wasn't the alt that I really wanted. I really wanted that May alt forced out, but. All right, now we already have alt, so we really just need to get out and not feed anything to their Kiri. I don't mind that you're on an angle, though, and you're kind of being annoying in this, like, weird half and half what the hell's going on ranked moment. 
because this is where mistakes can happen, um, especially in ranked. In team play, I, I think that it ha I have some concerns, but in ranked, it's kind of like they might have to look at you, and especially when the, the monkey's been like, as you said, Pavlov into jumping you, like that could have been a big deal. Um, in retrospect, it was probably better just to speed back the team, but I don't mind that idea. Yeah, that's dangerous. I like that you didn't like hard commit there. We forced alts, honestly. Yeah, no, I think we can still just start forcing the point. It's a 3v5. I think we're doing a decent job. That right there is just rally moment. Uh, better mechanics realizing that she was there and yeah. getting on a better wall. I didn't that, even that's realize a Thanksgiving she was there moment. until I got stunned. Yeah, th Thanksgiving moment. I can understand that. Um, wow, that that's really going to cause a game? I'm just baffled that your Kiriko is flaming. That's weird. That's wild. Okay. Yep, that's a great pick. I think we beat the... Uh, do, no, I don't think we beat this. I think we speed out of it. Oh, my God. Because of the Kiri ult, it freezes faster, doesn't it? Does it? I don't know, because it seems like you got frozen a little fast there. I think that was me just being terrible. Wait, I think it's also because the May is on May, you. Yeah. Like, my reaction speed to this freeze is so slow. Like, I don't even change directions until I hit the floor. <laughs> well, yeah, even if they didn't even have the Kiri all. Mm. Damn. I, I don't want it to be just based on reaction time, though. I want to see, like, how could we have maybe thought about this before it happened? Yeah, because my plan was save it for the uh, save it for after the freeze because there's no way that yeah like I tunneled into the fight. Yeah, Ugh. I oh man, I I guess you just you. The thing is, I don't even like agree with the way the May used the the alt. It's like in a higher level game, the May is uh, this just looks so different. Which is why yeah. I struggle with ranked. It's because I don't expect you to make the, the May to make a play like that when the Doom is going to be completely fine. The point doesn't need to be touched for six seconds or five seconds, rather. Yeah, I think this is a mechanics like adaptability mistake right here. Because for sure, if I live this, this is one of the things that I can control in my rank game. Yeah. Where if I live this freeze, which is totally livable, I would have made a really big difference in this fight. So it's like. Yeah, what I mean, I agree with you that like, you could yeah. have done better. And in hindsight, 100% 2020, I'm just thinking, like, how can we think about this better? It's like, realistically, oh, it might have been a positioning I know, thing. I got, I got the answer. I got the answer. Yeah, Play go back ahead. from my perspective again. Yeah. I'm going to slow I it just down. totally, I think I totally just get off a wall and just, like, jump into open space. And that's why. Because if I'm on the walls here, I can get out. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I miscalculated. Because you see that jump where I was trying to hit that second wall on the right and jump across to the junk rat? Like, yeah, you're trying to jump over here, which... Mm. Or I, I, I went too far because the wall to the close right, I thought it would be a bit farther. Like, okay, I see what you're, or, okay, I see what you're saying. Like, all the way on the bottom right of the screen. Like that, yeah, When, down when I jump off of that wall, I thought I had more distance to clear the point. Or like another attach point. Okay, so but I'm what I'm curious about is like, would you have had that if the Mayalt doesn't freeze you when you take that jump? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm uh, above it at that point. So like, see that like the far corner here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, okay, you wanted yeah, to I jump off that. I see right what there. you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's something. I, I mean, I'm not even a, a, a high enough level of Lucio to be able to read that situation. But man, this oh, is just no. so. The truth so, hurts. The truth is I need to go back in the surf lab. Oh, yeah, I would, I would have never thought. That's just that is so brutal. Um, I mean, the other thing I could I could think is just like. Your doom just engaged. And if you think like realistically, when is this may going to try to use the alt? It will be when your team tries to engage to try to split a target off and, and recognizing that the mail, it's probably going to go in when your team tries to go in and then staying back and almost baiting it out. Although if that were the case, I would have assumed that the mail would have been here, not here. 
But that, I mean, that's another way to think about it, just to just be ready for it. And it, because it kind of looked like you also got caught by surprise, in all honesty, because it was kind of, I mean, you, we were thinking about going for the, the junk rat here instead of like the May alt. Um, I think th I always look for ways to make it so that I could have thought ahead so I have an easier time reacting. That's, that's kind of what helped me out a lot. I just think that second of like beelining for the junk rat isn't even a consideration when we know what's coming with this May. Because then we would have looked at, like, maybe we boop this May away. Maybe we pressure her to use Ice Block early. Maybe I think the fight plays differently if we just play with the knowledge that that's kind of their win con is, like, the Kyrian May alt. And I that's need to live for B. Like, true, the mechanics could have been better. But, like, I don't know. We're not FD God. We're not crazy. Uh, we don't have the opportunity to also play 12 hours a day. If they even do that anymore. I don't know. But I think everything we said has merit for sure. But I think that's it's a repeated thing. Things. I think that's a repeated thing. And it, it really makes a big difference in GM. It's like that thinking ahead definitely will help you in ranked. Especially when like I feel like no one's really thinking anymore. <laughs> like, game isn't even over yet. And bro is pulled out TikTok on his phone. You almost get a kill because of it. Like, that's just, that is the state of ranked. That is the state of ranked. I don't know how y'all do it. I'm going to be honest, but I, I commend, I commend you all because I, I can't do that anymore. Yeah. You need a certain level of brain damage to be able to like survive in that toxic environment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now that you're saying that the Kiri was flaming you, I find that wild, but okay. Um, takeaways, and we can also just like talk about this stuff because this is going to be the end of the unranked to GM. I think this is really good to just wrap things up. And even stuff I was telling like players in gold, like staying on walls and stuff, like obviously you were much better about staying on a wall, but even the importance of sticking off of a wall, like we said, or like missing that wall for just a half of a second got us killed in a fight that if we live, we carry. Brutal stuff. It, Overwatch is a brutal game at the highest ranks. But what I'm what I'm saying is... I think I'm a gold player at heart. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, honestly, this was this was better than most people you're going to see in ranked. And I, I think you being on a part of the team on UCSD and like being a coach and doing all these things and and being active in the game, like it definitely shows more so than a lot of people that are still populating those high ranks. We saw the Moira. Um, but I think the number one thing is just tracking, not tracking alts in terms of like. Oh, like this X person has alts, but also thinking about how that's going to affect the way you play. Because I think that's something that we don't like. No one's really alt tracking in ranked, but I think because you're a, a main support and you don't really have a lot of like hard carry impact, like a widow would for a headshot or like a sojourn just get, gets with aim. I think that's almost the way you carry because it's like the way that you're going to hold yourself in a fight and what you're going to be looking for to react to. And, and, and this could be like, in terms of how I'm going to position myself based off of the May alt that's very strong right now, or even like, am I going to poke for alt charge myself? Am I going to want to try to get beat, but then they're going to get their Kiri alt? Like that was, that was a really big uh, deciding factor of the game too. Um, and the other thing is like, I don't know. Do I have a bot burger on my team that maybe needs this beat that has like coalescence that it's going to win this fight and it doesn't really matter because this might be the last fight anyways. This one's kind of like up in the air like that. I, I don't know. Don't worry about this one as much, but I think it's like, when do I poke? If I already have alt and I'm not really going to get the pick, I don't really want to poke in between fights unless even if I get out of cooldown, they could just wait when they're 99 zero and they don't really need to push you. Um, I, I think you understand what I'm getting at here. It's more so just like trying to get it for the, the maybe the plat player that's inspired and wants to learn a little bit more. Um, aside from that, we could say tempo. We could say the thing is, is like I, I would put tempo in terms of like the speed boost and like understanding what to. But Tempo is like a little bit of a more specific thing. I think it's more so just like ranked in general and just being able to adapt. This is all stuff you know, but I'm not a high enough level Lucio player or this isn't really a scrim environment where I think I'd have much more to say about Lucio um, to really tell you 
what it is that you could do more in terms of your kit and like speeding your team around. I think being able to adapt off of like it, adapting really just through like amps and speeds is really what I'm getting at here. Like, like we said with the sojourn or like we said with maybe the junker junker queen wants to go in. She shouted already. Then I'm going to speed after. I, I think amp is something to look at because it's such a powerful ability more so than anything else. But it really comes back to how we're adapting to what we have at hand. Um, but this isn't even close to as important as like, what are we thinking about getting our all charge and not like, how do we poke? How do we not kill ourselves by going too far in while poking stuff like that? And, and like you said, like for me, what helped me with Lucia when I had to play him for a short time on attack mode, I was just doing try hard FFAs before scrims that helped me with my movement and dueling. If Lucio surf lobbies help you like go ahead, go for it. But that's just what I would say uh in terms of helping mechanics do you have anything that you want to add that maybe you saw that i didn't say um go right ahead um i think because like maybe like my situation might be unique where i know a lot of like where i need to be yeah um for myself the majority or more so like thinking about my job and like the overall image of how the comps are supposed to play from yeah, a macro the tempo perspective and yeah um will help with a lot of this stuff um instead of like really focusing on just like my ffa or like especially with the amping where it's like instead of thinking about like oh how should i amp it's just like what does my team want here yeah and then the amp will come like with it um that's why i didn't really want to just say like yeah. amp i feel like you're you understand like the importance of the tempo and like the teams and what's at play here. It's more so just reminding like, yeah, that's what's going to give you the answer. Like I 100% agree with you. Um, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, just for myself, like understanding at what points in time do I need to focus or like, what are the catalysts to like, you know, like when you see a bowl of fruit, you should eat like one of the fruit in your kitchen where it's like, for me, it's like, at the beginning of the fight now, I need to think about the ults. And then in the pre-fight to mid-fight, I need to think about my amp usage. And then afterwards, I can think about my mechanics on like, uh, you know, like com comfortability, wall riding yeah. and marking. I think that's but, a really good way to yeah. think about it, honestly. It's like, I think you, I mean, you obviously have a like a way of explaining it, but it's that that I agree with. I've, I've never explained it that way, which I, I think is interesting, but it's like you start the fight or you start the game. It's it's the neutral. You understand the tempo of both teams, but then also putting that extra layer on top of like, how does the alt economy affect that with the map that you're on? I think that's a whole new level that or a whole new layer that you definitely know and understand and could really explain to anyone while we're just sitting down and having a good time. But in the lens of ranked where like everything is so unpredictable i think that creates a whole new layer of just difficulty especially in like top 500 because you all that's like what loses you games most commonly at least i think that's what i struggled with the most it's just like understanding all of the different variables at play that really aren't consistent and trying to react to it but i mean it's good that we had the conversation to just realize like i think that's really what makes ranked ranked yeah yeah and then yeah. once you like understand that, then you can build on your adaptability yeah, and that's 100%. an entire another monster. Yeah. And I, I think that's like the one, two, three model. I think the number one take trumps the number two and then trumps the, well, number three, you can always do, but I always just put that at the end to remind people. And I, I can never say it enough because so many players will just, they'll just go in, they'll play a few games. They will not be warm. And there's a lot of things they want to try to do that they know they should do. And then it, they just can't follow through with it. But, um, yeah, if you don't have anything else, I mean, make sure I'll make sure to put your uh, links in the description of the video so that everyone can uh, reach out and follow, subscribe, whatever, what have you. If you have a link tree too, that could work as well. So out of this entire experience, I've learned a lot about what players struggle with as Lucio. And the number one thing for low elo players is playing way too much around your team and not really looking to be aggressive on your own to see if you can get some value elsewhere. The second thing that I would say in plat diamond elo is using a lot of healing to try to out heal your team when in reality, you really need to be speeding single targets away because that's your competitive advantage as Lucio. If you wanted to 
heal, you pretty much should play any other support. And lastly, the biggest thing for those top rank players is not shifting the playstyle you have for Lucio around to different compositions. Especially in the Masters VOD today, we saw that someone was trying to play Lucio as a Brawl character in every single comp, but in reality, when the enemy team has better Brawl than you, you're almost trying to set up a dive and try to help that flanker out find a pick in the back line. So let me know if you guys actually really liked this idea. I wanted to try something new. I didn't really love just smurfing and unranked to GMs. It didn't really feel like it was uh, beneficial to anyone watching. But if this is something you like, let me know if there's another support that you want to see, like Kiriko, Ana again, Baptiste. I'm down to do anything. I just want to hear what you guys all have to think. But thank you guys all so much for watching. But until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.